Section 1 of Dramatized Bible Passages from the Old Testament. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Adam and Eve from Genesis chapters 2 to 4, King James Version. Narrated by Beth Thomas. God, read by David Olson. Adam, read by Thomas Peter. Eve, read by Rachel. Serpent, read by Sonia. Lamech, read by Marianne. Cain, read by Estrimon Simonides. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the host of them. And on the seventh day God ended his work which he had made. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had made. And God blessed the seventh day, and sanctified it, because that in it he had rested from all his work, which God created and made. These are the generations of the heavens and of the earth when they were created, in the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens. And every plant of the field before it was in the earth, and every herb of the field before it grew. For the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth, and there was not a man to till the ground. But there went up a mist from the earth, and watered the whole face of the ground. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food, the tree of life also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And a river went out of Eden to water the garden, and from thence it was parted, and became into four heads. The name of the first is Pison. That is it which compasseth the whole land of Havilah where there is gold, and the gold of that land is good, and there is Bedellium and the onyx stone. And the name of the second river is Gihon. The same it is that compasseth the whole land of Ethiopia. And the name of the third river is Hidekel. That is it which goeth toward the east of Assyria and the fourth river is Euphrates. And the Lord God took the man, and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof thou shalt surely die. And the Lord God said, it is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him a helpmeet for him. And out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air, and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. And Adam gave names to all cattle, and to the fowl of the air, and to every beast of the field, but for Adam there was not found an helpmeet for him. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs, and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib, which the Lord God had taken from man, made he a woman, and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones, and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, because she was taken out of man. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother, and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die, for God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. 
and the eyes of them both were opened and they knew that they were naked and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons and they heard the voice of the lord god walking in the garden in the cool of the day and adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the lord god amongst the trees of the garden and the lord god called unto adam and said unto him where art thou and he said i heard thy voice in the garden and i was afraid because i was naked and i hid myself and he said who told thee that thou wast naked hast thou eaten of the tree whereof i commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat and the man said the woman whom thou gavest to be with me she gave me of the tree and i did eat and the lord god said unto the woman what is this that thou hast done and the woman said the serpent beguiled me and i did eat and the lord god said unto the serpent because thou hast done this thou art cursed above all cattle and above every beast of the field upon thy belly shalt thou go and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life and i will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed it shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel unto the woman he said i will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception and in sorrow thou shalt bring forth children and thy desire shall be to thy husband and he shall rule over thee and unto adam he said because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife and hast eaten of the tree of which i commanded thee saying thou shalt not eat of it cursed is the ground for thy sake in sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee and thou shalt eat the herb of the field in the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread till thou return unto the ground for out of it wast thou taken for dust thou art and unto dust shalt thou return and adam called his wife's name eve because she was the mother of all living unto adam also and to his wife did the lord god make coats of skins and clothed them and the lord god said behold the man is become as one of us to know good and evil and now lest he put forth his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live for ever therefore the lord god sent him forth from the garden of eden to till the ground from whence he was taken so he drove out the man and he placed at the east of the garden of eden cherubims and a flaming sword which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life and adam knew eve his wife and she conceived and bare cain and said i have gotten a man from the lord and she again bare his brother abel and abel was a keeper of sheep but cain was a tiller of the ground and in process of time it came to pass that cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the lord and abel he also brought of the firstlings of his flock and of the fat thereof and the lord had respect unto abel and his offering but unto cain and to his offering he had not respect and cain was very wroth and his countenance fell and the lord said unto cain why art thou wroth and why is thy countenance fallen if thou doest well shalt thou not be accepted and if thou doest not well sin lieth at the door and unto thee shall be his desire and thou shalt rule over him and cain talked with abel his brother and it came to pass when they were in the field that cain rose up against abel his brother and slew him and the lord said unto cain where is abel thy brother and he said i know not am i my brother's keeper and he said what hast thou done the voice of thy brother's blood crieth unto me from the ground and now art thou cursed from the earth which hath opened her mouth to receive thy brother's blood from thy hand when thou tillest the ground it shall not henceforth yield unto thee her strength a fugitive and a vagabond shalt thou be in the earth and cain said unto the lord 
my punishment is greater than I can bear. Behold, thou hast driven me out this day from the face of the earth, and from thy face shall I be hid, and I shall be a fugitive and a vagabond in the earth. And it shall come to pass that every one that findeth me shall slay me. And the Lord said unto him, Therefore, whosoever slayeth Cain, vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. And the Lord set a mark upon Cain, lest any finding him should kill him. And Cain went out from the presence of the Lord, and dwelt in the land of Nod on the east of Eden. And Cain knew his wife, and she conceived and bare Enoch. And he builded a city, and called the name of the city after the name of his son Enoch. And unto Enoch was born Erad, and Erad begat Mehujael, and Mehujael begat Methusael, and Methusael begat Lamech. And Lamech took unto him two wives, the name of one was Ada, and the name of the other Zillah. And Ada bare Jabal, he was the father of such as dwell in tents, and of such as have cattle. And his brother's name was Jubal, he was the father of all such as handle the harp and organ. And Zillah, she also bare Tubalcane, an instructor of every artificer in brass and iron. And the sister of Tubalcain was Nama. And Lamech said unto his wives, Ada and Zillah, Ada and Zillah, hear my voice. Ye wives of Lamech, hearken unto my speech. For I have slain a man to my wounding, and a young man to my hurt. If Cain shall be avenged sevenfold, truly Lamech, seventy and sevenfold. And Adam knew his wife again, and she bare a son, and called his name Seth. For God, said she, hath appointed me another seed instead of Abel, whom Cain slew. And to Seth, to him also there was born a son, and he called his name Enos. Then began men to call upon the name of the Lord. End of section one. Section 2 of Dramatized Passages from the Old Testament. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Story of Abraham, Genesis, chapters 12 to 22, verse 18, King James Version. Narration read by Beth Thomas. God, read by David Olson. Abraham, read by Larry Wilson. Sarah, read by Christine G. Pharaoh, read by Adelde Pinoles. Melchizedek, read by Lydia. King of Sodom, read by Esther ben Samanides. Hagar, read by Rachel. Angel, read by Marianne. Lot, read by Thomas Peter. Men of Sodom, read by Catherine. Lot's daughter, read by Taisha Lynn. Abimelech, read by E. Snow. Isaac, read by Bernard Y. Now the Lord had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will shew thee, and I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing, and I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curseth thee, and in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. So Abram departed, as the Lord had spoken unto him, and Lot went with him. And Abram was seventy and five years old when he departed out of Haran. And Abram took Sarai his wife, and Lot his brother's son, and all their substance that they had gathered, and the souls that they had gotten in Haran. And they went forth to go into the land of Canaan and into the land of Canaan they came. And Abram passed through the land unto the place of Sichem, unto the plain of Moreh. And the Canaanite was then in the land. And the Lord appeared unto Abram, and said, Unto thy seed will I give this land. And there builded he an altar unto the Lord who appeared unto him. And he removed from thence unto a mountain on the east of Bethel, and pitched his tent, having Bethel on the west and high on the east. And there he builded an altar unto the Lord, and called upon the name of the Lord. And Abram journeyed, going on still toward the south. And there was a famine in the land, 
and Abram went down into Egypt to sojourn there, for the famine was grievous in the land. And it came to pass, when he was come near to enter into Egypt, that he said unto Sarai his wife, Behold now, I know that thou art a fair woman to look upon. Therefore it shall come to pass, when the Egyptians shall see thee, that they shall say, This is his wife, and they will kill me, but they will save thee alive. Say, pray thee, Thou art my sister, and that it may be well with me for thy sake, and my soul shall live because of thee. And it came to pass that when Abram was come into Egypt, the Egyptians beheld the woman that she was very fair. The princes also of Pharaoh saw her, and commended her before Pharaoh. And the woman was taken into Pharaoh's house. And he entreated Abram well for her sake. And he had sheep, and oxen, and he-asses, and men-servants, and maid-servants, and she-asses, and camels. And the Lord plagued Pharaoh and his house with great plagues, because of Sarai, Abram's wife. And Pharaoh called Abram, and said, What is this thou hast done unto me? Why didst thou not tell me that she was thy wife? Why saidst thou, She is my sister? So I might have taken her to me to wife. Now therefore behold thy wife, take her, and go thy way. And Pharaoh commanded his men concerning him, and they sent him away, and his wife, and all that he had. And Abram went up out of Egypt, he and his wife, and all that he had, and Lot with him, into the south. And Abram was very rich in cattle, in silver, and in gold. And he went on his journeys from the south, even to Bethel, unto the place where his tent had been at the beginning, between Bethel and Hai, unto the place of the altar which he had made there at the first. And there Abram called on the name of the Lord. And Lot also, which went with Abram, had flocks and herds and tents. And the land was not able to bear them, that they might dwell together, for their substance was great, so that they could not dwell together. And there was strife between the herdsmen of Abram's cattle and the herdsmen of Lot's cattle. And the Canaanite and the Perizzite dwelt then in the land. And Abram said unto Lot, let there be no strife, I pray thee, between me and thee, and between my herdmen and thy herdmen, for we be brethren. Is not the whole land before thee? Separate thyself, I pray thee, from me. If thou wilt take the left hand, then I will go to the right. Or if thou depart to the right hand, then I will go to the left. And Lot lifted up his eyes, and beheld all the plain of Jordan, that it was well watered everywhere, before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, even as the garden of the Lord, like the land of Egypt, as thou comest unto Zoar. Then Lot chose him all the plain of Jordan. And Lot journeyed east, and they separated themselves the one from the other. Abram dwelled in the land of Canaan, and Lot dwelled in the cities of the plain, and pitched his tent towards Sodom. But the men of Sodom were wicked and sinners before the Lord exceedingly. And the Lord said unto Abram, after that Lot was separated from him, Lift up now thine eyes, and look from the place where thou art, northward, and southward, and eastward, and westward. For all the land which thou seest, to thee will I give it, and to thy seed for ever and I will make thy seed as the dust of the earth, so that if a man can number the dust of the earth, then shall thy seed also be numbered. Arise, walk through the land, in the length of it, and in the breadth of it, for I will give it unto thee. Then Abram removed his tent, and came and dwelt in the plain of Mamre, which is in Hebron, and built there an altar unto the Lord. And it came to pass in the days of Amraphel king of Shinar, Arioch king of Elisar, Chedorlaomer king of Elam, and Tidal king of nations, that these made war with Berah king of Sodom, and with Bersha king of Gomorrah, Shinab king of Adma, and Shememba king of Zeboim, and the king of Bela which is Zoar. All these were joined together in the vale of Sidim, which is the salt sea. Twelve years they served Chedorlaomer, and in the thirteenth year they rebelled. And in the fourteenth year came Chedorlaomer and the kings that were with him, and smote the Rephaims in ashtaroth Canaim, and the Zuzims in Ham, and the Emins in shaveh Kiriathaim, and the Horites in their Mount Seir unto El-Paran, which is by the wilderness. 
and they returned and came to en mishpat which is in kadesh and smote all the country of the amalekites and also the amorites which dwell in hazazon tamar and there went out the king of sodom and the king of gomorrah and the king of adma and the king of zeboim and the king of bela the same as zoah and they joined battle with them in the vale of sidim with chedorlaoma the king of elam and with tidal king of nations and amraphel king of shinar and arioch king of elasar four kings with five and the vale of sidim was full of slime pits and the kings of sodom and gomorrah fled and fell there and they that remained fled to the mountain. And they took all the goods of Sodom and Gomorrah, and all their victuals, and went their way. And they took Lot, Abram's brother's son, who dwelt in Sodom and his goods, and departed. And there came one that had escaped, and told Abram the Hebrew, for he dwelt in the plain of Mamre the Amorite, brother of Eshcol, and the brother of Ana, And these were confederate with Abram. And when Abram heard that his brother was taken captive, he armed his trained servants born in his own house three hundred and eighteen and pursued them unto dan and he divided himself against them he and his servants by night and smote them and pursued them unto hobah which is on the left hand of damascus and he brought back all the goods and also brought again his brother lot and his goods and the women also and the people and the king of sodom went out to meet him after his return from the slaughter of chedorlaoma and of the kings that were with him at the valley of shave which is the king's dale and melchizedek king of salem brought forth bread and wine and he was the priest of the most high god and he blessed him and said blessed be abram of the most high god possessor of heaven and earth and blessed be the most high god which hath delivered thine enemies into thy hand and the king of sodom said unto abram give me the persons and take the goods to thyself and abram said to the king of sodom i have lift up mine hand unto the lord the most high god the possessor of heaven and earth that i will not take from a thread even to a shoe latchet and that i will not take anything that is thine lest thou shouldest say i have made abram rich save only that which the young men have eaten and the portion of the men which went with me Aner, Eskel, and Mamre, let them take their portion. After these things the word of the Lord came unto Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram, I am thy shield, and thy exceeding great reward. And Abram said, Lord God, what wilt thou give me? Seeing I go childless, and the steward of my house is this Eliezer of Damascus. And Abram said, Behold, to me thou hast given no seed and lo one born in my house is mine heir and behold the word of the lord came unto him saying this shall not be thine heir but he that shall come forth out of thine own bowels shall be thine heir and he brought him forth abroad and said look now toward heaven and tell the stars if thou be able to number them and he said unto him so shall thy seed be and he believed in the Lord, and he counted it to him for righteousness. And he said unto him, I am the Lord that brought thee out of Ur of the Chaldees, to give thee this land to inherit it. And he said, Lord God, whereby shall I know that I shall inherit it? And he said unto him, Take me a heifer of three years old, and a she-goat of three years old, and a ram of three years old, and a turtle-dove, and a young pigeon and he took unto him all these and divided them in the midst and laid each piece one against another but the birds he divided not and when the fowls came down upon the carcasses abram drove them away and when the sun was going down a deep sleep fell upon abram and lo an horror of great darkness fell upon him and he said unto abram know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs and shall serve them and they shall afflict them four hundred years and also that nation whom they shall serve will i judge and afterward shall they come out with great substance and thou shalt go to thy fathers in peace thou shalt be buried in a good old age but in the fourth generation they shall come hither again for the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet full. 
and it came to pass that when the sun went down and it was dark behold a smoking furnace and a burning lamp that passed between those pieces in the same day the lord made a covenant with abram saying unto thy seed have i given this land from the river of egypt unto the great river the river euphrates the kenites and the kenizzites and the Kadamites, and the hittites and the perizzites and the rephames and the amorites and the canaanites and the gergesites and the jebusites now sarai abram's wife bare him no children and she had an handmaid an egyptian whose name was hagar and sarai said unto abram behold now the lord hath restrained me from bearing i pray thee go in unto my maid it may be that i may obtain children by her and abram hearkened to the voice of sarai and sarai abram's wife took hagar who made the egyptian after abram had dwelt ten years in the land of canaan and gave her to her husband abram to be his wife and he went in unto hagar and she conceived and when she saw that she had conceived her mistress was despised in her eyes and sarai said unto abram my wrong be upon thee i have given my maid into thy bosom and when she saw that she had conceived i was despised in her eyes the lord judge between me and thee but abram said unto sarai behold thy maid is in thine hand do to her as it pleaseth thee and when sarai dealt hardly with her she fled from her face and the angel of the lord found her by a fountain of water in the wilderness by the fountain in the way to shur and he said hagar sarai's maid whence camest thou and whither wilt thou go and she said i flee from the face of my mistress sarai and the angel of the lord said unto her return to thy mistress and submit thyself under her hands and the angel of the lord said unto her i will multiply thy seed exceedingly and that it shall not be numbered for multitude and the angel of the lord said unto her behold thou art with child and shalt bear a son and shalt call his name ishmael because the lord hath heard thy affliction and he will be a wild man his hand will be against every man and every man's hand against him and he shall dwell in the presence of all his brethren and she called the name of the lord that spake unto her thou god seest me for she said have i also here looked after him that seeth me wherefore the well was called bela hairoi behold it is between kadesh and bered and hagar bare abram a son and abram called his son's name which hagar bare ishmael and abram was fourscore and six years old when hagar bare ishmael to abram and when abram was ninety years old and nine the lord appeared to abram and said unto him i am the almighty god walk before me and be thou perfect and i will make my covenant between me and thee and will multiply thee exceedingly and abram fell on his face and god talked with him saying as for me behold my covenant is with thee and thou shalt be a father of many nations neither shall thy name any more be called abram but thy name shall be abraham for a father of many nations have i made thee and i will make thee exceedingly fruitful and i will make nations of thee and kings shall come out of thee and i will establish my covenant between me and thee and thy seed after thee in their generations for an everlasting covenant to be a god unto thee and to thy seed after thee and i will give unto thee and to thy seed after thee the land wherein thou art a stranger all the land of cana for an everlasting possession and i will be their god and god said unto abraham thou shalt keep my covenant therefore thou and thy seed after thee in their generations this is my covenant which ye shall keep between me and you and thy seed after thee every man child among you shall be circumcised and ye shall circumcise the flesh of your foreskin and it shall be a token of the covenant betwixt me and you.
and he that is eight days old shall be circumcised among you every man-child in your generations he that is born in the house or bought with money of any stranger which is not of thy seed he that is born in thy house and the he that is bought with thy money must needs be circumcised and my covenant shall be in your flesh for an everlasting covenant and the uncircumcised man-child whose flesh of his foreskin is not circumcised that soul shall be cut off from his people he hath broken my covenant and god said unto abraham as for sarai thy wife thou shalt not call her name sarai but sarah shall her name be and i will bless her and give thee a son also of her yea i will bless her and she shall be a mother of nations kings of people shall be of her then abraham fell on his face and laughed and said in his heart shall a child be born unto him that is an hundred years old and shall sarah that is ninety years old bear and abraham said unto god o oh, that ishmael might live before thee and god said sarah thy wife shall bear thee a son indeed and thou shalt call his name isaac and i will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant and with his seed after him and as for ishmael i have heard thee behold i have blessed him and will make him fruitful and will multiply him exceedingly twelve princes shall he beget and i will make him a great nation but my covenant will i establish with isaac which sarah shall bear unto thee at this set time in the next year and he left off talking with him and god went up from abraham and abraham took ishmael his son and all that were born in his house and all that were bought with his money every male among the men of abraham's house and circumcised the flesh of their foreskin in the selfsame day as god had said unto him and abraham was ninety years old and nine when he was circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin and ishmael his son was thirteen years old when he was circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin in the selfsame day was abraham circumcised and ishmael his son and all the men of his house born in the house and bought with the money of the stranger were circumcised with him and the lord appeared unto him in the plains of mamre and he sat in the tent door in the heat of the day and he lift up his eyes and looked and lo three men stood by him and when he saw them he ran to meet them from the tent door and bowed himself toward the ground and said my lord if now i have found favour in thy sight pass not away i pray thee from thy servant let a little water i pray you be fetched and wash your feet and rest yourselves under the tree and i will fetch a morsel of bread and comfort ye your hearts after that ye shall pass on for therefore are ye come to your servant and they said so do as thou hast said and abraham hastened into the tent unto sarah and said make ready quickly three measures of fine meal knead it and make cakes upon the hearth and abraham ran unto the herd and fetched a calf tender and good and gave it unto a young man and he hasted to dress it and he took butter and milk and the calf which he had dressed and set it before them and he stood by them under a tree and they did eat and they said unto him where is sarah thy wife and he said behold in the tent and he said i will certainly return unto thee according to the time of life and lo sarah thy wife shall have a son and sarah heard it in the tent door which was behind him now abraham and sarah were old and well stricken in age and it ceased to be with sarah after the manner of women therefore sarah laughed within herself saying after i am waxed old shall i have pleasure my lord being old also and the lord said unto abraham wherefore did sarah laugh saying shall i of a surety bear a child which am old is anything too hard for the lord at the time appointed i will return unto thee according to the time of life and sarah shall have a son then sarah denied saying i laughed not for she was afraid and he said nay but thou didst laugh 
and the men rose up from thence and looked toward Sodom. And Abraham went with them to bring them on the way. And the Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham that thing which I do, seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him? For I know him, that he will command his children and his household after him, and they shall keep the way of the Lord, to do justice and judgment, that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he hath spoken of him. And the Lord said, Because the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great, and because their sin is very grievous, I will go down now, and see whether they have done altogether according to the cry of it, which is come unto me, and if not, I will know. And the men turned their faces from thence, and went toward Sodom. But Abraham stood yet before the Lord. And Abraham drew near, and said, Will thou also destroy the righteous with the wicked? Peradventure there be fifty righteous within the city. Wilt thou also destroy, and not spare the place for the fifty righteous that are therein? That be far from thee to do after this manner, to slay the righteous with the wicked. And that the righteous should be as the wicked, that be far from thee. Shall not the judge of all the earth do right? And the Lord said, If I find in Sodom fifty righteous within the city, then I will spare all the place for their sakes. And Abraham answered and said, Behold, now I have taken upon me to speak unto the Lord, which am but dust and ashes. Peradventure there shall lack five of the fifty righteous. Wilt thou destroy all the city for lack of five? And he said, If I find there forty and five, I will not destroy it. And he spake unto him yet again, and said, Peradventure shall be forty found there. And he said, I will not do it for forty's sake. And he said unto him, O oh, let not the Lord be angry. I will speak peradventure that shall thirty be found there. And he said, I will not do it if I find thirty there. And he said, Behold now, I have taken upon me to speak unto the Lord. Peradventure there be twenty found there. And he said, I will not destroy it for twenty's sake. And he said, O oh, let not the Lord be angry, and I will speak yet but this once peradventure ten shall be found there and he said i will not destroy it for ten's sake and the lord went his way as soon as he had left communing with abraham and abraham returned unto his place and there came two angels to sodom at even and lot sat in the gate of sodom and lot seeing them rose up to meet them and he bowed himself with his face toward the ground and he said Behold now, my lords, turn in, I pray you, into your servant's house, and tarry all night, and wash your feet, and ye shall rise up early, and go on your ways. And they said, Nay, but we will abide in the street all night. And he pressed upon them greatly, and they turned in unto him, and entered into his house, and he made them a feast, and did bake unleavened bread, and they did eat. But before they lay down, the men of the city, even the men of Sodom, compassed the house round, both old and young, all the people from every quarter. And they called unto Lot, and said unto him, Where are the men which came in to thee this night? Bring them out unto us, that we may know them. And Lot went out at the door unto them, and shut the door after him, and said, I pray you, brethren, do not so wickedly. Behold now, I have two daughters which have not known man. Let me, I pray you, bring them out unto you, and do ye to them as is good in your eyes. Only unto these men do nothing, for therefore came they under the shadow of my roof. And they said, Stand back. And they said again, This one fellow came in to sojourn, and he will needs be a judge. Now will we deal worse with thee than with them. And they pressed sore upon the man, even Lot, and came near to break the door. But the men put forth their hand, and pulled Lot into the house to them, and shut the door. And they smote the men that were at the door of the house with blindness, both small and great, so that they wearied themselves to find the door. And the men said unto Lot, Hast thou any besides? 
son-in-law and thy sons and thy daughters and whosoever thou hast in the city bring them out of this place for we will destroy this place because the cry of them is wax and great before the face of the lord and the lord hath sent us to destroy it and lot went out and spake unto his sons-in-law which married his daughters and said up get you out of this place for the lord will destroy this city but he seemed as one that mocked unto his sons-in-law and when the morning arose the angels hastened lot saying arise take thy wife and thy two daughters which are here lest thou be consumed in the iniquity of the city and while he lingered the men laid hold upon his hand and upon the hand of his wife and upon the hand of his two daughters the lord being merciful unto him and they brought him forth and set him without the city and it came to pass when they had brought them forth abroad that he said escape for thy life look not behind thee neither stay thou in all the plain escape to the mountain lest thou be consumed and lot said unto them oh not so my lord behold now thy servant hath found grace in thy sight and thou hast magnified thy mercy which thou hast showed unto me in saving my life and i cannot escape to the mountain lest some evil take me and i die behold now this city is near to flee unto and it is a little one oh let me escape thither is it not a little one and my soul shall live and he said unto him see i have accepted thee concerning this thing also that i will not overthrow this city for the which thou hast spoken haste thee escape thither for i cannot do anything till thou be come thither therefore the name of the city was called zoar the sun was risen upon the earth when lot entered into zoar then the lord rained upon sodom and upon gomorrah brimstone and fire from the lord out of heaven and he overthrew those cities and all the plain and all the inhabitants of the cities and that which grew upon the ground but his wife looked back from behind him and she became a pillar of salt and abraham got up early in the morning to the place where he stood before the lord and he looked toward sodom and gomorrah and toward all the land of the plain and beheld and lo the smoke of the country went up as the smoke of a furnace and it came to pass when god destroyed the cities of the plain that god remembered abraham and sent lot out of the midst of the overthrow when he overthrew the cities in which lot dwelt and lot went up out of zoar and dwelt in the mountain and his two daughters with him for he feared to dwell in zoar and he dwelt in a cave he and his two daughters and the firstborn said unto the younger our father is old and there is not a man in the earth to come in unto us after the manner of all the earth come let us make our father drink wine and we will lie with him that we may preserve seed of our father and they made their father drink wine that night and the firstborn went in and lay with her father and he perceived not when she lay down nor when she arose and it came to pass on the morrow that the firstborn said unto the younger behold i lay yesternight with my father let us make him drink wine this night also and go thou in and lie with him that we may preserve seed of our father and they made their father drink wine that night also and the younger arose and lay with him and he perceived not when she lay down nor when she arose thus were both the daughters of lot with child by their father and the firstborn bare a son and called his name moab the same is the father of the moabites unto this day and the younger she also bare a son and called his name benami the same is the father of the children of ammon unto this day and abraham journeyed from thence toward the south country and dwelled between kadesh and shur and sojourned in gerar and abraham said of sarah his wife uh, she is my sister and abimelech king of gerar sent and took sarah but god came to abimelech in a dream by night and said to him behold thou art but a dead man for the woman which thou hast taken for she is a man's wife but abimelech had not come near her and he said lord wilt thou slay also a righteous nation said he not unto me she is my sister and she even herself said he is my brother in the integrity of my heart and in the innocence of my hands have i done this and god said unto him in a dream yea i know that thou didst this 
in the integrity of thy heart, for I also withheld thee from sinning against me. Therefore suffered I thee not to touch her. Now therefore restore the man his wife, for he is a prophet, and he shall pray for thee, and thou shalt live. And if thou restore her not, know that thou shalt surely die, thou and all that are thine. Therefore Abimelech rose early in the morning, and called all his servants, and told all these things in their ears, and the men were sore afraid. Then Abimelech called Abraham, and said unto him, What hast thou done unto us? And what have I offended thee? Thou hast brought on me and my kingdom a great sin. Thou hast done deeds unto me that ought not to be done. And Abimelech said unto Abraham, What sawest thou that thou hast done this thing? And Abraham said, because i thought surely the fear of god is not in this place and they will slay me for my wife's sake and yet indeed she is my sister she is the daughter of my father but not the daughter of my mother and she became my wife and it came to pass when god caused me to wander from my father's house that i said unto her this is thy kindness which thou shalt show unto me at every place whither we shall come Say of me, he is my brother. And Abimelech took sheep and oxen and men servants and women servants and gave them unto Abraham, and restored him Sarah his wife. And Abimelech said, Behold, my land is before thee. Dwell where it pleaseth thee. And unto Sarah he said, Behold, I have given thy brother a thousand pieces of silver. Behold, he is to thee a covering of the eyes unto all that are with thee and with all other. Thus she was reproved. So Abraham prayed unto God, and God healed Abimelech and his wife and his maidservants, and they bare children. For the Lord had fast closed up all the wombs of the house of Abimelech, because of Sarah, Abraham's wife. And the Lord visited Sarah as he had said, and the Lord did unto Sarah as he had spoken. For Sarah conceived, and bare Abraham a son in his old age, at the set time of which God had spoken to him. And Abraham called the name of his son that was born unto him, whom Sarah bare to him, Isaac. And Abraham circumcised his son Isaac, being eight days old, as God had commanded him. And Abraham was a hundred years old when his son Isaac was born unto him. And Sarah said, God hath made me to laugh, so that all that hear will laugh with me. And she said, Who would have said unto Abraham that Sarah should have given children suck? For I have borne him a son in his old age. And the child grew and was weaned, and Abraham made a great feast the same day that Isaac was weaned. And Sarah saw the son of Hagar the Egyptian, which she had borne unto Abraham, mocking. Wherefore she said unto Abraham, Cast out his bondwoman and her son, for the son of this bondwoman shall not be heir with my son, even with Isaac. And the thing was very grievous in Abraham's sight because of his son. And God said unto Abraham, let it not be grievous in thy sight because of the lad and because of thy bondwoman and in that sarah has said unto thee hearken unto her voice for in isaac shall thy seed be called and also of the son of the bondwoman will i make a nation because he is thy seed and abraham rose up early in the morning and took bread and a bottle of water and gave it unto hagar putting it on her shoulder and the child, and sent her away. And she departed and wandered in the wilderness of Beersheba. And the water was spent in the bottle, and she cast the child under one of the shrubs. And she went and sat down over against him a good way off, as it were a bowshot, for she said, Let me not see the death of the child. And she sat over against him, and lifted up her voice, and wept. And God heard the voice of the lad, and the angel of God called to Hagar out of heaven, and said unto her, What aileth thee, Hagar? Fear not, for God hath heard the voice of the lad where he is. Arise, lift up the lad, and hold him in thine hand, for I will make him a great nation. And God opened her eyes, and she saw a well of water. And she went and filled the bottle with water, and gave the lad to drink. And God was with the lad, and he grew and dwelt in the wilderness, and became an archer. And he dwelt in the wilderness of Paran, and his mother took him a wife out of the land of Egypt. And it came to pass at that time that Abimelech and Phicol, the chief captain of his host, spake unto Abraham, saying, 
God is with thee with all that thou doest. Now therefore swear unto me here by God, that thou wilt not deal falsely with me, nor with my son, nor with my son's son, but according to the kindness that I have done unto thee, thou shalt do unto me, and to the land wherein thou hast sojourned. And Abraham said, I will swear. And Abraham reproved Abimelech because of a well of water, which Abimelech's servants had violently taken away. And Abimelech said, I wot not who hath done this thing, neither didst thou tell me, neither yet heard I of it but to-day. And Abraham took sheep and oxen and gave them unto Abimelech, and both of them made a covenant. And Abraham set seven ewe lambs of the flock by themselves, and Abimelech said unto Abraham, what mean these seven ewe lambs which thou hast set apart by themselves? And he said, For these seven ewe lambs shalt thou take of my hand, that they may be a witness unto me that I have digged this well. Wherefore he called that place Beersheba, because there they swear, both of them. Thus they made a covenant at Beersheba. Then Abimelech rose up, and Phicol the chief captain of his host, and they returned into the land of the Philistines. And Abraham planted a grove in Beersheba, and called there on the name of the Lord, the everlasting God. And Abraham sojourned in the Philistines' land many days. And it came to pass after these things that God did test Abraham, and said unto him, Abraham! And he said, Behold, here I am. And he said, Take now thy son, thine only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains which I will tell thee of. And Abraham rose up early in the morning, and saddled his ass, and took two of his young men with him, and Isaac his son, and clave the wood for the burnt offering, and rose up and went unto the place of which God had told him. Then on the third day Abraham lifted up his eyes, and saw the place afar off. And Abraham said unto his young men, Abide ye here with the ass and I and the lad will go yonder and worship, and come again to you. And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering, and laid it upon Isaac his son, and he took the fire in his hand and a knife, and they went both of them together. And Isaac spake unto Abraham his father, and said, My father. And he said, Here I am, my son. And he said, Behold the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? And Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went both of them together, and they came to the place which God had told him of, and Abraham built an altar there, and laid the wood in order, and bound Isaac his son, and laid him on the altar upon the wood. And Abraham stretched forth his hand, and took the knife to slay his son. And the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven, and said, Abraham, Abraham, and he said, Here am I. And he said, Lay not thine hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God, seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, from me. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him a ram caught in a thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram, and offered him up for a burnt offering in the stead of his son. And Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah-Jireh, as it is said to this day, In the mount of the Lord it shall be seen. And the angel of the Lord called unto Abraham out of heaven the second time, and said, By myself have I sworn, saith the Lord, For because thou hast done this thing, and hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, that in blessing I will bless thee, and in multiplying I will multiply thy seed as the stars of the heaven, and as the sand which is upon the seashore, and thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies. And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because thou hast obeyed my voice. End of section 2「
The story of Jacob from Genesis chapters 27 to 31, King James Version. Narrated by Seek Wisdom. Isaac, read by Larry Wilson. Rebecca, read by Christine G. Jacob, read by Michael C. Johnson. Esau, read by Chata. The Lord, read by David Olson. Men of Haran, read by Esther Ben Simonides. Laban, read by Del de Pignoles. Leah, read by Lydia. Rachel, read by Rachel. And it came to pass that when Isaac was old and his eyes were dim so that he could not see, he called Esau his eldest son and said unto him, My son. And he said unto him, Behold, here am I. He said, Behold, now I am old. I know not the day of my death. Now therefore take, I pray thee, thy weapons, thy quiver and thy bow, and go out to the field and take me some venison, and make me savory meat such as I love, and bring it to me that I may eat, that my soul may bless thee before I die. And Rebekah heard when Isaac spake to Esau his son, and Esau went to the field to hunt for venison and to bring it, and Rebekah spake unto Jacob her son, saying, Behold, I heard thy father speak unto Esau thy brother, saying, Bring me Venetian, and make me savoury meat, that I may eat, and bless thee before the Lord before my death. Now therefore, my son, obey my voice according to that which I command thee. Go now to the flock, and fetch me from thence two good kids of the goats, and I will make them savoury meat for thy father, such as he loveth. And thou shalt bring it to thy father, that he may eat, and that he may bless thee before his death. And Jacob said to Rebekah his mother, Behold, Esau my brother is a hairy man, and I am a smooth man. My father peradventure will feel me, and I shall seem to him as a deceiver, and I shall bring a curse upon me and not a blessing. And his mother said unto him, Upon me be thy curse, my son. Only obey my voice, and go fetch me them. And he went and fetched, and brought them to his mother. And his mother made savory meat, such as his father loved. And Rebekah took goodly raiment of her eldest son Esau, which were with her in the house, and put them upon Jacob her younger son. And she put the skins of the kids of the goats upon his hands, and upon the smooth of his neck. And she gave the savory meat and the bread which she had prepared into the hand of her son Jacob. And he came unto his father, and said, My father. And he said, Here am I. Who art thou, my son? And Jacob said unto his father, I am Esau, thy firstborn. I have done according as thou badest me. Arise, I pray thee, sit and eat of my venison, that thy soul may bless me. And Isaac said unto his son, How is it that thou hast found it so quickly, my son? Because the Lord thy God brought it to me. And Isaac said unto Jacob, Come near, I pray thee, that I may feel thee, my son, whether thou be my very son, Esau, or not. And Jacob went near unto Isaac his father, and he felt him and said, The voice is Jacob's voice, but the hands are the hands of Esau. And he discerned him not, because his hands were hairy as his brother Esau's hands. So he blessed him, and he said, Are thou my very son Esau? And he said, I am. And he said, Bring it near me, and I will eat of my son's venison, that my soul may bless thee. And he brought it near to him, and he did eat, and he brought him wine, and he drank. And his father Isaac said unto him, Come near now, and kiss me, my son. And he came near and kissed him, and he smelled the smell of his raiment, and blessed him, and said, See, the smell of my son is as the smell of a field which the Lord hath blessed. Therefore God give thee of the dew of heaven, and the fatness of the earth and plenty of corn and wine. Let people serve thee, and nations bow down to thee. Be lord over thy brethren, and let thy mother's sons bow down to thee. Cursed be every one that curseth thee, and blessed be he that blesseth thee. And it came to pass, as soon as Isaac had made an end of blessing Jacob, and Jacob was yet scarce gone out from the presence of Isaac his father, that Esau his brother came in from his hunting. And he also had made savory meat, and brought it unto his father, and said unto his father, Let my father arise, and eat of his son's venison, that thy soul may bless me. 
And Isaac his father said unto him, Who art thou? And he said, I am thy son, thy firstborn, Esau. And Isaac trembled very exceedingly, and said, Who? Where is he that hath taken venison, and brought it to me? And I have eaten of all before thou camest, and have blessed him. Yea, and he shall be blessed. And when Esau heard the words of his father, he cried with a great and exceeding bitter cry, and said unto his father, Bless me, even me also, O my father. And he said, uh, Thy brother came with subtlety, and hath taken away thy blessing. And he said, Is not he rightly named Jacob? For he hath supplanted me these two times. He took away my birthright, and behold, now he taketh away my blessing. And he said, Hast thou not reserved a blessing for me? And Isaac answered and said unto Esau, Behold, I have made him thy lord, and all his brethren have I given to him for service, and with corn and wine I have sustained him. And what shall I do now unto thee, my son? And Esau said unto his father, Hast thou but one blessing, my father? Bless me, even me also, O oh, my father. And Esau lifted up his voice and wept, and Isaac his father answered and said unto him, Behold, thy dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth, and of the dew of heaven from above, and by thy sword shalt thou live, and shalt serve thy brother, and it shall come to pass when thou shalt have dominion, that thou shalt break his yoke from off thy neck. And Esau hated Jacob because of the blessing wherewith his father blessed him. And Esau said in his heart, The days of mourning for my father are at hand. Then I will slay my brother Jacob. And these words of Esau, her elder son, were told to Rebekah. And she sent and called Jacob, her younger son, and said unto him, Behold, thy brother Esau, as touching thee, doth comfort himself, purposing to kill thee. Now therefore, my son, obey my voice. Arise, flee thou to Laban, my brother, to Haran, and tarry with him for a few days, until thy brother's fury turn away, until thy brother's anger turn away from thee, and he forget that which thou hast done to him. Then I will send, and fetch thee from thence. Why should I be deprived also of you both in one day? And Rebekah said to Isaac, I am weary of my life because of the daughters of Heth. If Jacob take a wife of the daughters of Heth, such as these which are of the daughters of the land, what good shall my life do me? And Isaac called Jacob, and blessed him, and charged him, and said unto him, Thou shalt not take a wife of the daughters of Canaan. Arise, go to Padanaram, to the house of Bethuel, thy mother's father, and take thee a wife from thence of the daughters of Laban, thy mother's brother. And God Almighty bless thee, and make thee fruitful, and multiply thee that thou mayest be a multitude of people, and give thee the blessing of Abraham to thee, and to thy seed with thee, that thou mayest inherit the land wherein thou art a stranger, which God gave unto Abraham. And Isaac sent away Jacob, and he went to pay an Aram unto Laban, son of Bethuel the Syrian, the brother of Rebekah, Jacob's and Esau's mother. When Esau saw that Isaac had blessed Jacob and sent him away to Paden Aram to take him wife from thence, and that as he blessed him he gave him a charge, saying, Thou shalt not take a wife of the daughters of Canaan. And that Jacob obeyed his father and his mother and was gone to Paden Aram. And Esau, seeing that the daughters of Canaan pleased not Isaac his father, then went Esau unto Ishmael and took unto the wives which he had, Mahalath the daughter of Ishmael, Abraham's son, the sister of Nebajoth, to be his wife. And Jacob went out from Beersheba and went toward Haran. And he lighted upon a certain place, and tarried there all night, because the sun was set. And he took of the stones of that place, and put them for his pillows, and lay down in that place to sleep. And he dreamed, and behold, a ladder set up on the earth, and the top of it reached to heaven. And behold, the angels of God ascending and descending on it. And behold, the Lord stood above it, and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham thy father, and the God of Isaac, the land whereon thou liest, to thee will I give it, and to thy seed, and thy seed shall be as the dust of the earth, and thou shalt spread abroad to the west, and to the east, and to the north, and to the south, 
and in thee and in thy seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed and behold i am with thee and will keep thee in all places whither thou goest and will bring thee again into this land for i will not leave thee until i have done that which i have spoken to thee of and jacob awaked out of his sleep and he said surely the lord is in this place and i knew it not and he was afraid and said how dreadful is this place this is none other but the house of god and this is the gate of heaven and jacob rose up early in the morning and took the stone that he had put for his pillows and set it up for a pillar and poured oil upon the top of it and he called the name of that place bethel but the name of that city was called luz at the first and jacob vowed a vow saying if god will be with me and will keep me in this way that i go and will give me bread to eat and raiment to put on so that i come again to my father's house in peace then shall the lord be my god and this stone which i have set for a pillar shall be god's house and of all that thou shalt give me i will surely give the tenth unto thee then jacob went on his journey and came into the land of the people of the east and he looked and behold a well in the field and lo there were three flocks of sheep lying by it for out of that well they watered the flocks and a great stone was upon the well's mouth and thither were all the flocks gathered and they rolled the stone from the well's mouth and watered the sheep and put the stone again upon the well's mouth in his place and jacob said unto them my brethren whence be ye and they said of haran are we and he said unto them know ye laban the son of nahor and they said we know him and he said unto them is he well and they said he is well and behold rachel his daughter cometh with the sheep and he said lo it is yet high day neither is it time that the cattle should be gathered together water ye the sheep and go and feed them and they said we cannot until all the flocks be gathered together until they roll the stone from the well's mouth then we water the sheep and while he yet spake with them rachel came with her father's sheep for she kept them and it came to pass when jacob saw rachel the daughter of laban his mother's brother and the sheep of laban his mother's brother that jacob went near and rolled the stone from the well's mouth and watered the flock of laban his mother's brother and jacob kissed rachel and lifted up his voice and wept and jacob told rachel that he was her father's brother and that he was rebekah's son and she ran and told her father and it came to pass when laban heard the tidings of jacob his sister's son that he ran to meet him and embraced him and kissed him and brought him to his house and he told laban all these things and laban said to him surely thou art my bone and my flesh and he abode with him the space of a month and laban said unto jacob because thou art my brother shouldest thou therefore serve me for naught tell me what shall thy wages be and laban had two daughters the name of the elder was leah and the name of the younger was rachel leah was tender-eyed but rachel was beautiful and well favoured and jacob loved rachel and said i will serve thee seven years for rachel thy younger daughter and laban said it is better that i give her to thee than that i should give her to another man abide with me and jacob served seven years for rachel and they seemed unto him but a few days for the love he had to her and jacob said unto laban give me my wife for my days are fulfilled that i may go in unto her and laban gathered together all the men of the place and made a feast and it came to pass in the evening that he took leah his daughter and brought her to him and he went in unto her and laban gave unto his daughter leah zilpah his maid for an handmaid and it came to pass that in the morning behold it was leah and he said to laban what is this thou hast done unto me did not i serve with thee for rachel wherefore then hast thou beguiled me and laban said it must not be so done in our country to give the younger before the firstborn fulfil her week and we will give thee this also for the service which thou shalt serve me yet seven other years and jacob did so and fulfilled her week and he gave him rachel his daughter to wife also and laban gave to rachel his daughter billa his handmaid to be her maid and he went in also unto rachel and he loved also rachel more than leah and served with him yet seven other years and when the lord saw that leah was hated he opened her womb but rachel was barren and leah conceived and bare a son and she called his name reuben for she said surely the lord hath looked upon my affliction now therefore my husband will love me and she conceived again and bare a son and said because the lord hath heard i was hated he hath therefore given me this son also and she called his name simeon and she conceived again and bare a son and said now this time will my husband be joined unto me because i have borne him three sons therefore was his name called levi and she conceived again and bare a son and she said now will i praise the lord therefore she called his name judah and left bearing
And when Rachel saw that she bare Jacob no children, Rachel envied her sister and said unto Jacob, Give me children, or else I die. And Jacob's anger was kindled against Rachel, and he said, Am I in God's stead? Who hath withheld from thee the fruit of the womb? And she said, Behold, my maid Bilhah, go in unto her, and she shall bear upon my knees, that I may also have children by her. And she gave him Bilhah her handmaid to wife, and Jacob went in unto her. And Bilhah conceived and bare Jacob his son, and Rachel said, God hath judged me, and hath also heard my voice, and hath given me a son. Therefore called she his name Dan, and Bilhah Rachel's maid conceived again, and bare Jacob his second son. And Rachel said, With great wrestlings I have wrestled with my sister, and I have prevailed. And she called his name Naphtali. When Leah saw that she had left bearing, she took Zilpah her maid, and gave her Jacob to wife. And Zilpah Leah's maid bare Jacob his son. And Leah said, A troop cometh. And she called his name Gad. And Zilpah Leah's maid bare Jacob his second son. And Leah said, Happy am I, for the daughters will call me blessed. And she called his name Asher. And Reuben went in the days of wheat harvest, and found mandrakes in the field, and brought them unto his mother Leah. Then Rachel said to Leah, Give me, I pray thee, of thy son's mandrakes. And she said unto her, is it a small matter that thou hast taken my husband? And wouldest thou take away my son's mandrakes also? And Rachel said, Therefore he shall lie with thee to-night for thy son's mandrakes. And Jacob came out of the field in the evening, and Leah went out to meet him, and said, Thou must come in unto me, for surely I have hired thee with my son's mandrakes. And he lay with her that night. And God hearkened unto Leah, and she conceived, and bare Jacob the fifth son. And Leah said, God hath given me my hire because I have given my maiden to my husband. And she called his name Issachar. And Leah conceived again, and bare Jacob the sixth son. And Leah said, God hath endued me with a good dowry. Now will my husband dwell with me, because I have borne him six sons. And she called his name Zebulun. And afterwards she bare a daughter, and called her name Dinah. And God remembered Rachel, and God hearkened to her, and opened her womb. And she conceived, and bare a son, and said, God hath taken away my reproach. And she called his name Joseph, and said, The Lord shall add to me another son. And it came to pass, when Rachel had borne Joseph, that Jacob said unto Laban, Send me away, that I may go unto mine own place, and to my country. Give me my wives and my children, for whom I have served thee, and let me go, for thou knowest my service which I have done thee. And Laban said unto him, I pray thee, if I have found favor in thy eyes, tarry, for I have learned by experience that the Lord hath blessed me for thy sake. And he said, Appoint me thy wages, and I will give it. And he said unto him, Thou knowest how I have served thee, and how thy cattle was with me. For it was little which thou hast before I came, and now it is increased unto a multitude, and the Lord hath blessed thee since my coming. And now when shall I provide for mine own house also? And he said, What shall I give thee? And Jacob said, Thou shalt not give me anything. If thou wilt do this thing for me, I will again feed and keep thy flock. I will pass through all thy flock to-day, removing from thence all the speckled and spotted cattle, and all the brown cattle among the sheep, and the spotted and speckled among the goats, and of such shall be my hire. So shall my righteousness answer for me in time to come, when it shall come for my hire before thy face. Every one that is not speckled and spotted among the goats, and brown among the sheep, that shall be counted stolen with me. And Laban said, Behold, I would it might be according to thy word. And he removed that day the he-goats that were ring-straked and spotted, and all the she-goats that were speckled and spotted, and every one that had some white in it, and all the brown among the sheep, and gave them into the hand of his sons. And he set three days' journey betwixt himself and Jacob, and Jacob fed the rest of Laban's flocks. And Jacob took him rods of green poplar, and of the hazel and chestnut tree, and peeled white strakes in them, and made the white appear which was in the rods. And he set the rods which he had peeled before the flocks in the gutters and the watering troughs when the flocks came to drink, that they should conceive when they came to drink. And the flocks conceived before the rods, and brought forth cattle ring-straked, speckled, and spotted. And Jacob did separate the lambs, and set the faces of the flocks toward the ring straight, and all the brown in the flock of Laban. And he put his own flocks by themselves, and put them not unto Laban's cattle. And it came to pass, whensoever the stronger cattle did conceive, that Jacob laid the rods before the eyes of the cattle in the gutters, that they might conceive among the rods. But when the cattle were feeble, he put them not in. So the feebler were Laban's, and the stronger Jacob's. And the man increased exceedingly, and had much cattle, and maid servants and men servants and camels and asses. And he heard the words of Laban's sons, saying, Jacob hath taken away all that was our father's, and of that which was our father's hath he gotten all this glory. 
and jacob beheld the countenance of laban and behold it was not toward him as before and the lord said unto jacob return unto the land of thy fathers and to thy kindred and i will be with thee and jacob sent and called rachel and leah to the field and to his flock and said unto them i see your father's countenance that it is not toward me as before but the god of my father hath been with me and ye know that with all my power i have served your father and your father hath deceived me and changed my wages ten times but god suffered him not to hurt me if he said thus the speckled shall be thy wages then all the cattle bear speckled and if he said thus the ring-straked shall be thy hire then bear all the cattle ring-straked thus god hath taken away the cattle of your father and given them to me and it came to pass at the time that the cattle conceived that i lifted up mine eyes and saw in a dream and behold the rams which sleeped upon the cattle were ring-staked speckled and gristled and the angel of god spake unto me in a dream saying jacob and i said here am i and he said lift up now thine eyes and see all the rams which sleep upon the cattle are ring-straked speckled and grizzled for i have seen all that laban doeth unto thee i am the god of bethel where thou anointest the pillar and where thou vowest a vow unto me now arise get thee out from this land and return unto the land of thy kindred and rachel and leah answered and said unto him is there yet any portion or inheritance for us in our father's house are we not counted of him strangers for he hath sold us and hath quite devoured also our money for all the riches which god hath taken from our father that is ours and our children's now then whatsoever god hath said unto thee do then jacob rose up and set his sons and his wives upon camels and it carried away all his cattle and all his goods which he had gotten the cattle of his getting which he had gotten and paid in aram for to go to isaac his father in the land of canaan and laban went to shear his sheep and rachel had stolen the images that were her father's and jacob stole away unawares to laban the syrian and that he told him not that he fled so he fled with all that he had and he rose up and passed over the river and set his face toward the mount gilead and it was told laban on the third day that jacob was fled and he took his brethren with him and pursued after him seven days journey and they overtook him in the mount gilead and god came to laban the syrian in a dream by night and said unto him take heed that thou speak not to jacob either good or bad then laban overtook jacob now jacob had pitched his tent in the mount and laban with his brethren pitched in the mount of gilead and laban said to jacob what hast thou done that thou hast stolen away unawares to me and carried away my daughters as captives taken with the sword wherefore didst thou flee away secretly and steal away from me and didst not tell me that i might have sent thee away with mirth and with songs with tabret and with harp and hast not suffered me to kiss my sons and my daughters thou hast now done foolishly in so doing it is in the power of my hand to do you hurt but the god of your father spake unto me yesternight saying Take thou heed that thou speak not to Jacob either good or bad. And now, though thou wouldst needs be gone, because thou art sore longest after thy father's house, yet wherefore hast thou stolen my gods? And Jacob answered and said to Laban, Because I was afraid, for I said, Peradventure thou wouldst take by force thy daughters from me. With whomsoever thou findest thy gods, let him not live. Before our brethren discern thou what is thine with me, and take it to thee for Jacob knew not that Rachel had stolen them. And Laban went into Jacob's tent, and into Leah's tent, and into the two maidservants' tents, but he found them not. Then went he out of Leah's tent, and entered into Rachel's tent. Now Rachel had taken the images, and put them in the camel's furniture, and sat upon them. And Laban searched all the tent, but found them not. And she said to her father, Let it not displease my lord that I cannot rise up before thee, for the custom of women is upon me and he searched but found not the images and jacob was wroth and showed with laban and jacob answered and said to laban what is my trespass what is my sin that thou hast so hotly pursued after me whereas thou hast searched all my stuff what hast thou found of all thy household stuff set it here before my brethren and thy brethren that they may judge betwixt us both this twenty years have i been with thee thy ewes and thy she-goats have not cast their young and the rams of thy flock have I not eaten. That which was torn of beasts I brought not unto thee. I bear the loss of it. Of thy hand didst thou require it, whether stolen by day or stolen by night. Thus I was, in the day the draught consumed me, and the frost by night, and my sleep departed from mine eyes. 
Thus have I been twenty years in thy house. I served thee fourteen years for thy two daughters, and six years for thy cattle, and thou hast changed my wages ten times, except the God of my father, the God of Abraham, and the fear of Isaac, had been with me. Surely thou hast sent me away now empty. God hath seen my affliction, and the labor of my hands, and rebuked thee yesternight. And Laban answered and said unto Jacob, These daughters are my daughters, and these children are my children, and these cattle are my cattle, and all that thou seest is mine. And what can I do this day unto these my daughters, uh, unto their children which they have borne? Now therefore come thou, let us make a covenant, I and thou, and let it be for a witness between me and thee. And Jacob took a stone, and set it up for a pillar. And Jacob said unto his brethren, Gather stones. And they took stones, and made an heap. And they did eat there upon the heap. And Laban called it Jegar Sahadutha, but Jacob called it Galid. And Laban said, This heap is a witness between me and thee this day. Therefore was the name of it called Galid, and Mizpah, for he said, The Lord watch between me and thee, when we are absent from one another. If thou shalt afflict my daughters, or if thou shalt take other wives besides my daughters, no man is with us. See, God is witness betwixt me and thee. And Laban said to Jacob, Behold this heap, and behold this pillar, which I have cast betwixt me and thee. This heap shall be witness, and this pillar be witness, that I will not pass over this heap to thee, and that thou shalt not pass over this heap and this pillar unto me for harm. The God of Abraham and the God of Nahor, the God of their father, judge betwixt us. And Jacob sware by the fear of his father Isaac. Then Jacob offered sacrifice upon the mount, and called his brethren to eat bread. And they did eat bread, and tarried all night in the mount. And early in the morning Laban rose up, and kissed his sons and his daughters, and blessed them. And Laban departed and returned unto his place. End of section 3section four of dramatized bible passages from the old testament this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit LibriVox.org. the story of joseph part one from genesis chapters thirty nine to forty two king james version narrated by lydia joseph read by michael c johnson potiphar's wife read by christine g Chief Butler, read by David Allen. Chief Baker, read by Beth Thomas. Jacob, read by Brad Philippone. Bumpus, read by Gwenoly Blind. Judah, read by E. Snow. Reuben, read by Michael Landu. Pharaoh, read by Dother Vignoles. And Joseph was brought down to Egypt, and Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard, an Egyptian, bought him of the hands of the Ishmaelites, which had brought him down thither. And the Lord was with Joseph, and he was a prosperous man, and he was in the house of his master the Egyptian. And his master saw that the Lord was with him, and that the Lord made all he did to prosper in his hand. And Joseph found grace in his sight, and he served him, and he made him overseer over his house, and all that he had put into his hand. And it came to pass from the time that he had made him overseer in his house, and over all that he had, that the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake. And the blessing of the Lord was upon all that he had in the house and in the field. And he left all that he had in Joseph's hand, and he knew not aught he had, save the bread which he did eat. And Joseph was a goodly person, and well favoured. And it came to pass after these things, that his master's wife cast her eyes upon Joseph, and she said, Lie with me. But he refused, and said unto his master's wife, Behold, my master wotteth not what is with me in the house, and he hath committed all that he hath to my hand. There is none greater in this house than I, neither hath he kept back anything from me but thee, because thou art his wife. How then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? And it came to pass, as she spake to Joseph day by day, that he hearkened not unto her, to lie by her or to be with her. And it came to pass about this time that Joseph went into the house to do his business, and there was none of the men of the house there within. And she caught him by his garment, saying, Lie with me. And he left his garment in her hand, and fled, and got him out. And it came to pass, when she saw that he had left his garment in her hand, and was fled forth, that she called unto the men of her house, and spake unto them, saying, See, he hath brought in an Hebrew unto us to mock us. He came in unto me to lie with me, and I cried with a loud voice. And it came to pass, when he heard that I lifted up my voice and cried, that he left his garment with me, and fled, and got him out. And she laid up his garment by her, until his lord came home. And she spake unto him according to these words, saying, 
the Hebrew servant, which thou hast brought unto us, came in unto me to mock me. And it came to pass, as I lifted up my voice and cried, that he left his garment with me and fled out. And it came to pass, when his master heard the words of his wife, which she spake unto him, saying, After this manner did thy servant to me. And it came to pass, when his master heard the words of his wife, which she spake unto him, saying, After this manner did thy servant to me, that his wrath was kindled. And Joseph's master took him in, and put him into the prison, a place where the king's prisoners were bound, and he was there in the prison. But the Lord was with Joseph, and shewed him mercy, and gave him favour in the sight of the keeper of the prison. And the keeper of the prison committed to Joseph's hand all the prisoners that were in the prison, and whatsoever they did there, he was the doer of it. The keeper of the prison looked not to anything that was under his hand, because the Lord was with him, and that which he did, the Lord made it to prosper. And it came to pass after these things, that the butler of the king of Egypt and his baker had offended their lord the king of Egypt. And Pharaoh was wroth against two of his officers, against the chief of the butlers and against the chief of the bakers. And he put them in ward in the house of the captain of the guard, into the prison, the place where Joseph was bound. And the captain of the guard charged Joseph with them, and he served them, and they continued a season in ward. And they dreamed a dream both of them, each man his dream in one night, each man according to the interpretation of his dream, the butler and the baker of the king of Egypt, which were bound in the prison. And Joseph came in unto them in the morning, and looked upon them, and, behold, they were sad. And he asked Pharaoh's officers that were with him in the ward of his lord's house, saying, Wherefore look ye so sadly to-day? And they said unto him, We have dreamed a dream, and there is no interpreter of it. And Joseph said unto them, Do not interpretations belong to God? Tell me them, I pray you. And the chief butler told his dream to Joseph, and said to him, in my dream, behold, a vine was before me, and in the vine were three branches, and it was as though it budded, and her blossoms shot forth, and the clusters thereof brought forth ripe grapes. And Pharaoh's cup was in my hand, and I took the grapes, and pressed them into Pharaoh's cup, and I gave the cup into Pharaoh's hand. And Joseph said unto him, This is the interpretation of it. The three branches are three days, yet within three days shall Pharaoh lift up thine head, and restore thee unto thy place, and thou shalt deliver Pharaoh's cup into his hand, after the former manner when thou wast his butler. But think on me when it shall be well with thee, and shew kindness, I pray thee, unto me, and make mention of me unto Pharaoh, and bring me out of this house. For indeed I was stolen away out of the land of the Hebrews, and here also I have done nothing that they should put me into the dungeon. When the chief baker saw that the interpretation was good, he said unto Joseph, I also was in my dream, and behold, I had three white baskets on my head, and in the uppermost basket there was of all manner of bake meats for Pharaoh, and the birds did eat them out of the basket upon my head. And Joseph answered and said, This is the interpretation thereof. The three baskets are three days, yet within three days shall Pharaoh lift up thy head from off thee, and shall hang thee on a tree, and the birds shall eat thy flesh from off thee. And it came to pass the third day, which was Pharaoh's birthday, that he made a feast unto all his servants, and he lifted up the head of the chief butler and of the chief baker among his servants. And he restored the chief butler unto his butlership again, and he gave the cup into his Pharaoh's hand. But he hanged the chief baker, as Joseph had interpreted to them. Yet did not the chief butler remember Joseph, but forget him. And it came to pass at the end of two full years that Pharaoh dreamed, and behold, he stood by the river. And behold, there came up out of the river seven well-favoured kine and fat-fleshed, and they fed in a meadow. And behold, seven other kine came up after them out of the river, ill-favoured and lean-fleshed, and stood by the other kine upon the brink of the river. And the ill-favoured and lean-fleshed kine did eat up the seven well-favoured and fat kind. So Pharaoh awoke. And he slept and dreamed the second time, and behold, seven ears of corn came up upon one stalk, rank and good, and behold, seven thin ears, and blasted with the east wind, sprung up after them. And the seven thin ears devoured the seven rank and full ears. And Pharaoh awoke, and behold, it was a dream. And it came to pass in the morning that his spirit was troubled, and he sent and called for all the magicians of Egypt, and all the wise men thereof. And Pharaoh told them his dream, but there was none that could interpret them unto Pharaoh. Then spake the chief butler unto Pharaoh, saying, Ah, oh, I do remember my faults this day. Pharaoh was wroth with his servants, and put me in ward in the captain of the guard's house, both me and the chief baker. And we dreamed a dream in one night, I and he. We dreamed each man according to the interpretation of his dream. And there was with us a young man, an Hebrew, servant to the captain of the guard. And we told him, and he interpreted to us our dreams. To each man according to his dream he did interpret. 
and it came to pass as he interpreted to us so it was me he restored unto mine office and him he hanged then pharaoh sent and called joseph and they brought him hastily out of the dungeon and he shaved himself and changed his raiment and came in unto pharaoh and pharaoh said unto joseph i have dreamed a dream and there is none that can interpret it and i have heard say of thee that thou canst understand a dream to interpret it and joseph answered pharaoh saying it is not in me god shall give pharaoh an answer of peace and pharaoh said unto joseph in my dream behold i stood upon the bank of the river and behold there came up out of the river seven kine fat fleshed and well favoured and they fed in a meadow and behold seven other kine came up after them poor and very ill favoured and lean fleshed such as i never saw in all the land of egypt for badness and the lean and the ill-favoured kine did eat up the first seven fat kine and when they had eaten them up it could not be known that they had eaten them but they were still ill-favoured as at the beginning so i awoke and i saw in my dream and behold seven ears came up in one stalk full and good and behold seven ears withered thin and blasted with the east wind sprung up after them and the thin ears devoured the seven good ears and i told this unto the magicians but there was none that could declare it to me and joseph said unto pharaoh the dream of pharaoh is one god hath shewed pharaoh what he is about to do the seven good kind are seven years and the seven good ears are seven years the dream is one and the seven thin and ill-favoured kind that came up after them are seven years and the seven empty ears blasted with the east wind shall be seven years of famine this is the thing which i have spoken unto pharaoh what god is about to do he sheweth unto pharaoh behold there come seven years of great plenty throughout all the land of egypt and there shall arise after them seven years of famine and all the plenty shall be forgotten in the land of egypt and the famine shall consume the land and the plenty shall not be known in the land by reason of that famine following for it shall be very grievous and for that the dream was doubled unto pharaoh twice it is because the thing is established by god and god will shortly bring it to pass now therefore let pharaoh look out a man discreet and wise and set him over the land of egypt let pharaoh do this and let him appoint officers over the land and take up the fifth part of the land of egypt in the seven plenteous years and let them gather all the food of those good years that come and lay up corn under the hand of pharaoh and let them keep food in the cities and that food shall be for store to the land against the seven years of famine which shall be in the land of egypt that the land perish not through the famine and the thing was good in the eyes of pharaoh and in the eyes of all his servants and pharaoh said unto his servants can we find such a one as this a man in whom the spirit of god is and pharaoh said unto joseph for as much as god hath showed thee all this there is none so discreet and wise as thou art thou shalt be over my house and according unto thy word shall all my people be ruled only in the throne will i be greater than thou and pharaoh said unto joseph see i have set thee over all the land of egypt and Pharaoh took off his ring from his hand, and put it upon Joseph's hand, and arrayed him in vestures of fine linen, and put a gold chain about his neck. And he made him to ride in the second chariot which he had, and they cried before him, Bow the knee. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, I am Pharaoh, and without thee shall no man lift up his hand or foot in all the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh called Joseph's name, Zaphnath paniah And he gave him to wife Asenath, the daughter of Potiphar, priest of On. And Joseph went out over all the land of Egypt. And Joseph was thirty years old when he stood before Pharaoh the king of Egypt. And Joseph went out from the presence of Pharaoh, and went throughout all the land of Egypt. And in the seven plenteous years the earth brought forth by handfuls. And he gathered up all the food of the seven years, which were in the land of Egypt, and laid up the food in the cities. The food of the field, which was round about every city, laid he up in the same. And Joseph gathered corn as the sand of the sea very much, until he left numbering, for it was without number. And unto Joseph were born two sons before the years of famine came, which Asenath the daughter of Potiphar, a priest of On, bare unto him. And Joseph called the name of the firstborn, Manasseh, for God, said he, hath made me forget all my toil and all my father's house. And the name of the second called he, Ephraim, for God hath caused me to be fruitful in the land of my affliction. And the seven years of plenteousness that was in the land of Egypt were ended. And the seven years of dearth began to come, according as Joseph had said. And the dearth was in all lands, but in all the land of Egypt there was bread. And when all the land of Egypt was famished, the people cried to Pharaoh for bread. And Pharaoh said unto all the Egyptians, Go unto Joseph, what he saith to you do. 
and the famine was over all the face of the earth and joseph opened all the storehouses and sold unto the egyptians and the famine waxed sore in the land of egypt and all countries came unto egypt to joseph for to buy corn because that the famine was so sore in all lands now when jacob saw that there was corn in egypt jacob said unto his sons why do ye look upon one another and he said behold i have heard that there is corn in egypt get you down thither and buy for us from thence that we may live and not die and joseph's ten brethren went down to buy corn in egypt but benjamin joseph's brother jacob sent not with his brethren for he said lest peradventure mischief befall him and the sons of israel came to buy corn among those that came for the famine was in the land of canaan and joseph was the governor over the land and he it was that sold to all the people of the land and joseph's brethren came and bowed down themselves before him with their faces to the earth and joseph saw his brethren and he knew them but made himself strange unto them and spake roughly unto them and he said unto them whence come ye and they said from the land of canaan to buy food and joseph knew his brethren but they knew not him and joseph remembered the dreams which he dreamed of them and said unto them ye are spies to see the nakedness of the land ye are come. And they said unto him, Nay, my lord, but to buy food are thy servants come. We are all one man's sons, we are true men, thy servants are no spies. And he said unto them, Nay, but to see the nakedness of the land ye are come. And they said, Thy servants are twelve brethren, the sons of one man in the land of Canaan. And behold, the youngest is this day with our father, and wants not. And Joseph said unto them, that is it that i speak unto you saying ye are spies hereby ye shall be proved by the life of pharaoh ye shall not go forth hence except your youngest brother come hither send one of you and let him fetch your brother and ye shall be kept in prison that your words may be proved whether there be any truth in you or else by the life of pharaoh surely ye are spies and he put them all together into ward three days and joseph said unto them the third day this do and live for i fear god if ye be true men let one of your brethren be bound in the house of your prison Go ye, carry corn for the famine of your houses, but bring your youngest brother unto me, so that your words may be verified, and ye shall not die. And they did so, and they said to one another, We are forever we guilty concerning our brother, in that we saw the anguish of his soul, when he besought us, and we would not hear. Therefore is this distress come upon us. And Reuben answered them, saying, Spake I not unto you, saying, Do not sin against the child, and ye would not hear? therefore behold also his blood is required and they knew not that joseph understood them for he spake unto them by an interpreter and he turned himself about from them and wept and returned to them again and communed with them and took from them simeon and bound him before their eyes then joseph commanded to fill their sacks with corn and to restore every man's money into his sack and to give them provision for the way and thus did he unto them and they laded their asses with the corn and departed thence and as one of them opened his sack to give his ass provender in the inn, he espied his money, for behold, it was in his sack's mouth. And he said unto his brethren, My money is restored, and lo, it is even in my sack. And their heart failed them, and they were afraid, saying to one another, What is this that God hath done unto us? And they came unto Jacob their father unto the land of Canaan, and told him all that befell unto them, saying, The man who is the lord of the land spake roughly to us, and took us for spies of the country. And we said unto him, We are true men, we are no spies. We be twelve brethren, sons of our father. One is not, and the youngest is this day with our father in the land of Canaan. And the man, the lord of the country, said unto us, Hereby shall I know that you are true men. We find your brethren in with me, and take food for the fern of your households, and be gone. And bring your youngest brother unto me, so shall I know that ye are no spies, but that ye are true men so will i deliver you your brother and you should traffic in the land and it came to pass as they emptied their sacks that behold every man's bundle of money was in his sack and when both they and their father saw the bundles of money they were afraid and jacob their father said unto them me have ye bereaved of my children joseph is not and simeon is not and he will take benjamin away all these things are against me and reuben spake unto his father saying slay my two sons if i bring him not to thee deliver him into my hand and i will bring him to thee again and he said my son shall not go down with you for his brother is dead and he is left alone if mischief befall him by the way in the which ye go 
then shall ye bring down my grey hairs with sorrow to the grave end of section four section five of dramatized bible passages from the old testament this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox.org the story of joseph part two from genesis chapters forty three to forty five king james version narrated by lydia joseph read by michael c johnson jacob read by brad philippone brothers read by Bruno O'Brien. judah read by e snow reuben read by michael landu pharaoh read by dada Binrolli. steward read by gideon snow chapter forty three and the famine was sore in the land and it came to pass when they had eaten up the corn which they had brought out of egypt their father said unto them go again buy us a little food and judah spake unto him saying the man did solemn any protest unto us saying ye shall not see my face except you rather be with you if thou wilt send our brother with us we will go down and buy thee food but if thou wilt not send him we will not go down for the man said unto us ye shall not see my face except your brother be with you and israel said wherefore dealt ye so ill with me as to tell the man whether ye had yet a brother and they said the man asked us straightway of our state and of our kindred saying is your father yet alive have ye enough a brother and we told him according to the tenor of his words could we so know that he would say bring your brother down and judah said unto israel his father send the lad with me and we will arise and go that we may live and not die both we and thou and also our little ones i will be shorty for him of my hand shalt thou require him if i bring him not unto thee and set him before thee then let me bear the blame for ever for except had we lingered surely now we had returned the second time and their father israel said unto them if it must be so now do this take of the best fruits in the land in your vessels and carry down the man a present a little balm and a little honey spices and myrrh nuts and almonds and take double money in your hands and the money that was brought again in the mouth of your sacks carry it again in your hand peradventure it was an oversight take also your brother and arise go again unto the man and god almighty give you mercy before the man that he may send away your other brother and benjamin if i be bereaved of my children i am bereaved and the men took that present and they took double money in their hand and benjamin and rose up and went down to egypt and stood before joseph and when joseph saw benjamin with them he said to the ruler of his house bring these men home and slay and make ready for these men shall dine with me at noon and the man did as joseph bade and the man brought the men into joseph's house and the men were afraid because they were brought into joseph's house and they said because of the mind that was returned in our sacks at the first time are we brought in that he may take occasion against us and fall upon us and take us for bondmen and our asses and they came near to the steward of joseph's house and they communed with him at the door of the house and said oh sir we came indeed down at the first time to buy food and it came to pass when we came to the inn do we own our sacks, and behold, every man's bow was in the mouth of his sack, and only in full weight, and we have bought it again in our hand, and other money have we bought down in our hands to buy food. We cannot tell who put our money in our sacks. And he said, Peace be to you, fear not. Your God and the God of your fathers hath given you treasure in your sacks. I had your money. And he brought Simeon out unto them. And the man brought the men into Joseph's house, and gave them water, and they washed their feet, and he gave their asses provender. And they made ready the present against Joseph came at noon, for they heard that he should eat bread there. And when Joseph came home, they brought him the present which was in their hand into the house, and bowed themselves to him to the earth. And he asked them of their welfare, and said, Is your father well, the old man of whom ye spake? Is he yet alive? And they answered, Thy servant our father is in good health, he is yet alive. And they bowed down their heads and made obeisance. And he lifted up his eyes and saw his brother Benjamin, his mother's son, and said, Is this your younger brother of whom ye spake unto me? And he said, God be gracious unto thee, my son. And Joseph made haste, for his bowels did yearn upon his brother. And he sought where to weep, 
and he entered into his chamber and wept there and he washed his face and went out and refrained himself and said set on bread and they sat on for him by himself and for them by themselves and for the egyptians which did eat with him by themselves because the egyptians might not eat bread with the hebrews for that is an abomination unto the egyptians and they sat before him the firstborn according to his birthright and the youngest according to his youth and the men marvelled at one another and he took and sent messes unto them from before him but benjamin's mess was five times so much as any of theirs and they drank and were merry with him chapter forty four and he commanded the steward of his house saying fill the men's sacks with food as much as they can carry and put every man's money in his sack's mouth and put my cup the silver cup in the sack's mouth of the youngest and his corn money and he did according to the word that joseph had spoken as soon as the morning was light the men were sent away they and their asses and when they were gone out of the city and not yet far off joseph said unto his steward up follow after the men and when thou dost overtake them say unto them wherefore have you rewarded evil for good is not this it in which my lord drinketh and whereby indeed he divineth ye have done evil in so doing and he overtook them and he spake unto them these same words and they said unto him wherefore saith my lord these words god forbid that thy servants shall do according to this thing behold the way which you found our sex mouths we brought again unto thee out of the land of canaan how then shall we steal out of thy lord's house of all gold with whomsoever of thy servants it should be found by flame and die and we also will be our lord's bondmen and he said now also let it be according unto your words he with whom it is found shall be my servant and ye shall be blameless then they speedily took down every man his sack to the ground and opened every man his sack and he searched and began at the eldest and left at the youngest and the cup was found in benjamin's sack then they rent their clothes and laid it every man his ass and returned to the city and judah and his brethren came to joseph's house for he was yet there and they fell before him on the ground and joseph said unto him what deed is this that ye have done what ye not that such a man as i can certainly divine and judah said what shall we say unto my lord what shall we speak or how should we clear ourselves god hath found out the iniquity of thy servants behold we are my lord's servants both we and he also with whom the cup is found and he said god forbid that i should do so but the man in whose hand the cup is found he shall be my servant and as for you get you up in peace unto your father then judah came near unto him and said o my lord let thy servant i pray thee speak a word in my lord's ears and let not thine anger burn against thy servant for thou art even as pharaoh my lord asked his servant saying have ye a father or a brother and we said unto my lord we have a father an old man and a child of his old age a little one and his brother is dead and he alone is left to his mother and his father loveth him and thou saidst unto thy servants bring him down unto me that i may set mine eyes upon him and we said unto my lord the lad cannot leave his father for if he should leave his father his father would die and thou saidst unto thy servants except your youngest brother come down with you ye shall not see my face no more and it came to pass when we came up unto thy servant my father we told him the words of my lord and our father said go again and buy us a little food and we said we cannot go down if our youngest brother be with us then we will go down for we may not see the man's face except our youngest brother be with us and thy servant my father said unto us ye know that my wife bare me two sons and the one went out for me and i said surely he is torn in pieces and i saw him not since and if ye take this also from me and mischief befall him ye shall bring down my grey hairs with sorrow to the grave now therefore when i come to thy servant my father and the lad be not with us seeing that the, his life is bound up in the lad's life it shall come to pass when he seeth the lad is not with us that he will die and thy servants shall bring down the grey hairs of thy servant our father with sorrow to the grave for thy servant became shorty for the lad unto my father saying if i bring him not unto thee then i shall bear the blame to my father for ever now therefore i pray thee let thy servant abide instead of the lad a bondman to my lord and let the lad go up with his brethren how shall i go up to my father and the lad be not with me 
lest peradventure I see the evil that shall come on my father. Chapter 45 Then Joseph could not refrain himself before all them that stood by him, and he cried, Cause every man to go out from me. And there stood no man with him while Joseph made himself known unto his brethren. And he wept aloud, and the Egyptians and the house of Pharaoh heard. And Joseph said unto his brethren, I am Joseph. Doth my father yet live? And his brethren could not answer him, for they were troubled at his presence. And Joseph said unto his brethren, Come near to me, I pray you. And they came near, and he said, I am Joseph your brother, whom ye sold into Egypt. Now therefore be not grieved nor angry with yourselves, that ye sold me hither. For God did send me before you to preserve life. For these two years hath the famine been in the land, and yet there are five years in the which there shall neither be earing nor harvest. And God sent me before you to preserve you a posterity in the earth, and to save your lives by a great deliverance. So now it was not you that sent me hither, but God. And he hath made me a father to Pharaoh, and lord of all his house, and a ruler throughout all the land of Egypt. Haste ye, and go up to my father, and say unto him, Thus saith thy son Joseph, God hath made me lord of all Egypt. Come down unto me, tarry not, and thou shalt dwell in the land of Goshen, and thou shalt be near unto me, thou and thy children, and thy children's children, and thy flocks, and thy herds, and all that thou hast. And there will I nourish thee, for yet there are five years of famine, lest thou and thy household and all that thou hast come to poverty. And behold, your eyes see, and the eyes of my brother Benjamin, that it is my mouth that speaketh unto you. And ye shall tell my father of all my glory in Egypt, and of all that ye have seen, and ye shall haste and bring down my father hither. And he fell upon his brother Benjamin's neck, and wept, and Benjamin wept upon his neck. Moreover he kissed all his brethren, and wept upon them. And after that his brethren talked with him. And the fame thereof was heard in Pharaoh's house, saying, Joseph's brethren are come. And it pleased Pharaoh well, and his servants. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, Say unto thy brethren, This do ye, lay your beasts, and go, get you unto the land of Canaan, and take your father and your households, and come unto me, and I will give you the good of the land of Egypt, and ye shall eat the fat of the land. Now thou art commanded, This do ye, take you wagons out of the land of Egypt for your little ones, and for your wives, and bring your father, and come. Also regard not your stuff, for the good of all the land of Egypt is yours. And the children of Israel did so, and Joseph gave them wagons, according to the commandment of Pharaoh, and gave them provision for the way. To all of them he gave each man changes of raiment, but to Benjamin he gave three hundred pieces of silver, and five changes of raiment. And to his father he sent after this manner, ten asses laden with the good things of Egypt, and ten she-asses laden with corn and bread and meat for his father by the way. So he sent his brethren away, and they departed, and he said unto them, See that ye fall not out by the way. And they went up out of Egypt, and came into the land of Canaan unto Jacob their father, and told him, saying, Joseph is yet alive, and he is governor of all the land of Egypt. And Jacob's heart fainted, for he believed them not. And they told him all the words of Joseph, which he had said unto them. And when he saw the wagons which Joseph had sent to carry him, the spirit of Jacob their father revived, and Israel said, It is enough. Joseph, my son, is yet alive. I will go and see him before I die. End of section 5section six of dramatized passages from the old testament this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit LibriVox.org. the story of moses part one exodus chapter three to chapter six verse thirteen narration read by beth thomas god read by david olson moses read by howie j watts Aaron, read by Larry Wilson. Israelites, read by Esther ben Simonides. Egyptians, read by Lydia. Pharaoh, read by Dalde Pignoli. Jethro, read by Jared Hess. Zipporah, read by Lydia. Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the back side of the desert and came to the mountain of god even to horeb and the angel of the lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush and he looked and behold the bush burned with fire and the bush was not consumed and moses said i will now turn aside and see this great sight why the bush is not burnt 
and when the lord saw that he turned aside to see god called unto him from out of the midst of the bush and said moses moses and he said here am i and he said draw not nigh hither put off thy shoes from off thy feet for the place whereon thou standest is holy ground moreover he said i am the god of thy father the god of abraham the god of isaac and the god of jacob and moses hid his face for he was afraid to look upon god and the lord said i have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in egypt and have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters for i know their sorrows and i am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the egyptians and to bring them up out of that land unto a good land and a large unto a land flowing with milk and honey unto the place of the canaanites and the hittites and the amorites and the perizzites and the hivites and the jebusites now therefore behold the cry of the children of israel has come unto me and i have also seen the oppression wherewith the egyptians oppress them come now therefore and i will send thee unto pharaoh that thou mayest bring forth my people the children of israel out of egypt and moses said unto god who am i that i should go unto pharaoh and that i should bring forth the children of israel out of egypt and he said certainly i will be with thee and this shall be a token unto thee that i have sent thee when thou hast brought forth the people out of egypt ye shall serve god on this mountain and moses said unto god behold when i come unto the children of israel and say unto them the god of your fathers hath sent me unto you and they shall say to me what is his name what shall i say unto them and god said unto moses i am that i am and he said thus shalt thou say unto the children of israel i am has sent me unto you and god said moreover unto moses thus shalt thou say unto the children of israel the lord god of your fathers the god of abraham the god of isaac and the god of jacob has sent me unto you this is my name for ever and this is my memorial unto all generations go and gather the elders of israel together and say unto them the lord god of your fathers the god of abraham of isaac and of jacob appeared unto me saying i have surely visited you and upon that which is done to you in egypt and i have said i will bring you up out of the affliction of egypt unto the land of the canaanites and the hittites and the amorites and the perizzites and the hivites and the jebusites unto a land flowing with milk and honey and they shall hearken to thy voice and thou shalt come thou and the elders of israel unto the king of egypt and ye shall say unto him the lord god of the hebrews hath met with us and now let us go we beseech thee three days journey into the wilderness that we may sacrifice to the lord our god and i am sure that the king of egypt will not let you go no not by a mighty hand and i will stretch out my hand and smite egypt with all my wonders which i will do in the midst thereof and after that he will let you go and i will give this people favor in the sight of the egyptians and it shall come to pass that when ye go ye shall not go empty but every woman shall borrow of her neighbor and of her that sojourneth in her house jewels of silver and jewels of gold and raiment and ye shall put them upon your sons and upon your daughters and ye shall spoil the egyptians and moses answered and said but behold they will not believe me nor hearken unto my voice for they will say 
the Lord hath not appeared unto thee. And the Lord said unto him, What is that in thine hand? And he said, A rod. And he said, Cast it on the ground. And he cast it on the ground, and it became a serpent, and Moses fled from before it. And the Lord said unto Moses, Put forth thine hand, and take it by the tail. And he put forth his hand, and caught it, and it became a rod in his hand. That they may believe that the Lord God of their fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, hath appeared unto thee. And the Lord said furthermore unto him, Put now thine hand into thy bosom. And he put his hand into his bosom, and when he took it out, behold, his hand was leprous as snow. And he said, Put thy hand into thy bosom again. And he put his hand into his bosom again, and plucked it out of his bosom, and behold, it was turned again as his other flesh. And it shall come to pass, if they will not believe thee, neither hearken to the voice of the first sign, that they will believe the voice of the latter sign. And it shall come to pass, if they will not believe also these two signs, neither hearken unto thy voice, that thou shalt take of the water of the river, and pour it upon the dry land. And the water which thou takest out of the river shall become blood upon the dry land. And Moses said unto the Lord, O oh my Lord, I am not eloquent, neither heretofore, nor since thou hast spoken unto thy servant, but I am slow of speech, and of a slow tongue. And the Lord said unto him, Who hath made man's mouth, or who maketh the dumb, or deaf, or the seen, or the blind? Have not I the Lord? Now therefore go, and I will be with thy mouth, and teach thee what thou shalt say. And he said, O my Lord, send, I pray thee, by the hand of him whom thou wilt send. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against Moses, and he said, Is not Aaron the Levite thy brother? I know that he can speak well. And also, behold, he cometh forth to meet thee, and when he seeth thee, he will be glad in his heart. And thou shalt speak unto him, and put words in his mouth, and I will be with thy mouth, and with his mouth, and will teach you what ye shall do. And he shall be thy spokesman unto the people, and he shall be, even he shall be to thee instead of a mouth, and thou shalt be to him instead of God. And thou shalt take his rod in thine hand, wherewith thou shalt do signs. And Moses went, and returned to Jethro his father-in-law, and said unto him, Let me go, I pray thee, and return unto my brethren which are in Egypt, and see whether they be yet alive. And Jethro said to Moses, Go in peace. And the Lord said unto Moses in Midian, Go, return into Egypt, for all the men are dead which sought thy life. And Moses took his wife and his sons, and set them upon an ass, and he returned to the land of Egypt. And Moses took the rod of God in his hand, and the Lord said unto Moses, When thou goest to return into Egypt, see that thou do all those wonders before Pharaoh, which I have put in thine hand. But I will harden his heart, that he shall not let the people go. And thou shalt say unto Pharaoh, Thus saith the Lord, Israel is my son, even my firstborn. And I say unto thee, Let my son go, that he may serve me. And if thou refuse to let him go, behold, I will slay thy son, even thy firstborn. And it came to pass, by the way in the inn, that the Lord met him, and sought to kill him. Then Zipporah took a sharp stone, and cut off the foreskin of her son, and cast it at his feet, and said, Surely a bloody husband art thou to me. So he let him go, and then she said, A bloody husband thou art, because of the circumcision. 
and the Lord said to Aaron, Go into the wilderness to meet Moses. And he went, and met him in the mount of God, and kissed him. And Moses told Aaron all the words of the Lord who had sent him, and all the signs which he had commanded him. And Moses and Aaron went and gathered together all the elders of the children of Israel. And Aaron spoke the words which the Lord had spoken unto Moses, and did the signs in the sight of the people. And the people believed, and when they heard that the Lord had visited the children of Israel, and that he had looked upon their affliction, then they bowed their heads and worshipped. And afterwards Moses and Aaron went in, and told Pharaoh, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Let my people go, that they may hold a feast unto me in the wilderness. And Pharaoh said, Who is the Lord, that I should obey his voice to let Israel go? I know not the Lord, neither will I let Israel go. And they said, The God of the Hebrews has met with us. Let us go, we pray thee, three days' journey into the desert, and sacrifice unto the Lord our God. Lest he fall upon us with pestilence, or with the sword. And the king of Egypt said unto them, Wherefore do ye, Moses and Aaron, let the people from their works? Get you unto your burdens. And Pharaoh said, Behold, the people of the land now are many, and ye make them rest from their burdens. And Pharaoh commanded the same day the taskmasters of the people and their officers, saying, Ye shall no more give the people straw to make brick as heretofore. Let them go and gather straw from themselves. And the tale of the bricks, which they did make heretofore, ye shall lay upon them. Ye shall not diminish aught thereof, for they be idle. Therefore they cry, saying, Let us go and sacrifice to our God. Let their more work be laid upon the men, that they may labor therein, and let them not regard vain words. And the taskmasters of the people went out, and their officers, and they spake to the people, saying, Thus saith Pharaoh, I will not give you straw. Go ye, get you straw where ye can find it, yet not aught of your work shall be diminished. So the people were scattered abroad throughout all the land of Egypt to gather stubble instead of straw, and the taskmasters hasted them, saying, Fulfill your works, your daily tasks, as when there was straw. And the officers of the children of Israel, which Pharaoh's taskmasters had set over them, were beaten, and demanded, Wherefore have ye not fulfilled your task in making brick both yesterday and today, as heretofore? Then the officers of the children of Israel came and cried unto Pharaoh, saying, Wherefore dealest thou thus with thy servants? There is no straw given unto thy servants. And they say to us, Make brick, and behold, thy servants are beaten. But the fault is in thine own people. But he said, Ye are idle, ye are idle. Therefore ye say, Let us go and do sacrifice to the Lord. Go therefore now and work, for there shall no straw be given you. Yet ye shall deliver the tale of bricks. And the officers of the children of Israel did see that they were in an evil case, after it was said, Ye shall not minish aught from your bricks or your daily task. And they met Moses and Aaron, who stood in the way, as they came forth from Pharaoh. And they said unto them, The Lord look upon you and judge, because ye have made our savour to be abhorred in the eyes of Pharaoh, and in the eyes of his servants to put a sword in their hand to slay us. And Moses returned unto the Lord, and said, Lord, wherefore hast thou so evil entreated this people? Why is it that thou hast sent me? For since I came to Pharaoh to speak in thy name, he hath done evil to this people, neither hast thou delivered thy people at all. Then the Lord said unto Moses, Now shalt thou see what I will do to Pharaoh, For with a strong hand shall he let them go, and with a strong hand shall he drive them out of his land. And God spake unto Moses, and said unto him, I am the Lord, and I appeared unto Abraham, unto Isaac, and unto Jacob, by the name of God Almighty. But by my name, Jehovah, was I not known to them. And I have also established my covenant with them, and to give them the land of Canaan, the land of their pilgrimage, wherein they were strangers. And I have also heard the groaning of the children of Israel, whom the Egyptians keep in bondage, 
and I have remembered my covenant. Wherefore, say unto the children of Israel, I am the Lord, and I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians, and I will rid you out of their bondage, and I will redeem you with the stretched out arm, and with great judgments, and I will take you to me for a people, and I will be to you a God, and you shall know that I am the Lord your God, which bringeth you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. And I will bring you in unto the land concerning the which I did swear to give it to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. And I will give it to you for an heritage. I am the Lord. And Moses spake so unto the children of Israel, but they hearkened not unto Moses for anguish of spirit and for cruel bondage. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Go in, speak unto Pharaoh, king of Egypt, that he let the children of Israel go out of his land. And Moses spake before the Lord, saying, Behold, the children of Israel have not hearkened unto me. How then shall Pharaoh hear me, who am of uncircumcised lips? And the Lord spake unto Moses and unto Aaron, and gave them a charge unto the children of Israel, and unto Pharaoh king of Egypt, to bring the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. End of section 6 Section 7 of Dramatized Passages from the Old Testament This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Story of Moses, Part 2, Exodus, Chapters 7 to 12, King James Version. Narration read by Beth Thomas. Moses, read by Howie J. Watts. God, read by David Olson. Pharaoh, read by Dudley Pignoli. Aaron, read by Larry Wilson. Egyptians, read by Lydia. And the Lord said unto Moses, See, I have made thee a god to Pharaoh, and Aaron thy brother shall be thy prophet. Thou shalt speak all that I command thee, and Aaron thy brother shall speak unto Pharaoh, that he send the children of Israel out of his land. And I will harden Pharaoh's heart, and multiply my signs and my wonders in the land of Egypt. But Pharaoh shall not hearken unto you, that I may lay my hand upon Egypt, and bring forth mine armies, and my people, the children of Israel, out of the land of Egypt by great judgments. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord, when I stretch forth my hand upon Egypt, and bring out the children of Israel from among them. And Moses and Aaron did as the Lord commanded them, so did they. And Moses was fourscore years old, and Aaron fourscore and three years old, when they spake unto Pharaoh. And the Lord spake unto Moses and unto Aaron, saying, When Pharaoh shall speak unto you, saying, Shew a miracle for you, then thou shalt say unto Aaron, Take thy rod, and cast it before Pharaoh, and it shall become a serpent. And Moses and Aaron went in unto Pharaoh, and they did so as the Lord had commanded. And Aaron cast down his rod before Pharaoh and before his servants, and it became a serpent. Then Pharaoh also called the wise men and the sorcerers, now the magicians of Egypt. They also did in like manner with their enchantments, for they cast down every man his rod, and they became serpents. But Aaron's rod swallowed up their rods. And he hardened Pharaoh's heart, that he hearkened not unto them as the Lord had said. And the Lord said unto Moses, Pharaoh's heart is hardened, he refuseth to let the people go. Get thee unto Pharaoh in the morning. Lo, he goeth out unto the water, and thou shalt stand by the river's brink against he come. And the rod which was turned to a serpent shalt thou take in thine hand, and thou shalt say unto him, The Lord God of the Hebrews hath sent me unto thee, saying, let my people go, that they may serve me in the wilderness. And behold, hitherto thou wouldest not hear. Thus saith the Lord, In this thou shalt know that I am the Lord. Behold, I will smite with the rod 
that is in mine hand upon the waters which are in the river and they shall be turned to blood and the fish that is in the river shall die and the river shall stink and the egyptians shall loathe to drink of the water of the river and the lord spake unto moses say unto aaron take thy rod and stretch out thine hand upon the waters of egypt upon their streams upon their rivers and upon their ponds and upon all their pools of water that they may become blood and that there may be blood throughout all the land of egypt both in vessels of wood and in vessels of stone and moses and aaron did so as the lord commanded and he lifted up the rod and smote the waters that were in the river in the sight of pharaoh and in the sight of his servants and all the waters that were in the river were turned to blood and the fish that was in the river died and the river stank and the egyptians could not drink of the water of the river and there was blood throughout all the land of egypt and the magicians of egypt did so with their enchantments and pharaoh's heart was hardened neither did he hearken unto them as the lord had said and pharaoh turned and went into his house neither did he set his heart to this also and all the egyptians digged round about the river for water to drink for they could not drink of the water of the river and seven days were fulfilled after that the lord had smitten the river and the lord spake unto moses go unto pharaoh and say unto him thus saith the lord let my people go that they may serve me and if thou refuse to let them go behold i will smite all thy borders with frogs and the rivers shall bring forth frogs abundantly which shall go up and come into thine house and into thy bedchamber and upon thy bed and into the house of thy servants and upon thy people and into thine ovens and into thy kneading troughs and the frogs shall come up both on thee and upon thy people and upon all thy servants and the lord spake unto moses say unto aaron stretch forth thine hand with thy rod over the streams over the rivers and over the ponds and cause frogs to come up upon the land of egypt and aaron stretched out his hand over the waters of egypt and the frogs came up and covered the land of egypt and the magicians did so with their enchantments and brought up frogs upon the land of egypt then pharaoh called for moses and aaron and said entreat the lord that he may take away the frogs from me and from my people and i will let the people go that they may do sacrifice unto the lord and moses said unto pharaoh glory over me when shall i entreat for thee and for thy servants and for thy people to destroy the frogs from thee and thy houses that they may remain in the river only and he said to-morrow and he said be it according to thy word that thou mayest know that there is none like unto the lord our god and the frog shall depart from thee and from thy houses and from thy servants and from thy people they shall remain in the river only and moses and aaron went out from pharaoh and moses cried unto the lord because of the frogs which he had brought against pharaoh and the lord did according to the word of moses and the frogs died out of the houses out of the villages and out of the fields and they gathered them together upon heaps and the land stank but when pharaoh saw that there was respite he hardened his heart and hearkened not unto them as the lord had said and the lord said unto moses say unto aaron stretch out thy rod and smite the dust of the land that it may become lice throughout all the land of egypt and they did so for aaron stretched out his hand with his rod and smote the dust of the earth and it became lice in man and in beast all the dust of the land became lice throughout all the land of egypt and the magicians did so with their enchantments to bring forth lice but they could not so there were lice upon man and upon beast then the magician said unto pharaoh this is the finger of god and pharaoh's heart was hardened and he hearkened not unto them as the lord had said and the lord said unto moses rise up early in the morning and stand before pharaoh lo he cometh forth to the water and say unto him thus saith the lord 
let my people go that they may serve me else if thou wilt not let my people go behold i will send swarms of flies upon thee and upon thy servants and upon thy people and into thy houses and the houses of the egyptians shall be full of swarms of flies and also the ground whereon they are and i will sever in that day the land of goshen in which my people dwell that no swarms of flies shall be there to the end thou mayest know that i am the lord in the midst of the earth and i will put a division between my people and thy people to-morrow shall this sign be and the lord did so and there came a grievous swarm of flies into the house of pharaoh and into his servants houses and into all the land of egypt the land was corrupted by reason of the swarm of flies and pharaoh called for moses and aaron and said go ye sacrifice to your god in the land and moses said it is not meet so to do for we shall sacrifice the abomination of the egyptians to the lord our god lo shall we sacrifice the abomination of the egyptians before their eyes and will they not stone us we will go three days journey into the wilderness and sacrifice to the lord our god as he shall command us and pharaoh said i will let you go that ye may sacrifice to the lord your god in the wilderness only ye shall not go very far away entreat for me and moses said behold i go out from thee and i will entreat the lord that the swarms of flies may depart from pharaoh from his servants and from his people to-morrow but let not pharaoh deal deceitfully any more in not letting the people go to sacrifice to the lord and moses went out from pharaoh and entreated the lord and the lord did according to the word of moses and he removed the swarms of flies from pharaoh from his servants and from his people there remained not one and pharaoh hardened his heart at this time also neither would he let the people go then the lord said unto moses go in unto pharaoh and tell him thus saith the lord god of the hebrews let my people go that they may serve me for if thou refuse to let them go and wilt hold them still behold the hand of the lord is upon thy cattle which is in the field upon the horses upon the asses upon the camels upon the oxen and upon the sheep there shall be a very grievous moraine and the lord shall sever between the cattle of israel and the cattle of egypt and there shall nothing die of all that is the children of israel and the lord appointed a set time saying to-morrow the lord shall do this thing in the land and the lord did that thing on the morrow and all the cattle of egypt died but of the cattle of the children of israel died not one and pharaoh sent and behold there was not one of the cattle of the israelites dead and the heart of pharaoh was hardened and he did not let the people go and the lord said unto moses and unto aaron take to you handfuls of ashes of the furnace and let moses sprinkle it toward the heaven in the sight of the pharaoh and it shall become small dust in all the land of egypt and shall be a boil breaking forth with blains upon man and upon beast throughout all the land of egypt and they took ashes of the furnace and stood before pharaoh and moses sprinkled it up toward heaven and it became a boil breaking forth with blains upon man and upon beast and the magicians could not stand before moses because of the boils for the boil was upon the magicians and upon all the egyptians and the lord hardened the heart of pharaoh and he hearkened not unto them as the lord had spoken unto moses and the lord said unto moses rise up early in the morning and stand before pharaoh and say unto him thus saith the lord god of the hebrews let my people go that they may serve me for i will at this time send all my plagues upon thy heart and upon thy servants and upon thy people that thou mayest know that there is none like me in all the earth for now i will stretch out my hand that i will smite thee and thy people with pestilence and thou shalt be cut off from the earth and in very deed for this cause have i raised thee up for to show in thee my power and that my name may be declared throughout all the earth 
as yet exultest thou thyself against my people that thou wilt not let them go behold to-morrow about this time i will cause it to rain a very grievous hail such as hath not been in egypt since the foundation thereof even until now send therefore now and gather thy cattle and all that thou hast in the field for upon every man and beast which shall be found in the field and shall not be brought home the hail shall come down upon them and they shall die he that feared the word of the lord among the servants of pharaoh made his servants and his cattle flee into the houses and he that regarded not the word of the lord left his servants and his cattle in the field and the lord said unto moses stretch forth thine hand toward heaven that there may be hail in all the land of egypt upon man and upon beast and upon every herb of the field throughout the land of egypt and moses stretched forth his rod toward heaven and the lord sent thunder and hail and the fire ran along upon the ground and the lord rained hail upon the land of egypt so there was hail and fire mingled with the hail very grievous such as there was none like it in all the land of egypt since it became a nation and the hail smote throughout all the land of egypt all that was in the field both man and beast and the hail smote every herb of the field and brake every tree of the field only in the land of goshen where the children of israel were was there no hail and pharaoh sent and called for moses and aaron and said unto them i have sinned this time the lord is righteous and i and my people are wicked entreat the lord for it is enough that there be no more mighty thunderings and hail and i will let ye go and ye shall stay no longer and moses said unto him as soon as i am gone out of the city i will spread abroad my hands unto the lord and the thunder shall cease neither shall there be any more hail that thou mayest know how that the earth is the lord's but as for thee and thy servants i know that ye will not yet fear the lord god and the flax and the barley was smitten for the barley was in the ear and the flax was bold but the wheat and the rye were not smitten for they were not grown up and moses went out of the city from pharaoh and spread abroad his hands unto the lord and the thunders and hail ceased and the rain was not poured upon the earth and when pharaoh saw that the rain and the hail and the thunders were ceased he sinned yet more and hardened his heart he and his servants and the heart of pharaoh was hardened neither would he let the children of israel go as the lord had spoken by moses and the lord said unto moses go in unto pharaoh for i have hardened his heart and the heart of his servants that i might shew these my signs before him and that thou mayest tell in the ears of thy son and of thy son's son what things i have wrought in egypt and my signs which i have done among them that ye may know how that i am the lord and moses and aaron came in unto pharaoh and said unto him thus saith the lord god of the hebrews how long wilt thou refuse to humble thyself before me let my people go that they may serve me else if thou refuse to let my people go behold to-morrow will i bring the locusts into thy coast and they shall cover the face of the earth that one cannot be able to see the earth and they shall eat the residue of that which is escaped which remaineth unto you from the hail and shall eat every tree which groweth for you out of the field and they shall fill thy houses and the houses of all thy servants and the houses of all the egyptians which neither thy fathers nor thy father's fathers have seen since the day that they were upon the earth unto this day and he turned himself and went out from pharaoh and pharaoh's servants said unto him how long shall this man be a snare unto us let the men go that they may serve the lord their god knowest thou not yet that egypt is destroyed and moses and aaron were brought again unto pharaoh and he said unto them go serve the lord your god but who are they that shall go and moses said we will go with our young and with our old with our sons and with our daughters with our flocks and with our herds will we go for we must hold a feast unto the lord 
and he said unto them let the lord be so with you as i will let you go and your little ones look to it for evil is before you not so go now ye that are men and serve the lord for that ye did desire and they were driven out from pharaoh's presence and the lord said unto moses stretch out thine hand over the land of egypt for the locusts that they may come up upon the land of egypt and eat every herb of the land even all that the hail hath left and moses stretched forth his rod over the land of egypt and the lord brought an east wind upon the land all that day and all that night and when it was morning the east wind brought the locusts and the locust went up over all the land of egypt and rested in all the coasts of egypt very grievous were they before them there were no such locusts as they neither after them shall be such for they covered the face of the whole earth so that the land was darkened and they did eat every herb of the land and all the fruit of the trees which the hail had left and there remained not any green thing in the trees or in the herbs of the field through all the land of egypt then pharaoh called for moses and aaron in haste and he said i have sinned against the lord your god and against you now therefore forgive i pray thee my sin only this once and entreat the lord your god that he may take away from me this death only and he went out from pharaoh and entreated the lord and the lord turned a mighty strong west wind which took away the locusts and cast them into the red sea there remained not one locust in all the coasts of egypt but the lord hardened pharaoh's heart so that he would not let the children of israel go and the lord said unto moses stretch out thine hand toward heaven that there may be darkness over the land of egypt even darkness which may be felt and moses stretched forth his hand toward heaven and there was a thick darkness in all the land of egypt for three days they saw not one another neither rose any from his place for three days but all the children of israel had light in their dwellings and pharaoh called unto moses and said Go ye, serve the Lord, only let your flocks and herds be stayed, let your little ones also go with you. And Moses said, Thou must give us also sacrifices and burnt offerings, that we may sacrifice unto the Lord our God. Our cattle also shall go with us, there shall not an hoof be left behind, for thereof must we take to serve the Lord our God, and we know not with what we must serve the Lord until we come thither. But the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart, and he would not let them go. And Pharaoh said unto him, Get thee from me, take heed to thyself. See my face no more, for in that day thou seest my face, thou shalt die. And Moses said, Thou hast spoken well. I will see thy face again no more. And the Lord said unto Moses, Yet will I bring one plague more upon Pharaoh and upon Egypt. Afterwards he will let you go hence. When he shall let you go, he shall surely thrust you out hence altogether. Speak now in the ears of the people, and let every man borrow of his neighbor, and of every woman of her neighbor, jewels of silver and jewels of gold. And the Lord gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians moreover the man moses was very great in the land of egypt in the sight of pharaoh's servants and in the sight of the people and moses said thus saith the lord about midnight will i go out into the midst of egypt and all the firstborn in the land of egypt shall die from the firstborn of pharaoh that sitteth upon his throne even unto the firstborn of the maidservant that is behind the mill and all the firstborn of beasts and there shall be a great cry throughout all the land of Egypt, such as there was none like it, nor shall be like it any more. But against any of the children of Israel shall not a dog move his tongue, against man or beast, that ye may know how that the Lord doth put a difference between the Egyptians and Israel. And all these thy servants shall come down unto me, and bow down themselves unto me, saying, Get thee out, and all the people that follow thee and after that I will go out. And he went out from Pharaoh in a great anger. And the Lord said unto Moses, Pharaoh shall not hearken unto you, that my wonders may be multiplied in the land of Egypt. 
and moses and aaron did all these wonders before pharaoh and the lord hardened pharaoh's heart so that he would not let the children of israel go out of his land and the lord spake unto moses and aaron in the land of egypt saying this month shall be unto you the beginning of months it shall be the first month of the year to you speak ye unto all the congregation of israel saying in the tenth day of this month they shall take to them every man a lamb according to the house of their fathers a lamb for a house and if the household be too little for the lamb let him and his neighbor next unto his house take it according to the number of the souls every man according to his eating shall make your count for the lamb your lamb shall be without blemish a male of the first year you shall take it out from the sheep or from the goats and ye shall keep it up until the fourteenth day of the same month and the whole assembly of the congregation of israel shall kill it in the evening and they shall take of the blood and strike it on the two side posts and on the upper door posts of the houses wherein they shall eat it and they shall eat the flesh in that night roast with fire and unleavened bread and with bitter herbs they shall eat it eat not of it raw nor sodden at all with water but roast with fire his head with his legs and with the pertinence thereof and ye shall let nothing of it remain until the morning and that which remaineth of it until the morning ye shall burn with fire and thus shall ye eat it with your loins girded your shoes on your feet and your staff in your hand and ye shall eat it in haste it is the lord's passover for i will pass through the land of egypt this night and will smite all the firstborn in the land of egypt both man and beast and against all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. And the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where ye are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you, and the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you, when I smite the land of Egypt. And this day shall be unto you for a memorial, and ye shall keep it as a feast to the Lord, throughout your generations ye shall keep it a feast by an ordinance forever seven days shall ye eat unleavened bread even the first day ye shall put away leaven out of your houses for whosoever eateth leavened bread from the first day until the seventh day that soul shall be cut off from israel and in the first day there shall be a holy convocation and in the seventh day there shall be a holy convocation to you. No matter of work shall be done in them, save that which every man must eat, that only may be done of you. And ye shall observe the feast of unleavened bread. For in this selfsame day have I brought your armies out of the land of Egypt. Therefore shall ye observe this day in your generations by an ordinance forever. In the first month, on the fourteenth day of the month that even ye shall eat unleavened bread until the one and twentieth day of the month at even seven days shall there be no leaven found in your houses for whosoever eateth that which is leavened even that soul shall be cut off from the congregation of israel whether he be a stranger or born in the land ye shall eat nothing leavened in all your habitations shall ye eat unleavened bread then moses called for all the elders of israel and said unto them draw out and take you a lamb according to your families and kill the passover and ye shall take a bunch of hyssop and dip it in the blood that is in the basin and strike the lintel and the two side posts with the blood that is in the basin and none of you shall go out at the door of his house until the morning for the lord will pass through to smite the egyptians and when he seeth the blood upon the lintel and on the two side posts, the Lord will pass over the door and will not suffer the destroyer to come in unto your houses to smite you. And ye shall observe this thing for an ordinance to thee and to thy sons for ever. And it shall come to pass, when ye be come to the land which the Lord will give you, according as he hath promised, that ye shall keep this service. And it shall come to pass, when your children shall say unto you, what mean ye by this service? 
that ye shall say, It is the sacrifice of the Lord's Passover, who passed over the houses of the children of Israel in Egypt, when he smote the Egyptians and delivered our houses. And the people bowed the head and worshipped. And the children of Israel went away, and did as the Lord had commanded Moses and Aaron, so did they. And it came to pass, that at midnight the Lord smote all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, from the firstborn of Pharaoh that sat on his throne, unto the firstborn of the captive that was in the dungeon, and all the firstborn of cattle. And Pharaoh rose up in the night, he and all his servants and all the Egyptians, and there was a great cry in Egypt, for there was not a house where there was not one dead. And he called for Moses and Aaron by night, and said, Rise up, and get you forth from among my people, both ye and the children of Israel, and go, serve the Lord as ye have said. Also take your flocks and your herds as ye have said, and be gone, and bless me also. And the Egyptians were urgent upon the people, that they might send them out of the land in haste, for they said, We be all dead men. And the people took their dough before it was leavened, their kneading troughs being bound up in their clothes upon their shoulders. And the children of Israel did according to the word of Moses. They borrowed of the Egyptians jewels of silver and jewels of gold, and raiment. And the Lord gave the people favour in the sight of the Egyptians, so that they lent unto them such things as they required. And they spoiled the Egyptians, and the children of Israel journeyed from Ramesses to Succoth, about six hundred thousand on foot that were men, besides children. And a mixed multitude went up also with them, and flocks and herds, even very much cattle. And they baked unleavened cakes of the dough which they brought forth out of Egypt, for it was not leavened, because they were thrust out of Egypt and could not tarry, neither had they prepared for themselves any victual. Now the sojourning of the children of Israel who dwelt in Egypt was four hundred and thirty years, and it came to pass at the end of four hundred and thirty years, even the selfsame day it came to pass, that all the hosts of the Lord went out from the land of Egypt. It is a night to be much observed unto the Lord for bringing them out of the land of Egypt. This is that night of the Lord to be observed of all the children of Israel in their generations. And the Lord said unto Moses and Aaron, This is the ordinance of the Passover. There shall no stranger eat thereof, but every man's servant that is bought for money, when thou hast circumcised him, then shall he eat thereof. A foreigner and a hired servant shall not eat thereof. In one house shall it be eaten. Thou shalt not carry forth aught of the flesh abroad out of the house, neither shall ye break a bone thereof. All the congregation of Israel shall keep it. And when a stranger shall sojourn with thee, and will keep the Passover to the Lord, let all his males be circumcised and then let him come near and keep it and he shall be as one that is born in the land for no uncircumcised person shall eat thereof one law shall be to him that is home-born and unto the stranger that sojourneth among you thus did all the children of israel as the lord commanded moses and aaron so did they and it came to pass the selfsame day that the Lord did bring the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt by their armies. End of section 7 Section 8 of Dramatized Passages from the Old Testament This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Story of Moses, Part 3. Exodus, Chapter 14 to Chapter 20, King James Version. Narration read by Beth Thomas. Moses, read by Howie J. Watts. God, read by David Olson. Egyptians, read by Lydia. Israelites. Read by Esther and Simonides. Miriam. Read by Christine G. Aaron. Read by Larry Wilson. Jethro. Read by Jared Hess. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, 
that they turn and encamp before Pihahiroth, between Migdal and the sea, over against Balzapon, before it shall ye encamp by the sea. For Pharaoh will say of the children of Israel, They are entangled in the land. The wilderness has shut them in. And I will harden Pharaoh's heart, that he shall follow after them. And I will be honored upon Pharaoh, and upon all his host, that the Egyptians may know that I am the Lord. And they did so. And it was told the king of Egypt that the people fled. And the heart of Pharaoh and of his servants was turned against the people. And they said, Why have we done this, that we have let Israel go from serving us? And he made ready his chariot, and took his people with him. And he took six hundred chosen chariots, and all the chariots of Egypt, and captains over every one of them. And the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and he pursued after the children of Israel. And the children of Israel went out with an high hand. But the Egyptians pursued after them, all the horses and chariots of Pharaoh, and his horsemen and his army, and overtook them encamping by the sea, beside Pihahiroth, before Balzaphon. And when Pharaoh drew nigh, the children of Israel lifted up their eyes, and, behold, the Egyptians marched after them, and they were sore afraid. And the children of Israel cried out unto the Lord, and they said unto Moses, Because there were no graves in Egypt, hast thou taken us away to die in the wilderness? Wherefore hast thou dealt with us to carry us forth out of Egypt? Is not this the word that we did tell thee in Egypt, saying, Let us alone that we may serve the Egyptians? For it had been better for us to serve the Egyptians than that we should die in the wilderness. And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will shew to you today. For the Egyptians whom ye have seen today, ye shall see them again no more for ever. The Lord shall fight for you, and ye shall hold your peace. And the Lord said unto Moses, Wherefore criest thou unto me? Speak unto the children of Israel, that they go forward. But lift thou up thy rod, and stretch out thine hand over the sea, and divide it. And the children of Israel shall go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. And I, behold, I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians, and they shall follow them, and I will get me honor upon Pharaoh, and upon all his host, upon his chariots, and upon his horsemen. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord, when I have gotten me honor upon Pharaoh, upon his chariots, and upon his horsemen. And the angel of God, which went before the camp of Israel, removed and went behind them. And the pillar of the cloud went from before their face and stood behind them. And it came between the camp of the Egyptians and the camp of Israel. And it was a cloud and darkness to them. But it gave light by night to these, so that the one came not near the other all night. And Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. And the Lord caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind all that night, and made the sea dry land, and the waters were divided. And the children of Israel went into the midst of the sea upon the dry ground, and the waters were a wall unto them on their right hand and on their left. And the Egyptians pursued, and went in after them to the midst of the sea, even all Pharaoh's horses, his chariots, and his horsemen. And it came to pass that in the morning watch the Lord looked unto the host of the Egyptians through the pillar of fire and of cloud, and troubled the host of the Egyptians, and took off their chariot wheels, that they drove them heavily, so that the Egyptians said, Let us flee from the face of Israel, for the Lord fighteth for them against the Egyptians. And the Lord said unto Moses, Stretch out thine hand over the sea, that the waters may come again upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots, and upon their horsemen. And Moses stretched forth his hand over the sea, and the sea returned to his strength when the morning appeared, and the Egyptians fled against it. And the Lord overthrew the Egyptians in the midst of the sea, and the waters returned, and covered the chariots and the horsemen, and all the host of Pharaoh that came into the sea after them. There remained not so much as one of them. But the children of Israel walked upon dry land in the midst of the sea, and the waters were a wall unto them on their right hand and on their left. 
thus the lord saved israel that day out of the hand of the egyptians and israel saw the egyptians dead upon the seashore and israel saw that great work which the lord did upon the egyptians and the people feared the lord and believed the lord and his servant moses then sang moses and the children of israel this song unto the lord and spake saying i will sing unto the lord for he hath triumphed gloriously the horse and his rider hath he thrown into the sea the lord is my strength and song and he has become my salvation he is my god and i will prepare him an habitation my father's god and i will exalt him the lord is a man of war the lord is his name pharaoh's chariots and his host hath he cast into the sea his chosen captains also are drowned in the red sea the depths have covered them they sank into the bottom as a stone thy right hand o lord is become glorious in power thy right hand o lord hath dashed in pieces the enemy and in the greatness of thine excellency thou hast overthrown them that rose up against thee thou sentest forth thy wrath which consumed them as stubble and with the blast of thy nostrils the waters were gathered together the flood stood upright as an heap and the depths were congealed in the heart of the sea the enemy said i will pursue i will overtake i will divide the spoil my lust shall be satisfied upon them i will draw my sword my hand shall destroy them thou didst blow with thy wind the sea covered them they sank as lead in the mighty waters who is like unto thee o lord among the gods who is like thee glorious in holiness fearful in praises doing wonders thou stretchest out thy right hand the earth swallowed them thou in thy mercy hast led forth the people which thou hast redeemed thou hast guided them in thy strength unto thy holy habitation the people shall hear and be afraid sorrow shall take hold of the inhabitants of palestina then the dukes of edom shall be amazed the mighty men of moab trembling shall take hold upon them all the inhabitants of canaan shall melt away fear and dread shall fall upon them by the greatness of thine arm they shall be as still as stone till the people pass over o lord till the people pass over which thou hast purchased thou shalt bring them in and plant them in the mountain of thine inheritance in the place o lord which thou hast made for thee to dwell in in the sanctuary o lord which thy hands have established the lord shall reign for ever and ever for the horse of pharaoh went in with his chariots and with his horsemen into the sea and the lord brought again the waters of the sea upon them but the children of israel went on dry land in the midst of the sea and miriam the prophetess the sister of aaron took a timbrel in her hand and all the women went out after her with timbrels and with dancers and miriam answered them sing ye to the lord for he hath triumphed gloriously the horse and his rider hath he thrown into the sea so moses brought israel from the red sea and they went out into the wilderness of shur and they went three days in the wilderness and found no water and when they came to marah they could not drink the waters of marah for they were bitter therefore the name of it was called marah and the people murmured against moses saying what shall we drink and he cried unto the lord and the lord showed him a tree which when he had cast into the waters the waters were made sweet there he made for them a statute and an ordinance and there he proved them and he said if thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the lord thy god and wilt do that which is right in his sight and wilt give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes i will put none of these diseases upon thee which i have brought upon the egyptians for i am the lord that healeth thee and they came to elim where were twelve wells of water and threescore and ten palm trees and they encamped there by the waters and they took their journey from elim and all the congregation of the children of israel came unto the wilderness of sin which is between elim and sinai on the fifteenth day of the second month after their departing out of the land of egypt and the whole congregation of the children of israel murmured against moses and aaron in the wilderness and the children of israel said unto them would to god we had died by the hand of the lord in the land of egypt when we sat by the flesh pots and when we did eat bread to the full for you have brought us forth into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger 
Then said the Lord unto Moses, Behold, I will rain bread from heaven for you, and the people shall go out and gather a certain rate every day, that I may prove them whether they will walk in my law or no. And it shall come to pass that on the sixth day they shall prepare that which they bring in, and it shall be twice as much as they gather daily. And Moses and Aaron said unto all the children of Israel, At even then ye shall know that the Lord hath brought you out from the land of Egypt. And in the morning then ye shall see the glory of the Lord, for that he heareth your murmurings against the Lord. And what are we that ye murmur against us? And Moses said, This shall be, when the Lord shall give you in the evening flesh to eat, and in the morning bread to the full. For that the Lord heareth your murmurings, which ye murmur against him. And what are we? Your murmurings are not against us, but against the Lord. And Moses spake unto Aaron, Say unto all the congregation of the children of Israel, Come near before the Lord, for he hath heard your murmurings. And it came to pass, as Aaron spake unto the whole congregation of the children of Israel, that they looked towards the wilderness, and, behold, the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, I have heard the murmurings of the children of Israel. Speak unto them, saying, At even ye shall eat flesh, and in the morning ye shall be filled with bread, and ye shall know that I am the Lord your God. And it came to pass that at even the quails came up and covered the camp, and in the morning the dew lay round about the host. And when the dew that lay was gone up, behold, on the face of the wilderness there lay a small round thing, as small as the hoar-frost on the ground. And when the children of Israel saw it, they said one to another, What is it? For they wist not what it was. And Moses said unto them, This is the bread which the Lord hath given you to eat. This is the thing which the Lord hath commanded. Gather of it every man according to his eating, an omer for every man, according to the number of your persons. Take ye every man for them which are in his tents. And the children of Israel did so, and gathered some more, some less. And when they did meet it with an omer, he that gathered much had nothing over and he that gathered little had no lack. They gathered every man according to his eating. And Moses said, Let no man leave of it till the morning. Notwithstanding, they hearkened not unto Moses, but some of them left of it until the morning, and it bred worms and stank, and Moses was wroth with them. And they gathered it every morning, every man according to his eating. And when the sun waxed hot, it melted. And it came to pass that on the sixth day they gathered twice as much bread, two omers for one man. And all the rulers of the congregation came and told Moses, and he said unto them, This is that which the Lord hath said. Tomorrow is the rest of the holy Sabbath unto the Lord. Bake that which ye will bake today, and seethe that ye will seethe, and that which remaineth over lay up for you to be kept until the morning. And they laid it up till the morning as Moses bade. And it did not stink, neither was there any worm therein. And Moses said, Eat that today, for today is a Sabbath unto the Lord. Today ye shall not find it in the field. Six days ye shall gather it, but on the seventh day, which is the Sabbath, in it there shall be none. And it came to pass that there went out some of the people on the seventh day for to gather, and they found none. And the Lord said unto Moses, how long refuse ye to keep my commandments and my laws? See, for that the Lord hath given you the Sabbath. Therefore he giveth you on the sixth day the bread of two days. Abide ye every man in his place. Let no man go out of his place on the seventh day. So the people rested on the seventh day, and the house of Israel called the name thereof manna, and it was like coriander seed, white, and the taste of it was like wafers made with honey. And Moses said, This is the thing which the Lord commandeth. Fill an omer of it to be kept for your generations, that they may see bread wherewith I have fed you in the wilderness, when I brought you forth from the land of Egypt. And Moses said unto Aaron, Take a pot, and put an omer full of manna therein, and lay it up before the Lord, 
to be kept for your generations. As the Lord commanded Moses, so Aaron laid it up before the testimony to be kept. And the children of Israel did eat manna forty years, until they came to a land inhabited. They did eat manna until they came to the borders of the land of Canaan. Now an omer is a tenth part of an ephah. And all the congregation of the children of Israel journeyed from the wilderness of sin after their journeys, according to the commandment of the Lord, and pitched in Rephidim. And there was no water for the people to drink. Wherefore the people did chide with Moses, and said, Give us water, that we may drink. And Moses said unto them, Why chide ye with me? Wherefore do ye tempt the Lord? And the people thirsted there for water. And the people murmured against Moses, and said, Wherefore is this that thou hast brought us up out of Egypt, to kill us and our children and our cattle with thirst? And Moses cried unto the Lord, saying, What shall I do unto this people? They be almost ready to stone me. And the Lord said unto Moses, Go on before the people, and take with thee of the elders of Israel and thy rod, wherewith thou smotest the river, take in thy hand, and go. Behold, I will stand before thee there upon the rock in Horeb, and thou shalt smite the rock, and there shall come water out of it, that the people may drink. And Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel, and he called the name of the place Massa and Meribah, because of the chiding of the children of Israel, and because they tempted the Lord, saying, is the Lord among us, or not? Then came Amalek, and fought with Israel in Rephidim. And Moses said unto Joshua, Choose us out, men, and go out. Fight with Amalek. Tomorrow I will stand on the top of the hill with the rod of God in mine hand. And Joshua did as Moses had said to him, and fought with Amalek. And Moses, Aaron, and Hur went up to the top of the hill. And it came to pass, when Moses held up his hand, that Israel prevailed, and when he let down his hand, Amalek prevailed. But Moses' hands were heavy, and they took a stone and put it under him, and he sat thereon, and Aaron and Hur stayed up his hands, the one on one side, the other on the other side, and his hands were steady until the going down of the sun. And Joshua discomfited Amalek and his people with the edge of the sword. And the Lord said unto Moses, Write this for a memorial in a book, and rehearse it in the ears of Joshua, for I will utterly put out the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven. And Moses built an altar, and called the name of it Jehovah Nissi, the Lord is my banner. For he said, Because the Lord hath sworn that the Lord will have war with Amalek from generation to generation. When Jethro, the priest of Midian, Moses' father-in-law, heard of all that God had done for Moses and for Israel his people, and that the Lord had brought Israel out of Egypt. Then Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, took Zipporah, Moses' wife, after he had sent her back, and her two sons, of which the name of one was Gershom, for he said, I have been an alien in a strange land. And the name of the other was Eliza. For the God of my father, said he, was mine help and delivered me from the sword of Pharaoh. And Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, came with his sons and his wife unto Moses into the wilderness, where he encamped at the mount of God. And he said unto Moses, I, thy father-in-law Jethro, am come unto thee, and thy wife, and her two sons with her. And Moses went out to meet his father-in-law, and did obeisance, and kissed him. And they asked each other of their welfare, and they came into the tent. And Moses told his father-in-law all that the Lord had done unto Pharaoh and to the Egyptians for Israel's sake, and all the travail that had come upon them by the way, and how the Lord delivered them. And Jethro rejoiced for all the goodness which the Lord had done to Israel, whom he had delivered out of the hand of the Egyptians. And Jethro said, Blessed be the Lord who hath delivered you out of the hand of the Egyptians, and out of the hand of Pharaoh who hath delivered the people from under the hand of the Egyptians. Now I know that the Lord is greater than all gods, for in the thing wherein they dealt proudly he was above them. 
and Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, took a burnt offering and sacrifices for God, and Aaron came, and all the elders of Israel, to eat bread with Moses' father-in-law before God. And it came to pass on the morrow that Moses sat to judge the people, and the people stood by Moses from the morning unto the evening. And when Moses' father-in-law saw all that he did to the people, he said, What is this thing that thou doest to the people? Why sittest thou thyself alone, and all the people stand by thee from morning unto even? And Moses said unto his father-in-law, Because the people come unto me to inquire of God. When they have a matter, they come unto me, and I judge between one and another, and I do make them know the statutes of God and his laws. And Moses' father-in-law said unto him, The thing that thou doest is not good. Thou wilt surely wear away, both thou and this people that is with thee, for this thing is too heavy for thee. Thou art not able to perform it thyself alone. Hearken now unto my voice. I will give thee counsel, and God shall be with thee. Be thou for the people to Godward, that thou mayest bring the causes unto God, and thou shalt teach them ordinances and laws, and shalt shew them the way wherein they must walk, and the work that they must do. Moreover, thou shalt provide out of all the people able men, such as fear God, men of truth, hating covetousness, and place such over them, to be rulers of thousands, and rulers of hundreds, rulers of fifties, and rulers of tens, and let them judge the people at all seasons. And it shall be, that every great matter they shall bring unto thee, but every small matter they shall judge. So shall it be easier for thyself, and they shall bear the burden with thee. If thou shalt do this thing, and God command thee so, then thou shalt be able to endure, and all this people shall also go to their place in peace. So Moses hearkened to the voice of his father-in-law, and did all that he had said. And Moses chose able men out of all Israel, and made them heads over the people, rulers of thousands, rulers of hundreds, rulers of fifties, and rulers of tens. And they judged the people at all seasons. The hard cases they brought unto Moses, but every small matter they judged themselves. And Moses let his father-in-law depart, and he went his way into his own land. In the third month, when the children of Israel were gone forth out of the land of Egypt, the same day came they into the wilderness of Sinai. For they were departed from Rephidim, and were come to the desert of Sinai, and had pitched in the wilderness, and there Israel camped before the mount. And Moses went up unto God, and the Lord called unto him out of the mountain, saying, Thus shalt thou say to the house of Jacob, and tell the children of Israel, Ye have seen what I did unto the Egyptians, and how I bare you on eagles' wings, and brought you unto myself. Now therefore, if ye will obey my voice indeed, and keep my covenant, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people. For all the earth is mine, and ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. And Moses came and called for the elders of the people, and laid before their faces all these words which the Lord commanded him. And all the people answered together and said, All that the Lord has spoken we will do. And Moses returned the words of the people unto the Lord. And the Lord said unto Moses, Lo, I come unto thee in a thick cloud, that the people may hear when I speak with thee, and believe thee for ever. And Moses told the words of the people unto the Lord. And the Lord said unto Moses, Go unto the people, and sanctify them to day and to morrow, and let them wash their clothes, and be ready against the third day. For the third day the Lord will come down in the sight of all the people upon Mount Sinai. And thou shalt set bounds unto the people round about, saying, Take heed to yourselves, that ye go not up into the mount, or touch the border of it. 
whosoever touches the mount shall surely be put to death. There shall not a hand touch it, but he shall surely be stoned or shot through. Whether it be beast or man, it shall not live. When the trumpet soundeth long, they shall come up to the mount. And Moses went down from the mount unto the people, and sanctified the people, and they washed their clothes. And he said unto the people, Be ready against the third day. Come not at your wives. And it came to pass on the third day in the morning that there were thunders and lightnings, and a thick cloud upon the mount, and the voice of a trumpet exceeding loud, so that all the people that were in the camp trembled. And Moses brought forth the people out of the camp to meet with God, and they stood at the nether part of the mount. And Mount Sinai was altogether on a smoke, because the Lord descended upon it in fire, and the smoke thereof ascended as the smoke of a furnace, and the whole mount quaked greatly. And when the voice of the trumpet sounded long, and waxed louder and louder, Moses spake, and God answered him by a voice. And the Lord came down upon Mount Sinai on the top of the mount, and the Lord called Moses up to the top of the mount, and Moses went up. And the Lord said unto Moses, Go down, charge the people, lest they break through unto the Lord to gaze, and many of them perish. And let the priests also, which come near to the Lord, sanctify themselves, lest the Lord break forth upon them. And Moses said unto the Lord, The people cannot come up to Mount Sinai, for thou chargest us, saying, Set bounds about the mount, and sanctify it. And the Lord said unto him, Away, get thee down, and thou shalt come up, thou and Aaron with thee. But let not the priests and the people break through to come up unto the Lord, lest he break forth upon them. And Moses went down unto the people, and spake unto them. And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of any thing that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me, and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath day of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day, and hallowed it. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. And all the people saw the thunderings and the lightnings and the noise of the trumpet and the mountain smoking. And when the people saw it, they removed and stood afar off. And they said unto Moses, Speak thou with us, and we will hear. But let not God speak with us, lest we die. And Moses said unto the people, Fear not, for God is come to prove you, and that his fear may be before your faces, that ye sin not. 
and the people stood afar off, and Moses drew near unto the thick darkness where God was. And the Lord said unto Moses, Thus thou shalt say unto the children of Israel, Ye have seen that I have talked with you from heaven. Ye shall not make with me gods of silver, neither shall ye make unto you gods of gold. An altar of earth thou shalt make unto me, and shalt sacrifice thereon thy burnt offerings, and thy peace offerings, thy sheep, and thine oxen. In all places where I record my name, I will come unto thee, and I will bless thee. And if thou wilt make me an altar of stone, thou shalt not build it of hewn stone, for if thou lift up thy tool upon it, thou hast polluted it. Neither shalt thou go up by steps unto mine altar, that thy nakedness be not discovered thereon. End of section 8 End of the story of Moses Section 9 of Dramatized Passages from the Old Testament. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Story of Joshua from Joshua Chapters 1 to 6, King James Version. Narrator read by David Allen. God, read by David Olson. Spies, read by Hester ben Simonides. Reubenites, Scadites, and the half tribe of Manasseh. Read by Thomas Peter. Rehab. Read by Anne Finlin. Officers. Read by Catherine. Messenger. Read by Lydia. King of Jericho. Read by Beth Thomas. Joshua. Read by Zames Curran. Chapter 1. Now after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore arise, go over this Jordan, thou, and all this people, unto the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you, as I said unto Moses. From the wilderness and this Lebanon, even unto the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, and unto the great sea, toward the going down of the sun, shall be your coast. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Be strong, and of a good courage, for unto this people shalt thou divide for an inheritance the land, which I swear unto their fathers to give to them. Only be thou strong and very courageous, that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law, which Moses my servant commanded thee. Turn not from it, to the right hand or to the left, that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. This book of law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written herein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Have not I commanded thee? Be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. Then Joshua commanded the officers of the people, saying, Pass through the host, and command the people, saying, Prepare you victuals, for within three days ye shall pass over this Jordan, to go in to possess the lands which the Lord your God giveth you to possess it. And to the Reubenites, and to the Gadites, and to half the tribe of Manasseh spake Joshua, saying, Remember the word which Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded you, saying, The Lord your God hath given you the rest, and has given you this land. Your wives, your little ones, and your cattle shall remain in this land which Moses gave you on this side Jordan, 
but ye shall pass before your brethren armed, all the mighty men of valor, and help them, until the Lord has given your brethren rest, as he has given you, and they also have possessed the land which the Lord your God given them, then ye shall return unto the land of your possession, and enjoy it, which Moses the Lord's servant gave you on this side Jordan towards the sun rising. And they answered Joshua, saying, All that thou commandest us we will do, and whithersoever thou sendest us we will go. According as we hearkened unto Moses in all things, so will we hearken unto thee. Only the Lord thy God be with thee, as he was with Moses. Whosoever he be that doth rebel against thy commandment, and will not hearken unto thy words and all that thou commandest him, he shall be put to death. Only be strong and of a good courage. Chapter 2 And Joshua the son of Nun sent out of Shittim two men to spy secretly, saying, Go view the land, even Jericho. And they went, and came into an harlot's house named Rahab, and lodged there. And it was told the king of Jericho, saying, Behold, there came men in hither tonight of the children of Israel to search out the country. And the king of Jericho sent unto Rahab, saying, Bring forth the men that are come to thee, which are entered into thine house, for they be come to search out all the country. And the woman took the two men, and hid them, and said thus, There came men unto me, but I wist not whence they were. And it came to pass, about the time of the shutting of the gate, when it was dark, that the men went out. Whither the men went, I wot not. Pursue after them quickly, for ye shall overtake them. But she had brought them up to the roof of the house, and hid them with the stalks of flax, which she had laid in order upon the roof. And the men pursued after them the way to Jordan unto the fords. And as soon as they which pursued after them were gone out, they shut the gate. And before they were laid down, she came up unto them upon the roof. And she said unto the men, I know that the Lord hath given you the land, and that your terror is fallen upon us, and that all the inhabitants of the land faint because of you. For we have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea for you when ye came out of Egypt, and what ye did unto the two kings of the Amorites that were on the other side Jordan, Sihon and Og, whom ye utterly destroyed. And as soon as we had heard these things, our hearts did melt, neither did there remain any more courage in any man because of you. For the Lord your God, he is God in heaven above and in earth beneath. Now therefore I pray you, swear unto me by the Lord, since I have showed you kindness, that ye will also show kindness unto my father's house, and give me a true token, and that ye will save alive my father, and my mother, and my brethren, and my sisters, and all that they have, and deliver our lives from death. And the men answered her, Our life for yours, if ye utter not this our business. And it shall be, when the Lord hath given us the land, that we will deal kindly and truly with thee. Then she let them down by cord through the window, for her house was upon the town wall. She dwelt upon the wall, and she said unto them, Get you to the mountain, lest the pursuers meet you, and hide yourselves there three days, until the pursuers be returned. And afterward may ye go on your way. And the men said unto her, We will be blameless of this thine oath which thou hast made us swear. Behold, when we come into the land, thou shalt bind this line of scarlet thread in the window, which thou didst let us down by, and thou shalt bring thy father, and thy mother, and thy brethren, and all thy father's house hold home unto thee. And it shall be that whoever shall go out of the doors of thy house into the street, his blood shall be upon his own head, and we will be guiltless. And whosoever shall be with thee in the house, his blood shall be on our head, if any hand be upon him. And if thou utter this our business, then we will be quit of thine oath which thou hast made us to swear. And she said, According unto your words, so be it. And she sent them away, and they departed. And she bound the scarlet line in the window. And they went and came unto the mountain, and abode there three days, until the pursuers were returned. And the pursuers sought them throughout all the way, but found them not. So the two men returned, and descended from the mountain, and passed over, and came to Joshua the son of Nun, and told him all things that befell them. And they said unto Joshua, Truly the Lord hath delivered into our hands all the land, for even all the inhabitants of the country do faint because of us. Chapter 3 And Joshua arose early in the morning, and they removed from Chittim, and came to Jordan, he and all the children of Israel, and lodged there before they passed over. And it came to pass after three days that the officers went through the host, and they commanded the people, saying, When ye see the ark of the covenant of the Lord your God, and the priests the Levites bearing it, 
then you shall remove from your place and go after it. Yet there shall be a space between you and it, about two thousand cubits by measure. Come not near unto it, that ye may know the way by which ye must go, for ye have not passed this way heretofore. And Joshua said unto the people, Sanctify yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. And Joshua spake unto the priests, saying, Take up the Ark of the Covenant, and pass over before the people. And they took up the Ark of the Covenant, and went before the people. And the Lord said unto Joshua, This day will I begin to magnify thee in the sight of all Israel, that they may know that as I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. And thou shalt command the priests that bear the Ark of the Covenant, saying, when ye are come to the brink of the water of Jordan, ye shall stand still in Jordan. And Joshua said unto the children of Israel, Come hither, and hear the words of the Lord your God. And Joshua said, Hereby ye shall know that the living God is among you, and that he will without fail drive out from before you the Canaanites, and the Hittites, and the Hivites, and the Pezzites, and the Girgashites, and the Amorites, and the Jebusites, Behold, the ark of the covenant of the Lord of all the earth passeth over before you into Jordan. Now, therefore, take you twelve men out of the tribes of Israel, out of every tribe a man. And it shall come to pass, as soon as the soles of the feet of the priests that bear the ark of the Lord, the Lord of all the earth, shall rest in the waters of Jordan, that the waters of Jordan shall be cut off from the waters that come down from above, and they shall stand upon a heap. And it came to pass, when the people removed from their tents to pass over the Jordan, and the priests bearing the Ark of the Covenant before the people, and as they that bear the Ark were come unto Jordan, and the feet of the priests that bear the Ark were dipped in the brim of the water, for Jordan overfloweth all his banks in all the time of harvest, that the waters which came down from above stood and rose up upon a heap very far from the city Adam, that is beside Zeratan, and those that came down towards the sea of the plain, even the salt sea, failed, and were cut off, and the people passed passed over right against Jericho. And the priests that bare the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord stood firm on dry ground in the midst of Jordan, and all the Israelites passed over on dry ground, until all the people were passed clean over Jordan. Chapter 4 And it came to pass, when all the people were clean passed over Jordan, that the Lord spake unto Joshua, saying, Take you twelve men out of the people, out of every tribe a man, and command ye them, saying, Take you hence out of the midst of Jordan, out of the place where the priest's feet stood firm, twelve stones, and ye shall carry them over with you, and leave them in the lodging place, where ye shall lodge this night. Then Joshua called the twelve men whom he had prepared of the children of Israel out of every tribe of men. And Joshua said unto them, Pass over before the ark of the Lord your God into the midst of Jordan. And take you up every man of you a stone upon his shoulders, according unto the number of the tribes of the children of Israel, that this may be a sign among you, that when your children ask their fathers in time to come, saying, What mean ye by these stones? Then ye shall answer them, that the waters of Jordan were cut off before the ark of the covenant of the Lord, when it passed over Jordan. The waters of Jordan were cut off, and these stones shall be a memorial unto the children of Israel forever. And the children of Israel did so as Joshua commanded, and took up twelve stones out of the midst of Jordan, as the Lord spake unto Joshua, according to the number of the tribes of the children of Israel, and carried them over with them unto the place where they lodged, and laid them down there. And Joshua set up twelve stones in the midst of Jordan, in the place where the feet of the priests which bare the ark of the covenant stood, and there they are unto this day. For the priests which bear the ark stood in the midst of Jordan until everything was finished that the Lord commanded Joshua to speak unto the people, according to all that Moses commanded Joshua. And the people hasted and passed over. And it came to pass, when all the people were clean passed over, that the ark of the Lord passed over, and the priests in the presence of the people. And the children of Reuben and the children of Gad and the half-tribe of Manasseh passed over armed before the children of Israel, as Moses spake unto them. About forty thousand prepared for war passed over before the Lord unto battle to the plains of Jericho. 
On that day the Lord magnified Joshua in the sight of all Israel, and they feared him as they feared Moses all the days of his life. And the Lord spake unto Joshua, saying, Command the priests that bear the ark of the testimony, that they come up out of Jordan. Joshua therefore commanded the priests, saying, Come ye up out of Jordan. And it came to pass, when the priests that bear the ark of the covenant of the Lord were come up out of the midst of Jordan, and the soles of the priests' feet were lifted up unto the dry land, that the waters of Jordan returned unto their place, and flowed over all his banks as they did before. And the people came up out of Jordan on the tenth day of the first month, and encamped in Gilgal, in the east border of Jericho. And those twelve stones which they took out of Jordan, did Joshua pitch in Gilgal. And he spake unto the children of Israel, saying, when your children shall ask their fathers in time to come, saying, What mean these stones? Then ye shall let your children know, saying, Israel came over this Jordan on dry land, and the Lord your God dried up the waters of Jordan from before you, until you were passed over, as the Lord your God did the Red Sea, which he dried up from before us, until we were gone over that all the people of the earth might know that the hand of the Lord, that it is mighty, that ye might fear the Lord your God forever. Chapter 5 And it came to pass, when all the kings of the Amorites, which were on the side of Jordan westward, and all the kings of the Canaanites, which were by the sea, heard that the Lord had dried up the waters of Jordan from before the children of Israel until we were passed over, that their heart melted, neither was their spirit in them any more because of the children of Israel. At that time the Lord said unto Joshua, Make these sharp knives, and circumcise again the children of Israel the second time. And Joshua made him sharp knives, and circumcised the children of Israel at the hill of the foreskins. And this is the cause why Joshua did circumcise. All the people that came out of Egypt that were males, even all the men of war, died in the wilderness by the way after they came out of Egypt. Now all the people that came out were circumcised, but all the people that were born in the wilderness by the way as they came forth out of Egypt, then they had not circumcised. For the children of Israel walked forty years in the wilderness, till all the people that were men of war which came out of Egypt were consumed, because they obeyed not the voice of the Lord, unto whom the Lord sware that he would not show them the land which the Lord sware unto their fathers that he would give us, a land that floweth with milk and honey. And their children, whom he raised up in their stead, then Joshua circumcised for they were uncircumcised because they had not circumcised them by the way. And it came to pass when they had done circumcising all the people that they abode in their places in the camp till they were whole. And the Lord said unto Joshua, This day have I rolled away the reproach of Egypt from off you. Wherefore the name of the place is called Gilgal unto this day. And the children of Israel encamped in Gilgal, and kept the Passover on the fourteenth day of the month, at even in the plains of Jericho. And they did eat of the old corn of the land on the morrow after the Passover, unleavened cakes, and parched corn in the selfsame day. And the manna ceased on the morrow after they had eaten of the old corn of the land. Neither had the children of Israel manna any more, but they did eat of the fruit of the land of Canaan that year. And it came to pass, when Joshua was by Jericho, that he lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, there stood a man over against him with his sword drawn in his hand and joshua went unto him and said unto him art thou for us or for our adversaries and he said but as the captain of the host of the lord i am now come and joshua fell on his face to the earth and did worship and said unto him what saith my lord unto his servant and the captain of the lord's host said unto joshua loose thy shoe from off thy foot for the place whereon thou standest is holy and joshua did so Chapter 6 Now Jericho was straightly shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out, and none came in. And the Lord said unto Joshua, See, I have given into thine hand Jericho, and the king thereof, and the mighty men of valor. And ye shall compass the city, all ye men of war, and go round about the city once. Thus shalt thou do six days. And seven priests shall bear before the ark seven trumpets of ram's horns. And the seventh day ye shall compass the city seven times. And the priests shall blow with the trumpets. And it shall come to pass that when they make a long blast with the ram's horn, and when ye hear the sound of the trumpet, all the people shall shout with a great shout, and the wall of the city shall fall down flat. 
and the people shall ascend up every man straight before him and joshua the son of nun called the priests and said unto them take up the ark of the covenant and let seven priests bear seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark of the lord and he said unto the people pass on encompass the city and let him that is armed pass on before the ark of the lord and it came to pass when joshua had spoken unto the people that the seven priests bearing the seven trumpets of ram's horns passed on before the lord and blew with the trumpets and the ark of the covenant of the lord followed them and the armed men went before the priests that blew with the trumpets and the rear lord came after the ark the priests going on and blowing with the trumpets and joshua had commanded the people saying ye shall not shout nor make any noise with your voice nor shall any word proceed out of your mouth until the day i bid you shout then shall ye shout so the ark of the lord compassed the city going about at once and they came into the camp and lodged in the camp and joshua rose early in the morning and the priests took up the ark of the lord and seven priests bearing seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark of the lord went on continually and blew with the trumpets and the armed men went before them but the rear ward came after the ark of the lord the priests going on and blowing with the trumpet and the seventh day they compassed the city once and returned into the camp so they did six days and it came to pass on the seventh day that they rose early about the dawning of the day and compassed the city after the same manner seven times only on that day they compassed the city seven times and it came to pass at the seventh time when the priests blew with the trumpets joshua said unto the people shout for the lord has given you the city and the city shall be accursed even it and all that are therein to the Lord. Only Rehab the harlot shall live, she and all that are with her in the house, because she hid the messengers that we sent. And ye, in any wise, keep yourselves from the accursed thing, lest ye make yourselves accursed, when ye take of the accursed thing, and make the camp of Israel a curse, and trouble it. But all the silver and gold and vessels of brass and iron are consecrated unto the lord they shall come into the treasury of the lord so the people shouted when the priests blew with the trumpets and it came to pass when the people heard the sound of the trumpet and the people shouted with a great shout that the wall fell down flat so that the people went up into the city every man straight before him and they took the city and they utterly destroyed all that was in the city both man and woman young and old ox and sheep and ass with the edge of the sword but joshua had said unto the two men that had spied out the country go into the harlot's house and bring out thence the woman and all that she hath as ye swore unto her and the young men that were spies went in and brought out rahab and her father and her mother and her brethren and all that she had and they brought out all her kindred and left them without the camp of israel and they burnt the city with fire and all that was therein only the silver and the gold and the vessels of brass and of iron they put into the treasury of the house of the lord and joshua saved rahab the harlot alive and her father's household and all that she had and she dwelt in israel even unto this day because she hid the messengers which joshua sent to spy out jericho and joshua adjured them at that time saying cursed be the man before the lord that writheth up and buildeth this city jericho he shall lay the foundation thereof in his firstborn and in his youngest son shall he set up the gates of it. So the Lord was with Joshua, and his fame was noised throughout all the country. End of section number nine. Section ten of Dramatized Bible Passages from the Old Testament. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The story of Gideon from Judges chapters 6 to 8, King James Version, narrated by David Allen. Prophet, read by Sonia. Angel, read by Florian Wenyel. The Lord, read by David Olson. Gideon, read by Gideon Snow. Man of the City, read by Catherine. Joash, read by Thomas Peter. Midianite One, read by Lydia. Second Midianite, read by Esther Simonides. Men of Ephraim, Succoth, and Israel, read by Marianne. 
Zebba and Zalmanna. Read by Beth Thomas. And the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord delivered them into the hand of Midian seven years. And the hand of Midian prevailed against Israel. And because of the Midianites, the children of Israel made them the dens, which are in the mountains and caves and strongholds. And so it was, when Israel had sown, that the Midianites came up, and the Amalekites, and the children of the east, even they came up against them. And they encamped against them, and destroyed the increase of the earth, till thou come unto Gaza, and left no substance for Israel, neither sheep, nor ox, nor ass. For they came up with their cattle and their tents, and they came as grasshoppers for multitude. For both they and their camels were without number, and they entered into the land to destroy it. And Israel was greatly impoverished because of the Midianites, and the children of Israel cried unto the Lord. And it came to pass, when the children of Israel cried unto the Lord because of the Midianites, that the Lord sent a prophet unto the children of Israel, which said unto them, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, I brought you up from Egypt, and I brought you forth out of the house of bondage. And I delivered you out of the hand of the Egyptians, and out of the hand of all that oppressed you, and drave them out from before you, and gave you their land. And I said unto you, I am the Lord your God. Fear not the gods of the Amorites, in whose land ye dwell, but ye have not obeyed my voice. And there came an angel of the Lord, and sat under an oak, which was an opfra, that pertained unto Joash the Abizarite, and his son Gideon threshed wheat by the winepress, to hide it from the Midianites. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him, and said unto him, The Lord is with thee, thy mighty man of valor. And Gideon said unto him, O oh my Lord, if the Lord be with us, why then is all this befallen us? And where be all his miracles? which our fathers told us of, saying, Did not the Lord bring us out from Egypt? But now the Lord hath forsaken us, and delivered us into the hands of the Midianites. And the Lord looked upon him and said, Go in this thy might, and thou shalt save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have not I sent thee? And he said unto him, O my Lord, wherewith shall I save Israel? Behold, my family is poor, and Manasseh, and I am the least in my father's house. And the Lord said unto him, Surely I will be with thee, and thou shalt smite the Midianites as one man. And he said unto him, If now I have found grace in thy sight, then show me a sign that thou talkest with me. Depart not hence, I pray thee, until I come unto thee, and bring forth my present, and set it before thee. And he said, I will tarry until thou come again. And Gideon went in and made ready a kid and unleavened cakes of an ephah of flour. The flesh he put in a basket and he put the broth in a pot and brought it out unto him under the oak and presented it. And the angel of God said unto him, Take the flesh and the unleavened cakes and lay them upon this rock and pour out the broth. And he did so. Then the angel of the Lord put forth the end of the staff that was in his hand, and touched the flesh and the unleavened cakes. And there rose up fire out of the rock, and consumed the flesh and the unleavened cakes. Then the angel of the Lord departed out of his sight. And when Gideon perceived that he was an angel of the Lord, Gideon said, Alas, O Lord God, for because I have seen an angel of the Lord face to face. And the Lord said unto him, Peace be unto thee, fear not. Peace be unto thee, Fear not, thou shalt not die. Then Gideon built there an altar unto the Lord, and called it Jehovah Shalom. Unto this day it is yet in Ophrah of the Abizarites. And it came to pass the same night that the Lord said unto him, Take thy father's young bullock, even the second bullock of seven years old, and throw down the altar of Baal that thy father hath, and cut down the grove that is by it, and build an altar unto the Lord thy God upon the top of this rock in the ordered place and take the second bullock and offer a burnt sacrifice with the wood of the grove which thou shalt cut down then gideon took ten men of his servants and did as the lord had said unto him and so it was because he feared his father's household and the men of the city that he could not do it by day that he did it by night 
and when the men of the city arose early in the morning behold the altar of baal was cast down and the grove was cut down that was by it and the second bullock was offered upon the altar that was built and they said one to another who hath done this thing and when they inquired and asked they said gideon the son of joash hath done this gideon the son of joash hath done this thing then the men of the city said unto joash bring out thy son that he may die because he hath cast down the altar of baal and because he hath cut down the grove that was by it and joash said unto all that stood against him will ye plead for baal will ye save him he that will plead for him let him be put to death whilst it is yet morning if he be a god let him plead for himself because one hath cast down his altar therefore on that day he called him jerubbaal saying let baal plead against him because he hath thrown down his altar then all the midianites and the amalekites and the children of the east were gathered together and went over and pitched in the valley of jezreel but the spirit of the lord came upon gideon and he blew a trumpet and abizer was gathered after him and he sent messengers throughout all manasseh who also was gathered after him and he sent messengers unto asher and unto zebulun and unto naphtali and they came up to meet them and gideon said unto god if thou wilt save israel by mine hand as thou hast said behold i will put a fleece of wool in the floor and if the dew be on the fleece only and it be dry upon all the earth beside then shall i know that thou wilt save israel by my hand as thou hast said and it was so for he rose up early on the morrow and thrust the fleece together and wringed the dew out of the fleece a bowl full of water and gideon said unto god let not thine anger be hot against me and i will speak but this once let me prove i pray thee but this once with the fleece let it now be dry only upon the fleece and upon all the ground let there be dew and god did so that night for it was dry upon the fleece only and there was dew on all the ground then jerubbaal who is gideon and all the people that were with him rose up early and pitched beside the wall of herod so that the host of the midianites were on the north side of them by the hill of moreth in the valley and the lord said unto gideon the people that are with thee are too many for me to give the midianites into their hands lest israel vaunt themselves against me saying my own hand hath saved me now therefore go to proclaim in the ears of the people saying whoever is fearful and afraid let him return and depart early from mount gilead and there returned of the people twenty and two thousand and there remained ten thousand and the lord said unto gideon the people are yet too many bring them down unto the water and i will try them for thee and it shall be that of whom i say unto thee this shall go with thee the same shall go with thee and of whomsoever i say unto thee this shall not go with thee the same shall not go so he brought down the people unto the water and the lord said unto gideon every one that lappeth of the water with his tongue as a dog lappeth him shalt thou set by himself likewise every one that boweth down upon his knees to drink and the number of them that lapped putting their hand to their mouth were three hundred men but the rest of the people bowed down upon their knees to drink water and the lord said unto gideon by the three hundred men that lapped will i save you and deliver the midianites into thine hand and let all the other people go every man unto his place so the people took victuals in their hand and their trumpets and he sent all the rest of israel every man into his tent and retained those three hundred men and the host of midian was beneath him in the valley and it came to pass the same night that the lord said unto him arise get thee down unto the host for i have delivered it into thine hand but if thou fear to go down go thou with pura thy servant down to the host and thou shalt hear what they say and afterwards shall thy hands be strengthened to go down unto thy host then went he down with purah his servant unto the outside of the armed men that were in the host 
And the Midianites and the Amalekites and all the children of the east lay along the valley like grasshoppers for a multitude, and their camels were without number, as the sand by the sea for multitude. And when Gideon was come, behold, there was a man that told a dream unto his fellow, and said, Behold, I dreamed a dream, and lo, a cake of barley bread tumbled into the host of Midian, and came unto a tent, and smote it that it fell, and overturned it that the tent lay along. And his fellow answered and said, This is nothing else save the sword of Gideon, the son of Joash, a man of Israel, for into his hand hath God delivered Midian, and all the host. And it was so, when Gideon heard the telling of the dream, and the interpretation thereof, that he worshipped, and returned unto the host of Israel, and said, Alas, for the Lord hath delivered into your hand the host of Midian. And he divided the three hundred men into three companies, and he put a trumpet in every man's hand, with empty pitchers, and lamps within the pitchers. And he said unto them, Look on me, and do likewise. And behold, when I come to the outside of the camp, it shall be that, as I do, so shall ye do. When I blow with a trumpet, I and all that are with me, then blow ye trumpets also on every side of all the camp, and say, The sword of the Lord and for Gideon, so Gideon and the hundred men that were with him came unto the outside of the camp in the beginning of the middle watch. They had but newly set the watch, and they blew the trumpets and brake the pitchers that were in their hands. And the three companies blew the trumpets and brake the pitchers and held the lamps in their left hands and the trumpets in their right hands to blow withal, and they cried, The sword of the Lord and of Gideon. And they stood every man in his place around about the camp, and all the host ran and cried and fled. And the three hundred blew the trumpets, and the Lord set every man's sword against his fellow, even throughout all the host. And the host fled to Beth Shittah in Zerath, and to the border of Abel Mahola, unto Tabith. And the men of Israel gathered themselves together out of Naphtali, and out of Asher, and out of all Manasseh, and pursued after the Midianites. And Gideon sent messengers throughout all Mount Ephraim, saying, Come down against the Midianites, and take before them the waters unto beth and Jordan. Then all the men of Ephraim gathered themselves together and took the waters into beth and Jordan. They took the two princes of the Midianites, Oreb and Zeb, and they slew Oreb upon the rock Oreb, and Zeb they slew at the winepress of Zeb, and pursued Midian and brought the heads of Oreb and Zeb to Gideon on the other side Jordan. And the men of Ephraim said unto him, why hast thou served us thus, that thou callest us not, when thou wentest to fight with the Midianites? And they did chide with him sharply, and he said unto them, What have I done now in comparison for you? Is not the gleaning of the grapes of Ephraim better than the vintage of Abizar? God hath delivered into your hands princes of Midian, Oreb, and Zeb. And what was I able to do in comparison of you? Then their anger was abated toward him when he had said that, and Gideon came to Jordan and passed over he and the three hundred men that were with him, faint yet pursuing them. And he said unto the men of Succoth, Give, I pray you, loaves of bread unto the people that follow me, for they be faint, and I am pursuing after Zeba and Zalmanah, kings of Midian. And the princes of Succoth said, Are the hands of Zeba and Zalmuna now in thine hand? that we should give bread unto thine army. And Gideon said, Therefore, when the Lord hath delivered Zeba and Zalmian into mine hand, then I will tear your flesh with the thorns of the wilderness and with bloods. And he went up thence to Penuel, and spake unto them likewise. And the men of Penuel answered him as the men of Succoth had answered him. And he spake also unto the men of Penuel, saying, When I come again in peace, I will break down this tower. Now Zeba and Zalmunna were in Karkor, and the hosts with him, about fifteen thousand men, all that were left of all the hosts of the children of the east. For there fell an hundred and twenty thousand men that drew sword. And Gideon went up by the way of them that dwelt in tents on the east of Noba and Jogbeha, and smote the host, for the host was secure. And when Zeba and Zalmunna fled, he pursued after them, and took the two kings of Midian, Zeba and Zalmunna, and discomfited all the host. And Gideon, the son of Joash, returned from battle before the sun was up, and caught a young man of the men of Succoth, and inquired of him. And he described unto him the princes of Succoth and the elders thereof, even threescore and seventeen men. And he came unto the men of Succoth, and said, Behold, Zeba and Zalmian, with whom ye did upbraid me, saying, Are the hands of Zeba and Zalmania 
now in thine hand, that we should give bread unto thine men, that we are weary. And he took the elders of the city, and thorns of the wilderness and briars, and with him he taught them to suck, and he beat down the tower of Penuel, and slew the men of the city. Then said he unto Zeba and Zalmunna, What manner of men were there whom we slew in Tabor? And they answered, As thou art, so were they. Each one resembled the children of a king. And he said, they were my brethren, even the sons of my mother, as the Lord liveth, let ye be saved. If ye had saved them alive, I would not slay you. And he said unto Jether his firstborn, Up, and slay them. But the youth drew not his sword, for he feared, because he was yet a youth. Then Zeban Zalmunna said, Rise thou, and fall upon us, for as the man is, so is his strength. And Gideon arose, and slew Zeba and Zalmunna, and took away the ornaments that were on their camels' necks. Then the men of Israel said unto Gideon, Rule thou over us, both thou and thy son, and thy son's son also, for thou hast delivered us from the hand of Midian. And Gideon said unto them, I will not rule over you, neither shall my son rule over you, the Lord shall rule over you. And Gideon said unto them, I would desire a request of you, that ye would give me every man the earrings of his prey. For they had golden earrings, because they were Ishmaelites. And they answered, We will willingly give them. And they spread a garment, and did cast therein every man the earrings of his prey. And the weight of the golden earrings that he requested was a thousand and seven hundred shekels of gold, beside ornaments and collars and purple raiment that was on the kings of Midian, and beside the chains that were about their camels' necks. And Gideon made an ephod thereof, and put it in his city, even in Ophrah. And all Israel went thither a whoring after it, which thing became a snare unto Gideon and to his house. Thus was Midian subdued before the children of Israel, so that they lifted up their their heads no more. And the country was in quietness forty years in the days of Gideon. And Jeroboam, the son of Joash, went and dwelt in his own house. And Gideon had three score and ten sons of his body begotten, for he had many wives. And his concubine that was in Shechem, she also bare him a son, whose name he called Abimelech. And Gideon, the son of Joash, died in a good old age, and was buried in the sepulchre of Joash's father in Oprah of the Abizarites. And it came to pass, as soon as Gideon was dead, that the children of Israel turned again, and went a-whoring after Balaam, and made Baal beareth their god. And the children of Israel remembered not the Lord their God, who had delivered them out of the hands of all their enemies on every side. Neither showed they kindness to the house of Jeroboam, namely Gideon, according to all the goodness which he had showed unto Israel. End of section number 10. Section 11 of Dramatized Passages from the Old Testament. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Story of Samson From Judges, Chapters 13 to 16, King James Version Narrated by Zames Curran Samson's Wife, read by Lydia Samson's Father-in-Law, read by Chatsa Samson, read by David Lotus Philistines, read by Esther ben Simonides. Men of Judah, read by Beth Thomas. Manoah's wife, read by Vanessa Cooley. Manoah, read by Thomas Peter. Delilah, read by Christine G. Angel of the Lord, read by Catherine. Chapter 13 And the children of Israel did evil again in the sight of the Lord. And the Lord delivered them into the hand of the Philistines forty years. And there was a certain man of Zorah, of the family of Denates, whose name was Manoah, and his wife was barren, and bare not. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto the woman, and said unto her, Behold now, thou art barren, and bearest not, but thou shalt conceive and bear a son. Now therefore beware, I pray thee, and drink not wine, nor strong drink, and eat not any unclean thing. For, lo, thou shalt conceive and bear a son, and no razor shall come on his head. For the child shall be a Nazarite unto God from the womb, and he shall begin to deliver Israel out of the hands of the Philistines. Then the woman came and told her husband, saying, A man of God came unto me, and his countenance was like the countenance of an angel of God. 
very terrible, but I asked him not whence he was, neither told he me his name. But he said unto me, Behold, thou shalt conceive, and bear a son, and now drink no wine, nor strong drink, nor eat any unclean thing, for the child shall be a Nazarite to God from the womb to the day of his death. Then Manoah entreated the Lord, and said, O oh my Lord, let the man of God which thou didst send come again unto us, and teach us what we shall do unto the child that shall be born. And God hearkened his voice to Manoah, and the angel of God came again unto the woman as she sat in the field. But Manoah her husband was not with her. And the woman made haste, and ran, and shrewed her husband, and said unto him, Behold, the man hath appeared unto me, that came unto me the other day. And Manoah arose, and went after his wife, and came to the man, and said unto him, Art thou the man that spakest unto the woman? And he said, I am. And Manoah said, Now let thy words come to pass. How shall we order the child, and how shall we do unto him? And the angel of the Lord said unto Manoah, Of all that I said unto the woman, let her beware. She may not eat of anything that cometh of the vine, neither let her drink wine or strong drink, nor eat any unclean thing. All that I commanded her, let her observe. And Manoah said unto the angel of the Lord, I pray thee, let us detain thee, until we shall have made ready a kid for thee. And the angel of the Lord said unto Manoah, Though thou detain me, I will not eat of thy bread, and if thou wilt offer a burnt offering, thou must offer it unto the Lord. For Manoah knew not that he was an angel of the Lord. And Manoah said unto the angel of the Lord, What is thy name, that when thy sayings come to pass we may do thee honour? And the angel of the Lord said unto him, Why askest thou thus after my name, seeing it is secret? So Manoah took a kid with a meat offering, and offer it upon a rock unto the Lord. And the angel did wondrously, and Manoah and his wife looked on. For it came to pass, when the flame went up towards heaven from the altar, that the angel of the Lord ascended in the flame of the altar. And Manoah and his wife looked on it, and fell on their faces to the ground. But the angel of the Lord did not appear to Manoah and to his wife. And Manoah knew that he was an angel of the Lord. And Manoah said unto his wife, We shall surely die, because we have seen God. But his wife said unto him, If the Lord were pleased to kill us, he would not have received a burnt offering and meat offering at our hands, neither would he have showed us all these things, nor would, as at this time, have told us such things as these. And the woman bore a son, and called his name Samson. And the child grew, and the Lord blessed him. And the Spirit of the Lord began to move him at times in the camp of Dan, between Zorah and Ishtola. And Samson went down to Timnath, and saw a woman in Timnath, of the daughters of the Philistines. And he came up, and told his father and his mother, and said, I have seen a woman in Timnath of the daughters of the Philistines. Now therefore get her for me to wife. And his father and his mother said unto him, Is there never a woman among the daughters of thy brethren, or among all my people, that thou goest to take a wife of the uncircumcised Philistines? And Samson said unto his father, Get her for me, for she pleaseth me well. But his father and his mother knew not that it was the Lord, that he sought an occasion against the Philistines. For at that time the Philistines had dominion over Israel. Then went Samson down, and his father and his mother, to Timnath, and came to the vineyards of Timnath. And behold, a young lion roared against him. And the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him, and he rent him as he would rent a kid, and he had nothing in his hand. But he told not his father or his mother what he had done. And he went down and talked to the woman, and she pleased Samson well. And after a time, he returned to take her, and he turned aside to see the carcass of the lion. And behold, there was a swarm of bees and honey in the carcass of the lion. And he took thereof in his hands, and went on eating, and came to his father and mother. And he gave them, and they did eat. But he told not them that he had taken the honey out of the carcass of the lion. So his father went down unto the woman, and Samson made there a feast. 
or so used the young man to do. And it came to pass, when they saw him, that they brought thirty companions to be with him. And Samson said unto them, I will now put forth a riddle unto you, if ye can certainly declare it me within the seven days of the feast, and find it out. Then I will give you thirty sheets and thirty chains of garments. But if ye cannot declare it me, then shall ye give me thirty sheets and thirty chains of garments. And they said unto him, Put forth thy riddle, that we may hear it. And he said unto them, Out of the eater came forth meat, and out of the strong came forth sweetness. And they could not in three days expound the riddle. And it came to pass on the seventh day, that they said unto Samson's wife, Entice thy husband, that he may declare unto us the riddle, lest we burn thee and thy father's house with fire. Have ye called us to take that we have? Is it not so? And Samson's wife wept before him, and said, Thou dost but hate me, and lovest me not. Thou hast put forth a riddle unto the children of my people, and hast not told it me. And he said unto her, Behold, I have not told it my father, nor my mother, and shall I tell it thee? And she wept before him the seven days, while their feast lasted. And it came to pass on the seventh day that he told her, because she lay sore upon him, and she told the riddle to the children of her people. And the men of the city said unto him on the seventh day, before the sun went down, What is sweeter than honey, and what is stronger than a lion? And he said unto them, If ye had not ploughed with my heifer, ye had not found out my riddle. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon him, and he went down to Ashkelon, and slew thirty men of them, and took their spoils, and gave change of garments unto them which expounded the riddle. And his anger was kindled, and he went up to his father's house. But Samson's wife was given to his companion, whom he had used as his friend. But it came to pass, within a while after, in the time of the wheat harvest, that Samson visited his wife with a kid, and he said, I will go into my wife into the chamber. But her father would not suffer him to go in. And her father said, I verily thought that thou hast utterly hated her, therefore I gave her to thy companion. Is not her younger sister fairer than she? Take her, I pray thee, instead of her. And Samson said, concerning them, Now shall I be more blameless than the Philistines, though I do them a displeasure? And Samson went and caught three hundred foxes, and took firebrands, and turned tail to tail, put a firebrand in the midst between two tails. And when he had set the brands on fire, he let them go into the standing corn of the Philistines, and burnt up both the shocks and also the standing corn, with the vineyards and olives. Then the Philistines said, Who hath done this? And they answered, Samson, the son-in-law of the Timnite, because he had taken his wife and given her to his companion. And the Philistines came up, and burnt her and her father with fire. And Samson said unto them, Though ye have done this, yet will I be avenged of you, and after that I will cease. And he smote them, hip and thigh, with a great slaughter. And he went down and dwelt in the top of the rock Etam. Then the Philistines went up, and pitched in Judah, and spread themselves in Lehi. And the men of Judah said, Why are ye come up against us? And they answered, To bind Samson are we come up, to do to him as he hath done to us. Then three thousand men of Judah went to the top of the rock Etam, and said to Samson, Knowest thou not that the Philistines are rulers over us? What is this that thou hast done unto us? And he said unto them, And they did unto me, so have I done unto them. And they said unto him, We are come down to bind thee, that we may deliver thee into the hand of the Philistines. And Samson said unto them, Swear unto me that ye will not fall upon me yourselves. And they spake unto him, saying, No, no. But we will bind thee fast, and deliver thee into their hand, but surely we will not kill thee. And they bound him with two new cords, and brought him up from the rock. And when he came unto Lehi, the Philistines shouted against him, and the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him, and the cords that were upon his arms became as flax that had been burnt with fire, and his bands loosened from off his hands. And he found a new jawbone of an ass, and put forth his hand, and took it, 
and slew a thousand men therewith. And Samson said, With the jawbone of an ass, heaps upon heaps, with the jaw of an ass, have I slain a thousand men. And it came to pass, when he had made an end of speaking, that he cast away the jawbone out of his hand, and called that place Rabathlehi. And he was sore athirst, and called upon the Lord, and said, Thou hast given this great deliverance into the hand of thy servant, and now shall I die of thirst, and fall into the hand of the uncircumcised. But God clave and hollow place that was in the jaw, and there came water thereout. And when he had drunk, his spirit came again, and he revived. Wherefore he called the name thereof and Hekor, which is in Levi until this day. And he judged Israel in the days of the Philistines twenty years. Then went Samson to Gaza, and saw there a harlot, and went in unto her. And he was told the Gazites, saying, Samson is come hither. And they compassed him in, and laid wait for him all night in the gate of the city, and were quiet all night, saying, In the morning, when it is day, we shall kill him. And Samson lay till midnight, and arose at midnight, and took the doors of the gates of the city, and the two posts, and went away with them, bar and all, and put them upon his shoulders, and carried them up to the top of a hill that is before Hebron. And it came to pass that he loved a woman in the valley of Sorek, and whose name was Delilah. And the lords of the Philistines came up upon her, and said unto her, Entice him, and see wherein his great strength lieth, and by what means we may prevail against him, that we may bind him to afflict what means we may prevail against him, that we may bind him to afflict him, and we will give thee every one of us eleven hundred pieces of silver. And Delilah said to Samson, Tell me, I pray thee, wherein thy great strength lieth, and wherewith thou mightest be bound to afflict thee. And Samson said unto her, If they bind me with seven green withs that were never dried, then shall I be weak, and be as another man. Then the lords of the Philistines brought up to her her seven green withs, which had not been dried, and she bound him with them. Now there were men lying in wait, abiding with her in the chamber. And she said unto him, The Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And he brake the withs, as a thread of tow is broken when it toucheth the fire. So his strength was not known. And Delilah said unto Samson, Behold, thou hast mocked me, and told me lies. Now tell me, I pray thee, wherewith thou mightest be bound. And he said unto her, If they bind me fast with new ropes that never were occupied, then shall I be weak, and be as another man. Delilah therefore took new ropes, and bound him therewith, and said unto him, The Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And there were liars in wait abiding in the chamber, and he brake them from off his arms like a thread. And Delilah said unto Samson, Hitherto thou hast mocked me, and told me lies. Tell me wherewith thou mightest be bond. And he said unto her, If thou weavest the seven locks of my head with the web. And she fastened it with a pin, and said unto him, The Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And he awakened out of his sleep, and went away with the pin of the beam, and with the web. And she said unto him, how canst thou say I love thee, when thine heart is not with me? Thou hast mocked me these three times, and hast not told me wherein thy great strength lieth. And it came to pass, when she had pressed him daily with her words, and urged him, so that his soul was vexed unto death, that he told her all his heart, and said unto her, There has not come a razor upon my head, for I have been a Nazarite unto God from my mother's womb. If I be shaven, then my strength will go from me, and I shall become weak and be like any other man. And when Delilah saw that he had told her all his heart, she sent and called for the lords of the Philistines, saying, Come up this once, for he hath showed me all his heart. Then the lords of the Philistines came up upon her, and brought money in their hand. And she made him sleep upon her knees. And she called for a man, and she caused him to shave off the seven locks of his head. And she began to afflict him, and his strength went from him. And she said, The Philistines be upon thee, Samson. 
and he awoke from a sleep and said, I will go out as at other times before and shake myself. And he wist not that the Lord was deprived from him. But the Philistines took him and put out his eyes and brought him down to Gaza and bound him with fetters of brass. And he did grind in the prison house. Howbeit, the hair of his head began to grow again after he was shaven. Then the lords of the Philistines gathered them together for to offer a great sacrifice unto the Dagon their god, and to rejoice, for they said, Our god hath delivered Samson our enemy into our hand. And when the people saw him, they praised their god, for they said, Our god hath delivered into our hands our enemy and the destroyer of our country, which slew many of us. And it came to pass, when their hearts were merry, that they said, Call for Samson, that he may make us sport. And they called for Samson out of the prison house, and he made them sport. And they set him between the pillars. And Samson said unto the lad that held him by the hand, Suffer me that I may feel the pillars whereupon the house standeth, that I may lean upon them. Now the house was full of men and women, and all the lords of the Philistines were there. And there were upon the roof about three thousand men and women that beheld while Samson made sport. And Samson called unto the Lord and said, O Lord God, remember me, I pray thee, and strengthen me, I pray thee, only this once. O God, that I may be at once avenged of the Philistines for my two eyes. And Samson took hold of the two middle pillars upon which the house stood, and on which it was borne up, of the one with his right hand, and of the other with his left. And Samson said, Let me die with the Philistines. And he bowed himself with all his might, and the house fell upon the lords, and upon all the people that were within. So the dead which he slew at his death were more than they which he slew in his life. And then his brethren and all the house of his father came down, and took him, and brought him up, and buried him between Zorah and Ishtola, in the burial place of Manoah his father. And he judged Israel twenty years. End of section 11. Section 12 of Dramatized Passages from the Old Testament. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Story of Saul from 1 Samuel chapters 8 to 11 king james version narration by beth thomas samuel read by michael landy saul read by larry wilson saul's uncle read by bethesda lily servant read by estrophan samonides nahash read by catherine men of yabesh read by thomas peter maidens read by lydia kish Read by David Purdy. God. Read by David Olson. Elders. Read by Dolly Pinoroles. Children of Belial. Read by Lian Yao. And it came to pass, when Samuel was old, that he made his sons judges over Israel. Now the name of his firstborn was Joel, and the name of his second Abiah. They were judges in Beersheba. And his sons walked not in his ways, but turned aside after lucre, and took bribes and perverted judgment. Then all the elders of Israel gathered themselves together, and came to Samuel unto Ramah, and said unto him, Behold, thou art old, and thy sons walk not in thy ways. Now make us a king to judge us like all the nations. But the thing displeased Samuel, when they said, Give us a king to judge us. And Samuel prayed unto the Lord, and the Lord said unto Samuel, Hearken unto the voice of the people in all that they say unto thee. For they have not rejected thee, but they have rejected me, that I should not reign over them, according to all the works which they have done since the day that I brought them up out of Egypt, even unto this day, wherewith they have forsaken me and served other gods. So do they also unto thee, now therefore hearken unto their voice, howbeit yet protest solemnly unto them, and shew them the manner of the king that shall reign over them. And Samuel told all the words of the Lord unto the people that asked of him a king, 
and he said, This will be the manner of the king that shall reign over you. He will take your sons, and appoint them for himself, for his chariots, and to be his horsemen, and some shall run before his chariots. And he will appoint him captains over thousands, and captains over fifties, and will set them to ear his ground, and to reap his harvest, and to make his instruments of war, and instruments of his chariots. And he will take your daughters to be confectionaries, and to be cooks, and to be bakers. And he will take your fields, and your vineyards, and your olive yards, even the best of them, and give them to his servants. And he will take the tenth of your seed, and of your vineyards, and give to his officers, and to his servants. And he will take your men's servants, and your maid servants, and your goodliest young men, and your asses, and put them to his work. He will take the tenth of your sheep, and ye shall be his servants, and ye shall cry out in that day because of your king, which ye shall have chosen you, and the Lord will not hear you in that day. Nevertheless, the people refused to obey the voice of Samuel, and they said, Nay, but we will have a king over us, that we also may be like all the nations, and that our king may judge us, and go out before us, and fight our battles. And Samuel heard all the words of the people, and he rehearsed them in the ears of the Lord. And the Lord said to Samuel, Hearken unto their voice, and make them a king. And Samuel said unto the men of Israel, Go every man unto his city. Now there was a man of Benjamin, whose name was Kish, the son of Abiel, the son of Zeror, the son of Bechorath, the son of Aphiah, a Benjaminite, a mighty man of power. And he had a son whose name was Saul, a choice young man and a goodly. And there was not among the children of Israel a goodlier person than he. From his shoulders and upward he was higher than any of the people. And the asses of Kish, Saul's father, were lost. And Kish said to Saul, his son, Take now one of the servants with thee, and arise, go seek the asses. And he passed through Mount Ephraim, and passed through the land of Shalisha, but they found them not. Then they passed through the land of Shalim, and there they were not. And he passed through the land of the Benjaminites, but they found them not. And when they were come to the land of Zuf, Saul said to his servant that was with him, Come and let us return, lest my father leave caring for the asses, and take thought for us. And he said unto him, Behold, now there is in this city a man of God, and he is an honourable man. All that he saith cometh surely to pass. Now, let us go thither. Peradventure he can show us our way that we should go. Then said Saul to his servant, But behold, if we go, what shall we bring the man? For the bread is spent in our vessels, and there is not a present to bring to the man of God. What have we? And the servant answered Saul again, and said, Behold, I have here at hand the fourth part of a shekel of silver. That will I give to the man of God, to tell us our way. Before time in Israel, when a man went to inquire of God, thus he spake, Come, and let us go to the seer. For he that is now called a prophet was before time called a seer. Then said Saul to his servant, well said come let us go so they went unto the city where the man of god was and as they went up the hill to the city they found young maidens going out to draw water and said unto them is the seer here and they answered them and said he is behold he is before you make haste now for he came to-day to the city for there is a sacrifice of the people to-day in the high place as soon as ye be come into the city, ye shall straightway find him before he go up to the high place to eat, for the people will not eat until he come, because he doth bless the sacrifice, and afterwards they eat that be bidden. Now therefore get you up, for about this time ye shall find him. And they went up into the city, and when they were come into the city, behold, Samuel came out against them, for to go up to the high place. Now the Lord had told Samuel in his ear, a day before Saul came, saying, Tomorrow, about this time, I will send thee a man out of the land of Benjamin, and thou shalt anoint him to be captain over my people Israel, that he may save my people out of the hand of the Philistines. For I have looked upon my people, because their cry is come unto me. And when Samuel saw Saul, the Lord said unto him, Behold the man who I spake to thee of, this same shall reign over my people. Then Saul drew near to Samuel in the gate, and said, Tell me, I pray thee, where the seer's house is. And Samuel answered Saul, and said, I am this seer. Go up before me unto the high place, for ye shall eat with me to-day. 
and tomorrow I will let thee go, and will tell thee all that is in thine heart. And as for thine asses that were lost three days ago, set not thy mind on them, for they are found. And on whom is all the desire of Israel? Is it not on thee, and on all thy father's house? And Saul answered, and said, Am I not a Benjamite of the smallest of the tribes of Israel? And my family the least of all the families of the tribe of Benjamin? Wherefore then speakest thou so to me? And Samuel took Saul and his servant, and brought them into the parlour, and made them sit in the chiefest place among them that were bidden, which were about thirty persons. And Samuel said unto the cook, Bring the portion which I gave thee, of which I said unto thee, Set it by thee. And the cook took up the shoulder, and that which was upon it, and set it before Saul. And Samuel said, Behold that which is left, set it before thee, and eat. For unto this time hath it been kept for thee, since I said, I have invited the people. So Saul did eat with Samuel that day. And when they were come down from the high place into the city, Samuel communed with Saul upon the top of the house. And they arose early, and it came to pass about the spring of the day that Samuel called Saul to the top of the house, saying, Up! that I may send thee away. And Saul arose, and they went out both of them, he and Samuel, abroad. And as they were going down to the end of the city, Samuel said to Saul, Bid the servant pass on before us. And he passed on. But stand thou still a while, that I may show thee the word of God. Then Samuel took a vial of oil, and poured it upon his head, and kissed him, and said, Is it not because the Lord hath anointed thee to be captain over his inheritance? When thou art departed from me to-day, then thou shalt find two men by Rachel's sepulchre in the border of Benjamin at Zelzah, and they will say unto thee, The asses which thou wentest to seek are found, and, lo, thy father hath left the care of the asses, and sorroweth for you, saying, What shall I do for my son? Then thou shalt go on forward from thence, and thou shalt come to the plain of Tabor, and there shall meet thee three men going up to God to Bethel, one carrying three kids, and another carrying three loaves of bread, and another carrying a bottle of wine. And they will salute thee, and give thee two loaves of bread, which thou shalt receive of their hands. After that thou shalt come to the hill of God, where is the garrison of the Philistines, and it shall come to pass, when thou art come thither to the city, that thou shalt meet a company of prophets coming down from the high place, with a psaltery, and a tabret, and a pipe, and a harp, before them, and they shall prophesy, and the Spirit of the Lord will come upon thee, and thou shalt prophesy with them, and shalt be turned into another man. And let it be, when these signs are come unto thee, that thou do as occasion serve thee, for God is with thee. And thou shalt go down before me to Gilgal, and behold, I will come down unto thee, to offer burnt offerings, and to sacrifice sacrifices of peace offerings. Seven days shalt thou tarry, till I come to thee, and show thee what thou shalt do. And it was so, that when he had turned his back to go from Samuel, God gave him another heart, and all those signs came to pass that day. And when they came thither to the hill, behold, a company of prophets met him, and the Spirit of God came upon him, and he prophesied among them. And it came to pass, when all that knew him before time saw that, behold, he prophesied among the prophets, then the people said one to another, What is this that is come unto the son of Kish? Is Saul also among the prophets? And one of the same place answered and said, But who is their father? Therefore it became a proverb, Is Saul also among the prophets? And when he had made an end of prophesying, he came to the high place. And Saul's uncle said unto him and to his servant, Whither went ye? And he said, To seek the asses, and when we saw that they were nowhere, we came to Samuel. And Saul's uncle said, Tell me, I pray thee, what Samuel said unto you. And Saul said unto his uncle, He told us plainly that the asses were found. But of the matter of the kingdom whereof Samuel spake, he told him not. And Samuel called the people together unto the Lord to Mizpah, and he said unto the children of Israel, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, I brought up Israel out of Egypt, and delivered you out of the hand of the Egyptians, and out of the hand of all kingdoms, and of them that oppressed you. And ye have this day rejected your God, who himself saved you out of all your adversities and your tribulations. And ye have said unto him, Nay, but set a king over us. Now therefore present yourselves before the Lord by your tribes, 
and by your thousands and when samuel had caused all the tribes of israel to come near the tribe of benjamin was taken and when he had caused the tribe of benjamin to come near by their families the family of matri was taken and saul the son of kish was taken and when they sought him he could not be found therefore they inquired of the lord further if the man should yet come thither and the lord answered behold he hath hid himself among the stuff and they ran and fetched him thence and when he stood among the people he was higher than any of the people from his shoulders and upward and samuel said to all the people see ye him whom the lord hath chosen that there is none like him among all the people and all the people shouted and said god save the king then samuel told the people the manner of the kingdom and wrote it in a book and laid it up before the lord and samuel sent all the people away every man to his house and saul went home to gibeah and there went with him a band of men whose hearts god had touched but the children of belial said how shall this man save us and they despised him and brought no presents but he held his peace then nahash the ammonite came up and encamped against jabesh gilead and all the men of jabesh said unto nahash make a covenant with us and we will serve thee and nahash the ammonite answered them on this condition will i make a covenant with you that i may thrust out all your right eyes and lay it for a reproach upon all israel and the elders of jabesh said unto him give us seven days respite that we may send messengers unto all the coasts of israel and then if there be no man to save us we will come out to thee then came the messengers to gibeah of saul and told the tidings in the ears of the people and all the people lifted up their voices and wept and behold saul came after the herd out of the field and saul said what aileth the people that they weep and they told him the tidings of the men of jabesh and the spirit of god came upon saul when he heard these tidings and his anger was kindled greatly and he took a yoke of oxen and hewed them in pieces and sent them throughout all the coasts of israel by the hands of messengers saying whoso cometh not forth after saul and after samuel so shall it be done unto his oxen and the fear of the lord fell on the people and they came out with one consent and when he numbered them in bezek the children of israel were three hundred thousand and the men of judah thirty thousand and they said unto the messengers that came thus shall ye say unto the men of jabesh gilead to-morrow by that time the sun be hot ye shall have help and the messengers came and showed it to the men of jabesh and they were glad therefore the men of jabesh said to-morrow we will come out unto you and ye shall do with us all that seemeth good unto you and it was so on the morrow that saul put the people in three companies and they came into the midst of the host in the morning watch and slew the ammonites until the heat of the day and it came to pass that they which remained were scattered so that two of them were not left together and the people said unto samuel who is he that said shall saul reign over us bring the men that we may put them to death and saul said there shall not a man be put to death this day for to-day the lord hath wrought salvation in israel then said samuel to the people come and let us go to gilgal and renew the kingdom there and all the people went to gilgal and there they made saul king before the lord in gilgal and there they sacrificed sacrifices of peace offerings before the lord and there saul and all the men of israel rejoiced greatly end of section twelve Section 13 of Dramatized Passages from the Old Testament. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Story of David, Part 1. From 1 Samuel, Chapters 17 to 20, King James Version. Narrated by Beth Thomas. David, read by Levi Throckmorton. Goliath, read by David Lotus. Jesse. Read by Trotza. Men of Israel, Servants. Read by Catherine. Saul. Read by Larry Wilson. Eliab. Read by Delphine Rolly. Abner. Read by Thomas Peter. Women. Read by Lydia. Jonathan. Read by Marianne. Michal. Read by Esther and Simonides. Now the Philistines gathered together their armies to battle, and were gathered together at Shokok which belongeth to Judah, and pitched between Shokok and Azekah in Ephesdamim. 
and saul and the men of israel were gathered together and pitched by the valley of elah and set the battle in array against the philistines and the philistines stood on a mountain on the one side and israel stood on a mountain on the other side and there was a valley between them and there went out a champion out of the camp of the philistines named goliath of gath whose height was six cubits and a span and he had an helmet of brass upon his head and he was armed with a coat of mail and the weight of the coat was five thousand shekels of brass and he had greaves of brass upon his legs and a target of brass between his shoulders and the staff of his spear was like a weaver's beam and his spear's head weighed six hundred shekels of iron and one bearing a shield went before him and he stood and cried unto the armies of israel and said unto them why are ye come out to set your battle in array am not i philistine and ye servants to saul choose you a man for you and let him come down to me if he be able to fight with me and to kill me then will we be your servants but if i prevail against him and kill him then shall ye be our servants and serve us and the philistine said i defy the armies of israel this day give me a man that we may fight together when saul and all israel heard those words of the philistine they were dismayed and greatly afraid now david was the son of that ephrathite bethlehem judah whose name was jesse and he had eight sons and the man went among men for an old man in the days of saul and the three eldest sons of jesse went and followed saul to the battle and the names of his three sons that went to the battle were eliab the firstborn and next unto him abinadab and the third shammah and david was the youngest and the three eldest followed saul but david went and returned from saul to feed his father's sheep at bethlehem and the philistine drew near morning and evening and presented himself forty days and jesse said unto david his son take now for thy brethren an ephah of this parched corn and these ten loaves and run to the camp of thy brethren and carry these ten cheeses unto the captain of their thousand and look how thy brethren fare and take their pledge now saul and they and all the men of israel were in the valley of elah fighting with the philistines and david rose up early in the morning and left the sheep with a keeper and took and went as jesse had commanded him and he came to the trench as the host was going forth to the fight and shouted for the battle for israel and the philistines had put the battle in array army against army and david left his carriage in the hand of the keeper of the carriage and ran into the army and came and saluted his brethren and as he talked with them behold there came up the champion the philistine of gath goliath by name out of the armies of the philistines and spake according to the same words and david heard them and all the men of israel when they saw the man fled from him and were sore afraid and the men of israel said have you seen this man that is come up surely to defy israel is he come up and it shall be that the man who killeth him the king will enrich him with great riches and will give him his daughter and make his father's house free in israel and david spake to the men that stood by him saying what shall be done to the man that killeth this philistine and taketh away the reproach from israel for who is this uncircumcised philistine that he should defy the armies of the living god and the people answered him after this manner saying so shall it be done to the man that killeth him and eliab his eldest brother heard when he spake unto the men and eliab's anger was kindled against david and he said why camest thou down hither and with whom hast thou left those few sheep in the wilderness i know thy pride and the naughtiness of thine heart for thou art come down that thou mightest see the battle and david said what have i now done is there not a cause and he turned from him toward another and spake after the same manner and the people answered him again after the former manner and when the words were heard which david spake they rehearsed them before saul and he sent for him and david said to saul let no man's heart fail because of him thy servant will go and fight with this philistine and saul said to david thou art not able to go against this philistine to fight with him for thou art but a youth 
and he a man of war from his youth and david said unto saul thy servant kept his father's sheep and there came a lion and a bear and took a lamb out of the flock and i went out after him and smote him and delivered it out of his mouth and when he arose against me i caught him by his beard and smote him and slew him thy servant slew both the lion and the bear and this uncircumcised philistine shall be as one of them seeing he hath defied the armies of the living god david said moreover the lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear he will deliver me out of the hand of this philistine and saul said unto david go and the lord be with thee and saul armed david with his armour and he put an helmet of brass upon his head also he armed him with a coat of mail and david girded his sword upon his armour and he assayed to go for he had not proved it and david said unto saul i cannot go with these for i have not proved them and david put them off him and he took his staff in his hand and chose him five smooth stones out of the brook and put them in a shepherd's bag which he had even in a scrip and his sling was in his hand and he drew near to the philistine and the philistine came on and drew near unto david and the man that bare the shield went before him and when the philistine looked about and saw david he disdained him for he was but a youth and ruddy and of a fair countenance and the philistine said unto david am i a dog that thou comest to me with staves and the philistine cursed david by his gods and the philistine said to david come to me and i will give thy flesh unto the fowls of the air and to the beasts of the field then said david to the philistine thou comest to me with a sword and with a spear and with a shield but i come to thee in the name of the lord of hosts the god of the armies of israel whom thou hast defied this day will the lord deliver thee into mine hand and i will smite thee and take thine head from thee and i will give the carcasses of the host of the philistines this day unto the fowls of the air and to the wild beasts of the earth that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. And all this assembly shall know that the Lord saveth not with sword and spear, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into our hands. And it came to pass, when the Philistine arose and came and drew nigh to meet David, that David hastened and ran toward the army to meet the Philistine. And David put his hand in his bag, and took thence a stone, and slung it, and smote the Philistine in his forehead, that the stone sunk into his forehead, and he fell upon his face to the earth. So David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and with a stone, and smote the Philistine and slew him. But there was no sword in the hand of David. Therefore David ran, and stood upon the Philistine, and took his sword, and drew it out of the sheath thereof and slew him, and cut off his head therewith. And when the Philistines saw their champion was dead, they fled. And the men of Israel and of Judah arose and shouted, and pursued the Philistines, until they came to the valley, and to the gates of Ekron. And the wounded of the Philistines fell down by the way to Sharaim, even unto Gath, and unto Ekron. And the children of Israel returned from chasing after the Philistines, and they spoiled their tents and david took the head of the philistine and brought it to jerusalem but he put his armour in his tent and when saul saw david go forth against the philistine he said unto abner the captain of the host abner whose son is this youth and abner said as thy soul liveth o king i cannot tell and the king said inquire thou whose son the stripling is and as David returned from the slaughter of the Philistine, Abner took him and brought him before Saul, with the head of the Philistine in his hand. And Saul said to him, Whose son art thou, thou young man? And David answered, I am the son of thy servant, Jesse the Bethlehemite. And it came to pass, when he had made an end of speaking unto Saul, that the soul of Jonathan was knit with the soul of David, and Jonathan loved him as his own soul and saul took him that day and would let him go no more home to his father's house then jonathan and david made a covenant because he loved him as his own soul and jonathan stripped himself of the robe that was upon him and gave it to david and his garments even to his sword and to his bow and to his girdle and david went out whithersoever saul sent him and behaved himself wisely and saul set him over the men of war and he was accepted in the sight of all the people and also in the sight of saul's servants 
and it came to pass as they came when david was returned from the slaughter of the philistine that the women came out of all the cities of israel singing and dancing to meet king saul with tabrets with joy and with instruments of music and the women answered one another as they played and said saul hath slain his thousands and david his ten thousands and saul was very wroth and the saying displeased him and he said they have ascribed unto david ten thousands and to me they have ascribed but thousands and what can he have more but the kingdom and saul eyed david from that day and forward and it came to pass on the morrow that the evil spirit from god came upon saul and he prophesied in the midst of the house and david played with his hand as at other times and there was a javelin in saul's hand and saul cast the javelin for he said i will smite david even to the wall with it and david avoided out of his presence twice and saul was afraid of david because the lord was with him and was departed from saul therefore saul removed him from him and made him his captain over a thousand and he went out and came in before the people and david behaved himself wisely in all his ways and the lord was with him wherefore when saul saw that he behaved himself wisely he was afraid of him but all israel and judah loved david because he went out and came in before them and saul said to david behold my elder daughter merab her will i give thee to wife only be thou valiant for me and fight the lord's battles for saul said let not mine hand be upon him but let the hand of the philistines be upon him and david said unto saul who am i and what is my life or my father's family in israel that i should be son-in-law to the king but it came to pass at the time when merab saul's daughter should have been given to david that she was given unto adriel the maholathite to wife and michal saul's daughter loved david and they told saul and the thing pleased him and saul said i will give him her that she may be a snare to him and that the hand of the philistines may be against him wherefore saul said to david thou shalt this day be my son-in-law in the one of the twain and saul commanded his servant saying commune with david secretly and say behold the king hath delight in thee and all his servants love thee now therefore be the king's son-in-law and saul's servant spake these words in the ears of david and david said seemeth it to you a light thing to be a king's son-in-law seeing that i am a poor man and lightly esteemed and the servants of saul told him saying on this manner spake david and saul said thus shall ye say to david the king desireth not any dowry but an hundred foreskins of the philistines to be avenged of the king's enemies but saul thought to make david fall by the hand of the philistines and when his servants told david these words it pleased david well to be the king's son-in-law and the days were not expired wherefore david arose and went he and his men and slew of the philistines two hundred men and david brought their foreskins and gave them in full tale to the king that he might be the king's son-in-law and saul gave him michal his daughter to wife and saul saw and knew that the lord was with david and that michal saul's daughter loved him and saul was yet more afraid of david and saul became david's enemy continually then the princes of the philistines went forth and it came to pass after they went forth that david behaved himself more wisely than all the servants of saul so that his name was much set by and saul spake to jonathan his son and to all his servants that they should kill david but jonathan saul's son delighted much in david and jonathan told david saying saul my father seeketh to kill thee now therefore i pray thee take heed to thyself until the morning and abide in a secret place and hide thyself and i will go out and stand beside my father in the field where thou art and i will commune with my father of thee and what i see i will tell thee and jonathan spake good of david unto saul his father and said unto him let not the king sin against his servant against david because he hath not sinned against thee, and because his works have been to thee word very good. For he did put his life in his hand, and slew the Philistine, and the Lord wrought a great salvation for all Israel. Thou sawest it, and did rejoice. 
wherefore then wilt thou sin against innocent blood to slay david without a cause and saul hearkened unto the voice of jonathan and saul sware as the lord liveth he shall not be slain and jonathan called david and jonathan showed him all these things and jonathan brought david to saul and he was in his presence as in times past and there was war again and david went out and fought with the philistines and slew them with a great slaughter and they fled from him and the evil spirit from the lord was upon saul as he sat in his house with his javelin in his hand and david played with his hand and saul sought to smite david even to the wall with the javelin but he slipped away out of saul's presence and he smote the javelin into the wall and david fled and escaped that night saul also sent messengers unto david's house to watch him and to slay him in the morning and michal david's wife told him saying if thou save not thy life to-night to-morrow thou shalt be slain so michal let david down through a window and he went and fled and escaped and michal took an image and laid it in the bed and put a pillow of goat's hair for his bolster and covered it with a cloth and when saul sent messengers to take david she said he is sick and saul sent the messengers again to see david saying bring him up to me in the bed that i may slay him and when the messengers were come in behold there was an image in the bed with a pillow of goat's hair for his bolster and saul said unto michal why hast thou deceived me so and sent away mine enemy that he has escaped and michal answered saul he said unto me let me go why should i kill thee so david fled and escaped and came to samuel in ramah and told him all that saul had done to him and he and samuel went and dwelt in naioth and it was told saul saying behold david is at naioth in ramah and saul sent messengers to take david and when they saw the company of the prophets prophesying and samuel standing as appointed over them the spirit of god was upon the messengers of saul and they also prophesied and when it was told saul he sent other messengers and they prophesied likewise and saul sent messengers again the third time and they prophesied also then went he also to ramah and came to a great well that is in setu and he asked and said where are samuel and david and one said behold they be at naioth in ramah and he went thither to naioth in ramah and the spirit of god was upon him also and he went on and prophesied until he came to naioth in ramah and he stripped off his clothes also and prophesied before samuel in like manner and lay down naked all that day and all that night wherefore they say is saul also among the prophets and david fled from naioth in ramah and came and said before jonathan what have i done what is mine iniquity and what is my sin before thy father that he seeketh my life and he said unto him god forbid thou shalt not die behold my father will do nothing either great or small but that he will show it me and why should my father hide this thing from me it is not so and david sware moreover and said thy father certainly knoweth that i have found grace in thine eyes and he saith let not jonathan know this lest he be grieved but truly as the lord liveth and as thy soul liveth there is but a step between me and death then said jonathan unto david whatsoever thou soul desirest i will even do it for thee and david said unto jonathan behold to-morrow is the new moon and i should not fail to sit with the king at meat but let me go that i may hide myself in the field unto the third day at even if thy father at all miss me then say david earnestly asked leave of me that he might run to bethlehem his city for there is a yearly sacrifice there for all the family if he say thus it is well thy servant shall have peace but if he be very wroth then be sure that evil is determined by him therefore thou shalt deal kindly with thy servant for thou hast brought thy servant into a covenant of the lord with thee notwithstanding if there be in me iniquity slay me thyself for why shouldst thou bring me to thy father and jonathan said far be it from thee for if i knew certainly that evil were determined by my father to come upon thee then would i not tell it thee then said david to jonathan who shall tell me or what if thy father answer thee roughly and jonathan said unto david come and let us go out into the field and they went out both of them into the field and jonathan said unto david o lord god of israel 
when i have sounded my father about to-morrow or any time or the third day and behold if there be good toward david and i then send not unto thee and show it thee the lord do so and much more to jonathan but if it please my father to do thee evil then i will show it thee and send thee away that thou mayest go in peace and the lord be with thee as he hath been with my father and thou shalt not only while yet i live show me the kindness of the lord that i die not but also thou shalt not cut off thy kindness from my house for ever no not when the lord hath cut off the enemies of david every one from the face of the earth so jonathan made a covenant with the house of david saying let the lord even require it at the hands of david's enemies and jonathan caused david to swear again because he loved him for he loved him as he loved his own soul then jonathan said to david to-morrow is the new moon and thou shalt be missed because thy seat will be empty and when thou hast stayed three days then thou shalt go down quickly and come to the place where thou didst hide thyself when the business was in hand and shalt remain by the stone easel and i will shoot three arrows on the side thereof as though i shot at a mark and behold i will send a lad saying go find out the arrows if i expressly say unto the lad behold the arrows are on this side of thee take them then come thou for there is peace to thee and no hurt as the lord liveth but if i say to the young man behold the arrows are beyond thee go thy way for the lord hath sent thee away and as touching the matter which thou and i have spoken of behold the lord be between thee and me for ever so david hid himself in the field and when the new moon was come the king sat him down to eat meat and the king sat upon his seat as at other times even upon a seat by the wall and jonathan arose and abner sat by saul's side and david's place was empty nevertheless saul spake not anything that day for he thought something hath befallen him he is not clean surely he is not clean and it came to pass on the morrow which was the second day of the month that david's place was empty and saul said unto jonathan his son wherefore cometh not the son of jesse to meet neither yesterday nor to-day and jonathan answered saul david earnestly asked leave of me to go to bethlehem and he said let me go i pray thee for our family hath a sacrifice in the city and my brother he hath commanded me to be there and now if i have found favour in thine eyes let me get away i pray thee and see my brethren therefore he cometh not unto the king's table then saul's anger was kindled against jonathan and he said unto him thou son of the perverse rebellious woman do not i know that thou hast chosen the son of jesse to thine own confusion and unto the confusion of thy mother's nakedness for as long as the son of jesse liveth upon the ground thou shalt not be established nor thy kingdom wherefore now send and fetch him unto me for he shall surely die and jonathan answered saul his father and said unto him wherefore shall he be slain what hath he done and saul cast a javelin at him to smite him whereby jonathan knew that it was determined of his father to slay david so jonathan arose from the table in fierce anger and did eat no meat the second day of the month for he was grieved for david because his father had done him shame and it came to pass in the morning that jonathan went out into the field at the time appointed with david and a little lad with him and he said unto his lad run find out the arrows which i shoot and as the lad ran he shot an arrow beyond him and when the lad was come to the place of the arrow which jonathan had shot jonathan cried after the lad and said is not the arrow beyond thee and jonathan cried after the lad make speed haste stay not and jonathan's lad gathered up the arrows and came to his master but the lad knew not anything only david and jonathan knew the matter and jonathan gave his artillery unto his lad and said unto him go carry them to the city as soon as the lad was gone david arose out of a place toward the south and fell on his face to the ground and bowed himself three times and they kissed one another and wept with one another until david exceeded and jonathan said to david go in peace 
forasmuch as we have both sworn of us in the name of the lord saying the lord be between me and thee and between my seed and thy seed for ever and he arose and departed and jonathan went into the city end of section thirteen Section 14 of Dramatized Bible Passages from the Old Testament. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Story of David, Part 2, from 1 Samuel, Chapters 21-26, to King James Version. Narrated by Beth Thomas. David, read by Levi Throckmorton. Ziphites, read by Lydia. Saul, read by Larry Wilson. Nabal, read by Eddie Shemin. Men of Israel, servants, read by Catherine. God, read by David Olson. Dueg, the Edomite, read by David Olson. David's Men, read by Delta Pinrolis. Ahimelech, read by E. Snow. Akish, read by Sonia. Abner, read by Thomas Peter. Abigail, read by Esther ben Simonides. Then came David to Nob, to Ahimelech the priest. And Ahimelech was afraid at the meeting of David, and said unto him, Why art thou alone, no man with thee? And David said unto Ahimelech the priest, The king hath commanded me a business, and hath said unto me, Let no man know anything of the business whereabout I send thee, and what I have commanded thee. And I have appointed my servants to such and such a place. Now therefore, what is under thine hand? Give me five loaves of bread in mine hand, or what there is present. And the priest answered David, and said, There is no common bread under mine hand, but there is hallowed bread, if the young men have kept themselves at least from women. And David answered the priest, and said unto him, Of a truth, women have been kept from us about these three days, since I came out, and the vessels of the young men are holy, and the bread is in a manner common, yea, though it were sanctified this day in the vessel. So the priest gave him hallowed bread, for there was no bread there but the shewbread that was taken from before the Lord, to put hot bread in the day when it was taken away. Now a certain man of the servants of Saul was there that day, detained before the Lord, and his name was Doeg, an Edomite, the chiefest of the herdsmen that belonged to Saul. And David said unto Ahimelech, And is there not here under thine hand spear or sword? For I have neither brought my sword nor my weapons with me, because the king's business required haste. And the priest said, The sword of Goliath the Philistine, whom thou slewest in the valley of Elah, behold, it is here wrapped in a cloth behind the ephod. If thou wilt take that, take it, for there is no other save that here. And David said, There is none like that. Give it to me. And David arose and fled that day for fear of Saul, and went to Achish the king of Gath. And the servants of Achish said unto him, Is not this David the king of the land? Did they not sing one to another of him in dances, saying, Saul hath slain his thousands, and David his ten thousands? And David laid up these words in his heart, and was sore afraid of Achish the king of Gath. And he changed his behaviour before them, and feigned himself mad in their hands, and scrabbled on the doors of the gate, and let his spittle fall down upon his beard then said achish unto his servants lo ye see the man is mad wherefore then have you brought him to me have i need of madman that ye have brought this fellow to play the madman in my presence shall this fellow come into my house david therefore departed thence and escaped to the cave adullam and when his brethren and all his father's house heard it they went down thither to him and every one that was in distress and every one that was in debt and every one that was discontented gathered themselves unto him. And he became a captain over them, and there were with him about four hundred men. And David went thence to Mizpah of Moab, and he said unto the king of Moab, Let my father and my mother, I pray thee, come forth, and be with you, till I know what God will do for me. And he brought them before the king of Moab, and they dwelt with him all the while that David was in the hold. And the prophet Gad said unto David, Abide not in the hold, depart, and get thee into the land of Judah. Then David departed, and came into the forest of Harith. 
when saul heard that david was discovered and the men that were with him now saul abode in gibeah under a tree in ramah having his spear in his hand and all his servants were standing about him then saul said unto his servants that stood about him hear now ye benjamites will the son of jesse give every one of you fields and vineyards and make you all captains of thousands and captains of hundreds that all of you have conspired against me and there is none that showeth me that my son hath made a league with the son of jesse and there is none of you that is sorry for me or showeth unto me that my son hath stirred up my servant against me to lie in wait as at this day then answered doeg the edomite which was set over the servants of saul and said i saw the son of jesse coming to nob to ahimelech the son of ahitab and he inquired of the lord for him and gave him victuals and gave him the sword of goliath the philistine then the king sent to call ahimelech the priest the son of ahitub and all his father's house the priests that were in nob and they came all of them to the king and saul said hear now thou son of ahitub and he answered i am here my lord and saul said unto him why have ye conspired against me thou and the son of jesse in that thou hast given him bread and a sword and hast inquired of god for him that he should rise against me to lie in wait as at this day then ahimelech answered the king and said and who is so faithful among all thy servants as david which the king's son-in-law goeth thy bidding and is honourable in thine house did i then begin to inquire of the lord for him be it far from me let not the king impute anything unto his servant not all the health of my father for thy servant knew nothing of all this this or more and the king said thou shalt surely die ahimelech thou and all thy father's house and the king said unto the footmen that stood about him turn and slay the priests of the lord because their hand also is with david and because they knew when he fled and did not show it to me but the servants of the king would not put forth their hand to fall upon the priests of the lord and the king said to doeg turn thou and fall upon the priests and doeg the edomite turned and he fell upon the priests and slew on that day fourscore and five persons that did wear a linen ephod and nob the city of the priests smote he with the edge of the sword both men and women children and sucklings and oxen and asses and sheep with the edge of the sword and one of the sons of ahimelech the son of ahitub named abiathar escaped and fled after david and abiathar showed david that saul had slain the lord's priests and david said unto abiathar i knew it that day when dug the edomite was there that he would surely tell saul i have occasioned the death of all the persons of thy father's house abide thou with me fear not for he that seeketh my life seeketh thy life but with me thou shalt be in safeguard then they told david saying behold the philistines fight against Keilah, and they rob the threshing floors therefore david inquired of the lord saying shall i go and smite these philistines and the lord said unto david go and smite the philistines and save Keilah." and david's men said unto him behold we be afraid here in judah how much more than if we come to kela against the armies of the philistines then david inquired of the lord yet again and the lord answered him and said arise go down to kela for i will deliver the philistines into thine hand so david and his men went to kela and fought with the philistines and brought away their cattle and smote them with a great slaughter so david saved the inhabitants of kela and it came to pass when abiathar the son of ahimelech fled to david to kila that he came down with an ephod in his hand and it was told saul that david was come to kila and saul said god hath delivered him into mine hand for he is shut in by entering into a town that hath gates and bars and saul called all the people together to war to go down to kila to besiege david and his men and david knew that saul secretly practised mischief against him and he said to abiathar the priest bring hither the ephod then said david o lord god of israel thy servant hath certainly heard that saul seeketh to come to keilah to destroy the city for my sake will the men of keilah deliver me up into his hand 
Will Saul come down, as thy servant hath heard? O Lord God of Israel, I beseech thee, tell thy servant. And the Lord said, He will come down. Then said David, Will the men of Keilah deliver me and my men into the hand of Saul? And the Lord said, They will deliver thee up. Then David and his men, which were about six hundred, arose and departed out of Keilah, and went whithersoever they could go. And it was told Saul that David was escaped from Keilah, and he forbore to go forth. And David abode in the wilderness in strongholds, and remained in a mountain in the wilderness of Ziph. And Saul sought him every day, but God delivered him not into his hand. And David saw that Saul had come out to seek his life. And David was in the wilderness of Ziph in a wood. And Jonathan, Saul's son, arose and went to David into the wood, and strengthened his hand in God. And he said unto him, Fear not, for the hand of Saul my father shall not find thee, and thou shalt be king over Israel, and I shall be next unto thee, and that also Saul my father knoweth. And they two made a covenant before the Lord, and David abode in the wood, and Jonathan went to his house. Then came up the Ziphites to Saul and Gibeah, saying, Doth not David hide himself with us in strongholds in the wood, in the hill of Hastila, which is on the south of Jeshimon? Now therefore, O king, come down according to all the desire of thy soul to come down, and our part shall be to deliver him into the king's hand. And Saul said, Blessed be ye of the Lord, for ye have compassion on me. Go, I pray you, prepare yet, and know and see his place where his haunt is, and who hath seen him there. For it is told me that he dealeth very subtly. See therefore, and take knowledge of all the lurking places where he hideth himself. And come again to me with the certainty, and I will go with you. And it shall come to pass, if he be in the land, that I will search him out throughout all the thousands of Judah. And they arose and went to Ziph before Saul. But David and his men were in the wilderness of Maon, in the plain on the south of Jeshimon. Saul also and his men went to seek him. And they told David, wherefore he came down into a rock, and abode in the wilderness of Maon. And when Saul heard that, he pursued after David in the wilderness of Maon. And Saul went on this side of the mountain, and David and his men on that side of the mountain. And David made haste to get away for fear of Saul, for Saul and his men compassed David and his men round about to take them. But there came a messenger unto Saul, saying, Haste thee and come, for the Philistines have invaded the land. Wherefore Saul returned from pursuing after David, and went against the Philistines. Therefore they called that place Selahamalekoth. And David went up from thence, and dwelt in the strongholds at Engedi. And it came to pass, when Saul was returned from following the Philistines, that it was told to him, saying, Behold, David is in the wilderness of Engedi. Then Saul took three thousand chosen men out of all Israel, and went to seek David and his men upon the rocks of the wild goats. And he came to the sheepcoats by the way, where was a cave. And Saul went in to cover his feet. And David and his men remained in the sides of the cave. And the men of David said unto him, Behold the day of which the Lord has said unto thee, Behold, I will deliver thine enemy into thine hand, that thou mayest do to him as it shall seem good unto thee. And David arose and cut off the skirt of Saul's robe privily. And it came to pass afterwards that David's heart smote him, because he had cut off Saul's skirt. And he said unto his men, The Lord forbid that I should do this thing unto my master, the Lord's anointed, to stretch forth mine hand against him, seeing he is the anointed of the Lord. So David stayed his servants with these words, and suffered them not to rise against Saul. But Saul rose up out of the cave and went on his way. David also arose afterward, and went out of the cave, and cried after Saul, saying, My lord, the king! And when Saul looked behind him, David stooped with his face to the earth, and bowed himself, and David said to Saul, Wherefore hearest thou men's words, saying, Behold, David seeketh thy hurt? Behold, this day thine eyes have seen how that the Lord had delivered thee to-day into mine hand in the cave. And some bade me kill thee, but mine eye spared thee. And I said, I will not put forth mine hand against my Lord, for he is the Lord's anointed. Moreover, my father, see, yea, see the skirt of thy robe in my hand. For in that I cut off the skirt of thy robe, and killed thee not. Know thou, and see that there is neither evil nor transgression in mine hand, and I have not sinned against thee. 
yet thou huntest my soul to take it. The Lord judge between me and thee, and the Lord avenge me of thee, but mine hand shall not be upon thee. As saith the proverb of the ancients, Wickedness proceedeth from the wicked, but mine hand shall not be upon thee. After whom is the king of Israel come out? After whom dost thou pursue? After a dead dog, after a flea. The Lord therefore be judge, and judge between me and thee, and see, and plead my cause, and deliver me out of thine hand. And it came to pass, when David had made an end of speaking these words unto Saul, that Saul said, Is this thy voice, my son David? And Saul lifted up his voice and wept. And he said to David, Thou art more righteous than I, for thou hast rewarded me good, whereas I have rewarded thee evil. And thou hast showed me this day how that thou hast dealt with me, forasmuch as when the Lord had delivered me into thine hand, thou killest me not. For if a man find his enemy, will he let him go well away? Wherefore the Lord reward thee good, for that thou hast done unto me this day. And now, behold, I know well that thou shalt surely be king, and that the kingdom of Israel shall be established in thine hand. Swear now therefore unto me by the Lord, that thou wilt not cut off my seed after me, and that thou wilt not destroy my name out of my father's house. And David sware unto Saul, and Saul went home, but David and his men got them up unto the hold. And Samuel died, and all the Israelites were gathered together and lamented him, and buried him in his house at Ramah. And David arose and went down to the wilderness of Paran. And there was a man in Maon, whose possessions were in Carmel, and the man was very great, and he had three thousand sheep and a thousand goats, and he was shearing his sheep in Carmel. Now the name of the man was Nabal, and the name of his wife Abigail. And she was a woman of good understanding and of a beautiful countenance. But the man was churlish and evil in his doings, and he was of the house of Caleb. And David heard in the wilderness that Nabal did shear his sheep. And David sent out ten young men. And David said unto the young men, Get you up to Carmel, and go to Nabal, and greet him in my name. And thus shall ye say to him that liveth in prosperity, Peace be both to thee, and peace be to thine house, and peace be unto all that thou hast. And now I have heard that thou hast shearers. Now thy shepherds which were with us, we hurt them not, neither was there aught missing unto them, all the while they were in Carmel. Ask thy young men, and they will shew thee. Wherefore let the young men find favour in thine eyes, for we come in a good day. Give, I pray thee, whatsoever cometh to thine hand unto thy servants, and to thy son David. And when David's young men came, they spake to Nabal according to all the words in the name of David, and ceased. And Nabal answered David's servants, and said, Who is David, and who is the son of Jesse? There be many servants nowadays, that break all every man from his master shall i then take my bread and my water and my flesh that i have killed for my shares and give it unto men whom i know not whence they be so david's young men turned their way and went again and came and told him all those sayings and david said unto his men gird ye on every man his sword and they girded on every man his sword and david also girded on his sword and there went up after david about four hundred men and two hundred abode by the stuff but one of the young men told Abigail, Nabal's wife, saying, Behold, David sent messengers out of the wilderness to salute our master, and he railed on them. But the men were very good unto us, and we were not hurt, neither missed we anything, as long as we were conversant with them, when we were in the fields. They were a wall unto us, both by night and day, all the while while we were with them keeping the sheep. Now, therefore, know and consider what thou wilt do, for evil is determined against our master and against all his household. For he is such a son of Belial that a man cannot speak to him. Then Abigail made haste, and took two hundred loaves and two bottles of wine, and five sheep ready dressed, and five measures of parched corn, and an hundred clusters of raisins, and two hundred cakes of figs, and laid them on asses. And she said unto her servants, Go on before me. Behold, I come after you. But she told not her husband Nabal. 
and it was so as she rode on the ass that she came down by the covert on the hill and behold david and his men came down against her and she met them now david had said surely in vain have i kept all that this fellow hath in the wilderness so that nothing was missed of all that pertained unto him and he hath requited me evil for good so and more also do god unto the enemies of david if i leave of all that pertained to him by the morning light any that pisseth against the wall and when abigail saw david she hasted and lighted off the ass and fell before david on her face and bowed herself to the ground and fell at his feet and said upon me my lord upon me let this iniquity be and let thine handmaid i pray thee speak in thine audience and hear the words of thine handmaid let not my lord i pray thee regard this man of belial even nabal for as his name is so is he nabal is his name and folly is with him but i thine handmaid saw not the young men of my lord whom thou didst send now therefore my lord as the lord liveth and as thy soul liveth seeing the lord hath withholden thee from coming to shed blood and from avenging thyself with thine own hand let now thine enemies and they that seek evil to my lord be as nabal and now this blessing which thine handmaid hath brought unto my lord let it even be given unto the young man that follow my lord i pray thee forgive the trespass of thine handmaid for the lord will certainly make my lord a sure house because my lord fighteth the battles of the lord and evil hath not been found in thee all thy days yet a man is risen to pursue thee and to seek thy soul but the soul of my lord shall be bound in the bundle of life with the lord thy god and the souls of thine enemies them shall he sling out as out of the middle of the sling and it shall come to pass when the lord shall have done to my lord according to all the good that he has spoken concerning me and shall have appointed thee ruler over israel that this shall be no grief unto thee nor offence of heart unto my lord either that thou hast shed blood causeless or that my lord hath avenged himself but when the lord shall have dealt well with my lord then remember thine handmaid and david said to abigail blessed be the lord god of israel which sent thee this day to meet me and blessed be thy advice and blessed be thou which hast kept me this day from coming to shed blood and from avenging myself with mine own hand for in very deed as the lord god of israel liveth which hath kept me back from hurting thee except thou hadst hasted and come to meet me surely there had not been left unto nabal by the morning light any that pisseth against the wall so david received of her hand that which she had brought him and said unto her go up in peace to thine house see i have hearkened to thy voice and have accepted thy person and abigail came to nabal and behold he held a feast in his house like the feast of a king and nabal's heart was merry within him for he was very drunken wherefore she told him nothing less or more until the morning light but it came to pass in the morning when the wine was gone out of nabal and his wife had told him these things that his heart died within him and he became as a stone and it came to pass about ten days after that the lord smote nabal and he died and when david heard that nabal was dead he said blessed be the lord that hath pleaded the cause of my reproach from the hand of nabal and hath kept his servant from evil for the lord hath returned the wickedness of nabal upon his own head and david sent and communed with abigail to take her to him to wife and when the servants of david were come to abigail to carmel they spake unto her saying david sent us unto thee to take thee to him to wife and she arose and bowed herself on her face to the earth and said behold let thine handmaid be a servant to wash the feet of the servants of my lord and abigail hasted and arose and rode upon an ass with five damsels of hers that went after her and she went after the messengers of david and became his wife david also took ahinoam of jezreel and they were also both of them his wives but saul had given michal his daughter david's wife to falti the son of laish which was of galim and the ziphites came unto saul to gibeah saying doth not david hide himself in the hill of hachilah which is before jeshimah then saul arose and went down to the wilderness of ziph having three thousand chosen men of israel with him to seek david in the wilderness of ziph and saul pitched in the hill of hachilah which is before jeshimon by the way but david abode in the wilderness and he saw that saul came after him into the wilderness david therefore sent out spies and understood that saul was come in very deed and david arose and came to the place where saul had pitched and david beheld the place where saul lay and abner the son of ner the captain of his host and saul lay in the trench and the people pitched round about him then answered david and said to ahimelech the hittite and to abishai the son of zeruiah brother to joab saying who will go down with me to saul to the camp i will go down with thee 
So David and Abishai came to the people by night, and behold, Saul lay sleeping within the trench, and his spear stuck in the ground at his bolster. But Abner and the people lay round about him. Then said Abishai to David, God hath delivered thine enemy into thine hand this day. Now therefore let me spite him, I pray thee, with the spear even to the earth at once, and I will not smite him the second time. And David said to Abishai, Destroy him not, for who can stretch forth his hand against the Lord's anointed, and be guiltless? David said furthermore, As the Lord liveth, the Lord shall smite him, or his day shall come to die, or he shall descend into battle and perish. The Lord forbid that I should stretch forth mine hand against the Lord's anointed. But, I pray thee, take thou now the spear that is at his bolster, and the cruse of water, and let us go. So David took the spear and the cruse of water from Saul's bolster, and they got them away, and no man saw it nor knew it, neither awaked, for they were all asleep, because a deep sleep from the Lord was fallen upon them. Then David went over to the other side, and stood on the top of a hill afar off, a great space being between them. And David cried to the people, and to Abner the son of Ner, saying, Answerest thou not, Abner? Then Abner answered, and said, Who art thou that criest to the king? And David said to Abner, Art not thou a valiant man? And who is like to thee in Israel? Wherefore then hast thou not kept thy lord the king? For there came one of the people in to destroy the king thy lord. This thing is not good that thou hast done. As the Lord liveth ye are worthy to die, because ye have not kept your master the Lord's anointed. And now see where the king's spear is, and the cruse of water that was at his bolster. And Saul knew David's voice, and said, Is this thy voice, my son David? And David said, It is my voice, my lord, O king. And he said, Wherefore doth my lord thus pursue after his servant? For what have I done, or what evil is in mine hand? Now therefore I pray thee, let my lord the king hear the words of his servant. If the Lord have stirred thee up against me, let him accept an offering. But if they be the children of men, cursed be they before the Lord. For they have driven me out this day from abiding in the inheritance of the Lord, saying, Go, serve other gods. Now therefore let not my blood fall to the earth before the face of the Lord. For the king of Israel is come out to seek a flea, as when one doth hunt a partridge in the mountains. Then said Saul, I have sinned. Return, my son David, for I will no more do thee harm, because my soul was precious in thine eyes this day. Behold, I have played the fool, and have erred exceedingly. And David answered and said, Behold, the king's spear, and let one of the young men come over and fetch it. The Lord render to every man his righteousness and his faithfulness, for the Lord delivered thee into my hand today but I would not stretch forth mine hand against the Lord's anointed. And behold, as thy life was much set by this day in mine eyes, so let my life be much set by in the eyes of the Lord, and let him deliver me out of all tribulation. Then said Saul to David, Blessed be thou, my son David. Thou shalt both do great things, and also shall still prevail. So David went on his way, and Saul returned to his place. End of section 14. Section 15 of Dramatized Bible Passages from the Old Testament. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Story of David, Part 3, from Second Samuel, Chapters 5 to 12, King James Version. Narrated by Beth Thomas. Seba, read by Christine G. Uriah, read by James Curran. Princes of Amman, read by Marianne. Nathan, read by Anne Finwin. Michael, read by Esther Ben Simonides. Mephibosheth, read by Lydia. Men of Israel, read by Catherine. Joab, read by Thomas Peter. Jebusites, read by Dalde Pignoles. God, read by David Olson. David, Read by Levi Throckmorton. Bathsheba. Read by Bethany Baldwin. Then came all the tribes of Israel to David unto Hebron, and spake, saying, Behold, we are thy bone and thy flesh, also in time past, when Saul was king over us. Thou wast he that ledest out and broughtest in Israel. 
and the lord said to thee thou shalt feed my people israel and thou shalt be a captain over israel so all the elders of israel came to the king to hebron and king david made a league with them in hebron before the lord and they anointed david king over israel david was thirty years old when he began to reign and he reigned forty years in hebron he reigned over judah seven years and six months and in jerusalem he reigned thirty and three years over all israel and judah and the king and his men went to jerusalem unto the jebusites the inhabitants of the land which spake unto david saying except thou take away the blind and the lame thou shalt not come in hither thinking david cannot come in hither nevertheless david took the stronghold of zion the same is the city of david and david said on that day whosoever getteth up to the gutter and smiteth the jebusites and the lame and the blind that are hated of david's soul he shall be chief and captain wherefore they said the blind and the lame shall not come into the house so david dwelt in the fort and called it the city of david and david built round about from millo and inward and david went on and grew great and the lord god of hosts was with him and hiram king of tyre sent messengers to david and cedar trees and carpenters and masons and they built david a house and david perceived that the lord had established him king over israel and that he had exalted his kingdom for his people israel's sake and david took him more concubines and wives out of jerusalem after he was come from hebron and there were yet sons and daughters born to david and these be the names of those that were born unto him in jerusalem shamua and shobab and nathan and solomon ibha also and elishua and nepheg and japhia and elishama and eliada and eliphalet but when the philistines heard that they had anointed david king over israel all the philistines came up to seek david and david heard of it and went down to the hold the philistines also came and spread themselves in the valley of rephaim and david inquired of the lord saying shall i go up to the philistines wilt thou deliver them into mine hand and the lord said unto david go up for i will doubtless deliver the philistines into thine hand and david came to baal perazim and david smote them there and said the lord hath broken forth upon mine enemies before me as the breach of waters therefore he called the name of that place baal perazim and there they left their images and david and his men burned them and the philistines came up yet again and spread themselves in the valley of rephaim and when david inquired of the lord he said thou shalt not go up but fetch a compass behind them and come upon them over against the mulberry trees and let it be when thou hearest the sound of a going in the tops of the mulberry trees that then thou shalt bestir thyself for then shall the lord go out before thee to smite the host of the philistines and david did so as the lord had commanded him and smote the philistines from geba until thou come to gaza again david gathered together all the chosen men of israel thirty thousand and david arose and went with all the people that were with him from baal of judah to bring up from thence the ark of god whose name is called by the name of the lord of hosts that dwelleth between the cherubims and they set the ark of god upon a new cart and brought it out of the house of abinadab that was in gibeah and uzzah and ahio the sons of abinadab drave the new cart and they brought it out of the house of abinadab which was at gibeah accompanying the ark of god and ahio went before the ark and david and all the house of israel played before the lord on all manner of instruments made of fir wood even on harps and psalteries and on timbrels and on cornets and on cymbals and when they came to nakon's threshing-floor uzzah put forth his hand to the ark of god and took hold of it for the oxen shook it and the anger of the lord was kindled against uzzah and god smote him there for his error and there he died by the ark of god and david was displeased because the lord had made a breach upon uzzah and he called the name of the place perazuzah to this day and david was afraid of the lord that day and said how shall the ark of the lord come to me so david would not remove the ark of the lord unto him into the city of david but david carried it aside into the house of obededom the gittite and the ark of the lord continued in the house of obededom the gittite three months and the lord blessed obededom and all his household 
and it was told king david saying the lord hath blessed the house of obdedom and all that pertaineth unto him because of the ark of god so david went and brought up the ark of god from the house of obededom into the city of david with gladness and it was so that when they that bare the ark of the lord had gone six paces he sacrificed oxen and fatlings and david danced before the lord with all his might and david was girded with a linen ephod so david and all the house of israel brought up the ark of the lord with shouting and with the sound of the trumpet and as the ark of the lord came into the city of david michal saul's daughter looked through a window and saw king david leaping and dancing before the lord and she despised him in her heart and they brought in the ark of the lord and set it in his place in the midst of the tabernacle that david had pitched for it and david offered burnt offerings and peace offerings before the lord and as soon as david had made an end of offering burnt offerings and peace offerings he blessed the people in the name of the lord of hosts and he dealt among all the people even among the whole multitude of israel as well to the women as men to every one a cake of bread and a good piece of flesh and a flagon of wine so all the people departed every one to his house then david returned to bless his household and michal the daughter of saul came out to meet david and said how glorious was the king of israel to-day who uncovered himself to-day in the eyes of the handmaids of his servant as one of the vain fellows shamelessly uncovereth himself and david said unto michal it was before the lord which chose me before thy father and before all his house to appoint me ruler over the people of the lord over israel therefore will i play before the lord and i will yet be more vile than thus and will be base in mine own sight and of the maidservants which thou hast spoken of of them shall i be had in honour therefore michal the daughter of saul had no child unto the day of her death and it came to pass when the king sat in his house and the lord had given him rest round about from all his enemies that the king said unto nathan the prophet see now i dwell in a house of cedar but the ark of god dwelleth within curtains and nathan said to the king go to all that is in thine heart for the lord is with thee and it came to pass that night that the word of the lord came unto nathan saying go and tell my servant david thus saith the lord shalt thou build me a house for me to dwell in whereas i have not dwelt in any house since the time that i brought up the children of israel out of egypt even to this day but have walked in a tent and in a tabernacle in all the places wherein i have walked with all the children of israel spake i a word with any of the tribes of israel whom i commanded to feed my people israel saying why build ye not me a house of cedar now therefore so shalt thou say unto my servant david thus saith the lord of hosts i took thee from the sheepcote from following the sheep to be ruler over my people over israel and i was with thee whithersoever thou wentest and have cut off all thine enemies out of thy sight and have made thee a great name like unto the name of the great men that are in the earth moreover I will appoint a place for my people Israel, and will plant them, that they may dwell in a place of their own, and move no more. Neither shall the children of wickedness afflict them any more as before time. And as since that time that I commanded judges to be over my people Israel, and have caused thee to rest from all thine enemies, also the lord telleth thee that he will make thee a house and when thy days be fulfilled and thou shalt sleep with thy fathers i will set up thy seed after thee which shall proceed out of thy bowels and i will establish his kingdom he shall build a house for my name and i will establish the throne of his kingdom forever I will be his father, and he shall be my son. 
if he commit iniquity i will chasten him with the rod of men and with the stripes of the children of men but my mercy shall not depart away from him as i took it from saul whom i put away before thee and thine house and thy kingdom shall be established for ever before thee thy throne shall be established forever according to all these words and according to all this vision so did nathan speak unto david then went king david in and sat before the lord and he said who am i o lord god and what is my house that thou hast brought me hitherto and this was yet a small thing in thy sight o lord god but thou hast spoken also of thy servant's house for a great while to come and is this the manner of man o lord god and what can david say more unto thee for thou lord god knowest thy servant for thy word's sake and according to thine own heart hast thou done all these great things to make thy servant know them wherefore thou art great o lord god for there is none like thee neither is there any god beside thee according to all that we have heard with our ears and what one nation in the earth is like thy people even like israel whom god went to redeem for a people to himself and to make him a name and to do for you great things and terrible for thy land before thy people which thou redeemedst to thee from egypt from the nations and their gods for thou hast confirmed to thyself thy people israel to be a people unto thee for ever and thou lord art become their god and now o lord god the word that thou hast spoken concerning thy servant and concerning his house establish it for ever and do as thou hast said and let thy name be magnified for ever saying the lord of hosts is the god over israel and let the house of thy servant david be established before thee for thou o lord of hosts god of israel hast revealed to thy servant saying i will build thee an house therefore hath thy servant found in his heart to pray this prayer unto thee and now o lord god thou art that god and thy words be true and thou hast promised this goodness unto thy servant therefore now let it please thee to bless the house of thy servant that it may continue for ever before thee for thou o lord god hast spoken it and with thy blessing let the house of thy servant be blessed for ever and after this it came to pass that david smote the philistines and subdued them and david took methagamah out of the hand of the philistines and he smote moab and measured them with a line casting them down to the ground even with two lines measured he to put to death and with one full line to keep alive and so the moabites became david's servants and brought gifts david smote also hadadezer the son of rehob king of zobah as he went to recover his border at the river euphrates and david took from him a thousand chariots and seven hundred horsemen and twenty thousand footmen and david hoffed all the chariot horses but reserved them for an hundred chariots and when the syrians of damascus came to succour hadadezer king of zobah david slew of the syrians two and twenty thousand men then david put the garrisons in syria of damascus and the syrians became servants to david and brought gifts and the lord preserved david whithersoever he went and david took the shields of gold that were on the servants of hadadezer and brought them to jerusalem and from beta and from berothai cities of hadadezer king david took exceeding much brass when toi king of hamath heard that david had smitten all the host of hadadezer then toi sent joram his son unto king david to salute him and to bless him because he had fought against hadadezer and smitten him for hadadezer had wars with toi and joram brought with him vessels of silver and vessels of gold and vessels of brass which also king david did dedicate unto the lord with the silver and gold that he had dedicated of all nations which he subdued of syria and of moab and of the children of ammon and of the philistines and of amalek and of the spoil of hadadezer son of rehob king of zobah and david got him a name when he returned from smiting of the syrians in the valley of salt being eighteen thousand men and he put garrisons in edom throughout all edom put he garrisons and all they of edom became david's servants and the lord preserved david whithersoever he went and david reigned over all israel and david executed judgment and justice unto all his people
and joab the son of zeruiah was over the host and jehoshaphat the son of ahilud was recorder and zadok the son of ahitub and ahimelech the son of abiatha were the priests and sariah was the scribe and benaiah the son of jehoiada was over both the cherethites and the pelethites and david's sons were chief rulers and david said is there yet any that is left of the house of saul that i may shew him kindness for jonathan's sake and there was of the house of saul a servant whose name was ziba and when they had called him unto david the king said unto him art thou ziba and he said thy servant is he and the king said is there not yet any of the house of saul that i may shew the kindness of god unto him and ziba said unto the king jonathan hath yet a son which is lame on his feet and the king said unto him where is he and ziba said unto the king behold he is in the house of machir the son of amiel in lodabar then king david sent and fetched him out of the house of machir the son of amiel from lodabar now when mephibosheth the son of jonathan the son of saul was come unto david he fell on his face and did reverence and david said mephibosheth and he answered behold thy servant and david said unto him fear not for i will surely shew thee kindness for jonathan thy father's sake and will restore thee all the land of saul thy father and thou shalt eat bread at my table continually and he bowed himself and said what is thy servant that thou shouldest look upon such a dead dog as i am then the king called to ziba saul's servant and said unto him i have given unto thy master's son all that pertain to saul and to all his house thou therefore and thy sons and thy servants shall till the land for him and thou shalt bring in the fruits that thy master's son may have food to eat but mephibosheth thy master's son shall eat bread alway at my table now ziba had fifteen sons and twenty servants then said ziba unto the king according to all that my lord the king hath commanded his servant so shall thy servant do as for mephibosheth said the king he shall eat at my table as one of the king's sons and mephibosheth had a young son whose name was micah and all that dwelt in the house of ziba were servants unto mephibosheth so mephibosheth dwelt in jerusalem and he did eat continually at the king's table and was lame on both his feet and it came to pass after this that the king of the children of ammon died and hanun his son reigned in his stead then said david i will shew kindness unto hanun the son of nahash as his father shewed kindness unto me and david sent to comfort him by the hand of his servants for his father and david's servants came into the land of the children of ammon and the princes of the children of ammon said unto hanun their lord thinkest thou that david doth honour thy father that he hath sent comforters unto thee hath not david rather sent his servants unto thee to search the city and spy it out and to overthrow it wherefore hanun took david's servants and shaved off the one half of their beards and cut off their garments in the middle even to their buttocks and sent them away when they told it unto david he sent to meet them because the men were greatly ashamed and the king said tarry at jericho until your beards be grown and then return and when the children of ammon saw that they stank before david the children of ammon sent and hired the syrians of bethrehob and the syrians of zoba twenty thousand footmen and of king Maka a thousand men and of ishtob twelve thousand men and when david heard of it he sent joab and all the host of the mighty men and the children of ammon came out and put the battle in array at the entering in of the gate and the syrians of zoba and of rehob and ishtob and Maka were by themselves in the field when joab saw that the front of the battle was against him before and behind he chose of all the choice men of israel and put them in array against the syrians and the rest of the people he delivered into the hand of abishai his brother that he might put them in array against the children of ammon and he said if the syrians be too strong for me then thou shalt help me but if the children of ammon be too strong for thee then i will come and help thee be of good courage and let us play the men for our people and for the cities of our god and the lord do that which seemeth him good and joab drew nigh and all the people that were with him unto the battle against the syrians and they fled before him and when the children of ammon saw that the syrians were fled then fled they also before abishai and entered into the city so joab returned from the children of ammon and came to jerusalem and when the syrians saw that they were smitten before israel they gathered themselves together 
and Hadareza sent, and brought out the Syrians that were beyond the river. And they came to Hilam, and Shobach, the captain of the host of Hadareza, went before them. And when it was told David, he gathered all Israel together, and passed over Jordan, and came to Hilam. And the Syrians set themselves in array against David, and fought with him. And the Syrians fled before Israel. And David slew the men of seven hundred chariots of the Syrians, and forty thousand horsemen, and smote Shobach, the captain of their host, who died there. And when all the kings that were servants to Hadareza saw that they were smitten before Israel, they made peace with Israel and served them. So the Syrians feared to help the children of Ammon any more. And it came to pass, after the year was expired, at the time when kings go forth to battle, that David sent Joab and his servants with him, and all Israel, and they destroyed the children of Ammon, and besieged Rabbah. But David tarried still at Jerusalem. And it came to pass in an evening tide, that David arose from off his bed, and walked upon the roof of the king's house, and from the roof he saw a woman washing herself, and the woman was very beautiful to look upon. And David sent, and inquired after the woman and one said is not this bathsheba the daughter of eliam the wife of uriah the hittite and david sent messengers and took her and she came in unto him and he lay with her for she was purified from her uncleanness and she returned unto her house and the woman conceived and sent and told david and said i am with child and david sent to joab saying send me uriah the hittite and joab sent uriah to david and when Uriah was come unto him, David demanded of him how Joab did, and how the people did, and how the war prospered. And David said to Uriah, Go down to thy house, and wash thy feet. And Uriah departed out of the king's house, and there followed him a mess of meat from the king. But Uriah slept at the door of the king's house with all the servants of his lord, and went not down to his house. And when they had told David, saying, Uriah went not down unto his house, David said unto Uriah, Camest thou not from thy journey? Why then didst thou not go down unto thine house? And Uriah said unto David, The ark, and Israel, and Judah, abide in tents. And my lord Joab, and the servants of my lord, are encamped in the open field. Shall I then go into mine house, to eat and to drink, and to lie with my wife? As thou livest, and as thou so liveth, I will not do this thing. And David said to Uriah, Tarry here to-day also, and to-morrow I will let thee depart. So Uriah abode in Jerusalem that day and the morrow. And when David had called him, he did eat and drink before him, and he made him drunk. And at even he went out to lie on his bed with the servants of his lord, but went not down to his house. And it came to pass in the morning that David wrote a letter to Joab, and sent it by the hands of Uriah. And he wrote in the letter, saying, Set ye Uriah in the forefront of the hottest battle, and retire ye from him, that he may be smitten and die. And it came to pass, when Joab observed the city, that he assigned Uriah unto a place where he knew that valiant men were. And the men of the city went out, and fought with Joab, and there fell some of the people of the servants of David, and Uriah the Hittite died also. Then Joab sent, and told David all the things concerning the war, and charged the messenger, saying, when thou hast made an end of telling the matters of the war unto the king, and if so be that the king's wrath arise, and he say unto thee, Wherefore approached ye so nigh unto the city when ye did fight? Knew ye not that they would shoot from the wall? Who smote Abimelech the son of Drubasheth? Did not a woman cast a piece of a millstone upon him from the wall, that he died in Thebes? why went ye nigh the wall so the messenger went and came and showed david all that joab had sent him for and the messenger said unto david surely the men prevailed against us and came out unto us into the field and we were upon them even unto the entering of the gate and the shooters shot from the wall upon thy servants and some of the king's servants be dead and thy servant Uriah the Hittite is dead also. Then David said unto the messenger, Thus shalt thou say unto Joab, Let not this thing displease thee, for the sword devoureth one as well as another. Make thy battle more strong against the city, and overthrow it, and encourage thou him. And when the wife of Uriah heard that Uriah her husband was dead, she mourned for her husband. And when the morning was past, David sent and fetched her to his house, and she became his wife and bare him a son but the thing that david had done displeased the lord and the lord sent nathan unto david 
and he came unto him and said unto him there were two men in one city the one rich and the other poor the rich man had exceeding many flocks and herds but the poor man had nothing save one little ewe lamb which he had brought and nourished up and it grew up together with him and with his children it did eat of his own meat and drank of his own cup and lay in his bosom and was unto him as a daughter and there came a traveller unto the rich man and he spared to take of his own flock and of his own herd to dress for the wayfaring man that was come unto him but took the poor man's lamb and dressed it for the man that was come to him and david's anger was greatly kindled against the man and he said to nathan as the lord liveth the man that hath done this thing shall surely die and he shall restore the lamb fourfold because he did this thing and because he had no pity and nathan said to david thou art the man thus saith the lord god of israel i anointed thee king over israel and i delivered thee out of the hand of saul and i gave thee thy master's house and thy master's wives into thy bosom and gave thee the house of israel and of judah and if that had been too little i would moreover have given unto thee such and such things wherefore hast thou despised the commandment of the lord to do evil in his sight thou hast killed uriah the hittite with the sword and hast taken his wife to be thy wife and hast slain him with the sword of the children of ammon now therefore the sword shall never depart from thine house because thou hast despised me and taken the wife of uriah the hittite to be thy wife thus saith the lord behold i will raise up evil against thee out of thine own house and i will take thy wives before thine eyes and give them unto thy neighbour and he shall lie with thy wives in the sight of the sun for thou didst it secretly but i will do this thing before all israel and before the sun and david said unto nathan i have sinned against the lord and nathan said unto david the lord also hath put away thy sin thou shalt not die howbeit because by this deed thou hast given great occasion to the enemies of the lord to blaspheme the child also that is born unto thee shall surely die and nathan departed unto his house and the lord struck the child that uriah's wife bare unto david and it was very sick david therefore besought god for the child and david fasted and went in and lay all night upon the earth and the elders of his house arose and went to him to raise him up from the earth but he would not neither did he eat bread with them and it came to pass on the seventh day that the child died and the servants of david feared to tell him that the child was dead for they said behold while the child was yet alive we spake unto him and he would not hearken unto our voice how will he then vex himself if we tell him that the child is dead but when david saw that his servants whispered david perceived that the child was dead therefore david said unto his servants is the child dead and they said he is dead then david arose from the earth and washed and anointed himself and changed his apparel and came into the house of the lord and worshipped then he came to his own house and when he required they set bread before him and he did eat then said his servants unto him what thing is this that thou hast done thou didst fast and weep for the child while it was alive but when the child was dead thou didst rise and eat bread and he said while the child was yet alive i fasted and wept for i said who can tell whether god will be gracious to me that the child may live but now he is dead wherefore should i fast can i bring him back again i shall go to him but he shall not return to me and david comforted bathsheba his wife and went in unto her and lay with her and she bare a son and he called his name solomon and the lord loved him and he sent by the hand of nathan the prophet and he called his name jedidiah because of the lord and joab fought against rabbah of the children of ammon and took the royal city and joab sent messengers to david and said i have fought against rabbah and have taken the city of waters now therefore gather the rest of the people together and encamp against the city and take it lest i take the city and it be called after my name and david gathered all the people together and went to rabbah and fought against it and took it 
and he took their king's crown from off his head the weight whereof was a talent of gold with the precious stones and it was set on david's head and he brought forth the spoil of the city in great abundance and he brought forth the people that were therein and put them under saws and under harrows of iron and under axes of iron and made them pass through the brick kiln and thus did he unto all the cities of the children of ammon so david and all the people returned unto jerusalem end of section 15 end of the story of david Section 16 of Dramatized Bible Passages from the Old Testament. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Story of Solomon, 1 Kings Chapter 3. Narrator, read by Rachel. God, read by David Olson. Solomon, read by David Allen. First Woman, read by Lydia. Second Woman, read by Seek Wisdom. And Solomon made affinity with Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and took Pharaoh's daughter, and brought her into the city of David, until he had made an end of building his own house, and the house of the Lord, and the wall of Jerusalem round about. Only the people sacrificed in high places, because there was no house built unto the name of the Lord, until those days. And Solomon loved the Lord, walking in the statutes of David his father only he sacrificed and burnt incense in high places. And the king went to Gibeon to sacrifice there, for that was the great high place. A thousand burnt offerings did Solomon offer upon that altar. In Gibeon the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night, and God said, Ask what I shall give thee. And Solomon said, Thou hast shown unto thy servant David my father great mercy according as he walked before thee in truth and in righteousness and in uprightness of heart with thee and thou hast kept for him this great kindness that thou hast given him a son to sit on his throne as it is this day and now o lord my god thou hast made thy servant king instead of david my father and i am but a little child i know not how to go out or come in and thy servant is in the midst of thy people which thou hast chosen a great people that cannot be numbered nor counted for a multitude give therefore thy servant an understanding heart to judge thy people that i may discern between good and bad for who is able to judge this thy so great a people and the speech pleased the lord that solomon had asked this thing and god said unto him because thou hast asked this thing and hast not asked for thyself long life neither has asked for riches for thyself nor hast asked the life of thine enemies but hast asked for thyself understanding to discern judgment behold i have done according to thy words lo i have given thee a wise and an understanding heart so that there was none like thee before thee neither after thee shall any arise like unto thee and i have also given thee that which thou hast not asked both riches and honor so that there shall not be any among the kings like unto thee all thy days and if thou wilt walk in my ways to keep my statutes and my commandments as thy father david did walk then i will lengthen thy days and solomon awoke and behold it was a dream and he came to Jerusalem, and stood before the ark of the covenant of the Lord, and offered up burnt offerings, and offered peace offerings, and made a feast to all his servants. Then came there two women that were harlots unto the king, and stood before him. And the one woman said, O oh my lord, I and this woman dwell in one house, and I was delivered of a child with her in the house. And it came to pass the third day after that I was delivered, that this woman was delivered also, and we were together. There was no stranger with us in the house, save we two in the house. And this woman's child died in the night, because she overlaid it. And she arose at midnight, and took my son from beside me, while thine handmaid slept, and laid it in her bosom, and laid her dead child in my bosom. And when I rose in the morning to give my child suck, behold, it was dead. But when I had considered it in the morning, behold, it was not my son, which I did bear. And the other woman said, Nay, but the living is my son, and the dead is thy son. And this said, 
no but the dead is thy son and the living is my son thus they spake before the king then said the king the one saith this is my son that liveth and thy son is the dead and the other saith nay but thy son is the dead and my son is the living and the king said bring me a sword and they brought a sword before the king and the king said divide the living child in two and give half to one and half to the other then spake the woman whose the living child was unto the king for her bowels yearned upon her son and she said o oh, my lord give her the living child and in no wise slay it but the other said let it be neither mine nor thine but divide it then the king answered and said give her the living child and in no wise slay it she is the mother thereof and all israel heard of the judgment which the king had judged and they feared the king for they saw that in the wisdom of god was in him due judgment end of section sixteen the story of solomon section seventeen of dramatized bible passages from the old testament this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Stories of Elijah from First Kings chapters seventeen to nineteen, King James Version, narrated by Rachel. Elijah read by Joseph Tabler. The Lord read by David Olson. Widow read by Christine G. King Ahab read by Chatza. Obadiah read by Esther and Simonides. The people read by amber jewels priests of baal read by beth thomas elijah's servant read by lydia elisha read by e snow jezebel read by adalde pignoroles angel read by sonia and elijah the tishbite who was of the inhabitants of gilead said unto ahab as the lord god of israel liveth before whom i stand there shall not be dew nor rain these years but according to my word and the word of the lord came unto him saying get thee hence and turn thee eastward and hide thyself by the brook cherith that is before jordan and it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook and i have commanded the ravens to feed thee there so he went and did according unto the word of the lord for he went and dwelt by the brook Cherith, that is, before Jordan. And the ravens brought him bread and flesh in the morning, and bread and flesh in the evening, and he drank of the brook. And it came to pass after a while that the brook dried up, because there had been no rain in the land. And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Arise, get thee to Zarephath, which belongeth to Zidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee. So he arose and went to Zarephath. And when he came to the gate of the city, behold, the widow woman was there gathering of sticks, and he called to her and said, Fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel, that I may drink. And as she was going to fetch it, he called to her and said, Bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thine hand. And she said, As the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake but an handful of meal in a barrel and a little oil in a cruse and behold i am gathering two sticks that i may go in and dress it for me and my son that we may eat it and die and elijah said unto her fear not go and do as thou hast said but make me thereof a little cake first and bring it unto me and after make for thee and thy son for thus saith the lord god of israel the barrel of meal shall not waste neither shall the cruse of oil fail until the day that the lord sendeth rain upon the earth and she went and did according to the saying of elijah and she and he and her house did eat many days and the barrel of meal wasted not neither did the cruse of oil fail according to the word of the lord which he spake by elijah and it came to pass after these things that the son of the woman the mistress of the house fell sick, and his sickness was so sore that there was no breath left in him. And she said unto Elijah, What have I to do with thee, O thou man of God? Art thou come unto me to call my sin to remembrance, and to slay my son? And he said unto her, Give me thy son. And he took him out of her bosom, and carried him up into a loft, where he abode, and laid him upon his own bed. And he cried unto the Lord, and said, 
o lord god hast thou also brought evil upon the widow with whom i sojourn by slaying her son and he stretched himself upon the child three times and cried unto the lord and said o lord god i pray thee let this child's soul come into him again and the lord heard the voice of elijah and the soul of the child came into him again and he revived and elijah took the child and brought him down out of the chamber into the house and delivered him unto his mother and elijah said see thy son liveth and the woman said to elijah now by this i know that thou art a man of god and that the word of the lord in thy mouth is truth and it came to pass after many days that the word of the lord came to elijah in the third year saying go shew thyself unto ahab and i will send rain upon the earth and elijah went to shew himself unto ahab and there was a sore famine in samaria and ahab called obadiah which was the governor of his house now obadiah feared the lord greatly for it was so when jezebel cut off the prophets of the lord that obadiah took a hundred prophets and hid them by fifty in a cave and fed them with bread and water and ahab said unto obadiah go into the land unto all fountains of water and unto all brooks peradventure we may find grass to save the horses and mules alive that we lose not all the beasts so they divided the land between them to pass throughout it ahab went one way by himself and obadiah went another way by himself and as obadiah was in the way behold elijah met him and he knew him and fell on his face and said art thou that my lord elijah and he answered him i am go tell thy lord behold elijah is here and he said what have i sinned that thou wouldst deliver thy servant into the hand of ahab to slay me as the lord thy god liveth there is no nation or kingdom whither my lord hath not sent to seek thee and when they said he is not there he took an oath of the kingdom and nation that they found thee not and now thou sayest go tell thy lord behold elijah is here and it shall come to pass as soon as i am gone from thee that the spirit of the lord shall carry thee whither i know not and so when i come and tell ahab and he cannot find thee he shall slay me but i thy servant fear the lord for my youth was it not told my lord what i did when jezebel slew the prophets of the lord how i hid an hundred men of the lord's prophets by fifty in a cave and fed them with bread and water and now thou sayest go tell my lord behold elijah is here and he shall slay me and elijah said as the lord of hosts liveth before whom i stand i will surely show myself unto him to-day so obadiah went to meet ahab and told him and ahab went to meet elijah and it came to pass when ahab saw elijah that ahab said unto him art thou he that troubleth israel and he answered i have not troubled israel but thou and thy father's house in that ye have forsaken the commandments of the lord and thou hast followed balaam now therefore send and gather to me all israel unto mount carmel and the prophets of baal four hundred and fifty and the prophets of the groves four hundred which eat at jezebel's table so ahab sent unto all the children of israel and gathered the prophets together unto mount carmel and elijah came unto all the people and said how long halt ye between two opinions if the lord be god follow him but if baal then follow him and the people answered him not a word then said elijah unto the people i even i only remain a prophet of the lord but baal's prophets are four hundred and fifty men let them therefore give us two bullocks and let them choose one bullock for themselves and cut it in pieces and lay it on wood and put no fire under and i will dress the other bullock and lay it on wood and put no fire under and call ye on the name of your gods and i will call on the name of the lord and the god that answereth by fire let him be god and all the people answered and said it is well spoken and elijah said unto the prophets of baal choose you one bullock for yourselves and dress it first for ye are many and call on the name of your gods but put no fire under and they took the bullock which was given them and they dressed it and called on the name of baal from morning even until noon saying o baal hear us but there was no voice nor any that answered and they leaped upon the altar which was made and it came to pass at noon that elijah mocked them and said 
cry aloud for he is a god either he is talking or he is pursuing or he is in a journey or peradventure he sleepeth and must be awaked and they cried aloud and cut themselves after their manner with knives and lancets till the blood gushed out upon them and it came to pass when midday was past and they prophesied until the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice that there was neither voice nor any to answer nor any that regarded and elijah said unto all the people come near unto me and all the people came near unto him and he repaired the altar of the lord that was broken down and elijah took twelve stones according to the number of the tribes of the sons of jacob unto whom the word of the lord came saying israel shall be thy name and with the stones he built an altar in the name of the lord and he made a trench about the altar as great as would contain two measures of seed and he put the wood in order and cut the bullock in pieces and laid him on the wood and said fill four barrels with water and pour it on the burnt sacrifice and on the wood and he said do it the second time and they did it the second time and he said do it the third time and they did it the third time and the water ran round about the altar and he filled the trench also with water and it came to pass at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice that elijah the prophet came near and said lord god of abraham isaac and of israel let it be known this day that thou art god in israel and that i am thy servant and that i have done all these things at thy word hear me o lord hear me that this people may know that thou art the lord god and that thou hast turned their heart back again then the fire of the lord fell and consumed the burnt sacrifice and all the wood and the stones and the dust and licked up the water that was in the trench and when all the people saw it they fell on their faces and they said the lord he is the god the lord he is the god and elijah said unto them take the prophets of baal let not one of them escape and they took them and elijah brought them down to the brook kishon and slew them there and elijah said unto ahab get thee up eat and drink for there is a sound of abundance of rain so ahab went up to eat and to drink and elijah went up to the top of carmel and he cast himself down upon the earth and put his face between his knees and he said to his servant go up now look toward the sea and he went up and looked and said there is nothing and he said go again seven times and it came to pass at the seventh time that he said behold there ariseth a little cloud out of the sea like a man's hand and he said go up say unto ahab prepare thy chariot and get thee down that the rain stop thee not and it came to pass in the meanwhile that the heaven was black with clouds and wind and there was a great rain and ahab rode and went to jezreel and the hand of the lord was on elijah and he girded up his loins and ran before ahab to the entrance of jezreel and ahab told jezebel all that elijah had done and withal how he had slain all the prophets with the sword then jezebel sent a messenger unto elijah saying so let the gods do to me and more also if i make not thy life as the life of one of them by to-morrow about this time and when he saw that he arose and went for his life and came to beersheba which belongeth to judah and left his servant there but he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a juniper tree and he requested for himself that he might die and said it is enough now o lord take away my life for i am not better than my father's and as he lay and slept under a juniper tree behold then an angel touched him and said unto him arise and eat and he looked and behold there was a cake baking on the coals and a cruise of water at his head and he did eat and drink and laid him down again and the angel of the lord came again the second time and touched him and said arise and eat because the journey is too great for thee and he arose and did eat and drink and went in the strength of that meat forty days and forty nights unto horeb the mount of god and he came thither unto a cave and lodged there and behold the word of the lord came to him and he said unto him what doest thou here elijah and he said i have been very jealous for the lord god of hosts for the children of israel have forsaken thy covenant thrown down thine altars and slain thy prophets with the sword and i even i only am left and they seek my life to take it away and he said go forth and stand upon the mount 
before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by, and a great and strong wind rent the mountains, and brake in pieces the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind, and after the wind an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake, and after the earthquake a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire, and after the fire a still small voice. And it was so, when Elijah heard it, that he wrapped his face in his mantle, and went out, and stood in the entering in of the cave. And behold, there came a voice unto him, and said, What doest thou here, Elijah? And he said, I have been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts, because the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant, thrown down thine altars, and slain thy prophets with the sword, and I, even I only, am left, and they seek my life to take it away. And the Lord said unto him, Go, return on thy way to the wilderness of Damascus, and when thou comest, anoint Haziel to be king over Syria, and Jehu, the son of Nimshi, shalt thou anoint to be king over Israel. And Elisha, the son of Saphat, of Abimehol, shalt thou anoint to be prophet in thy room. And it shall come to pass, that he that escapeth the sword of Hazael shall Jehu slay, and he that escapeth from the sword of Jehu shall Elisha slay. Yet I have left me seven thousand in Israel, all the knees which have not bowed unto Baal, and every mouth which hath not kissed him. So he departed thence, and found Elisha the son of Shaphat, who was ploughing with twelve yoke of oxen before him, and he with the twelfth. And Elijah passed by him, and cast his mantle upon him. And he left the oxen, and ran after Elijah, and said, Let me, I pray thee, kiss my father and my mother, and then I will follow thee. And he said unto him, Go back again, for what have I done to thee? And he returned back from him, and took a yoke of oxen, and slew them, and boiled their flesh with the instruments of the oxen, and gave unto the people, and they did eat. Then he arose and went after Elijah, and ministered unto him. End of section 17「Section 18 of Dramatized Bible Passages from the Old Testament. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Stories of Elisha from Second Kings, Chapters 4-6. to Narrated by Rachel. Woman, read by Seek Wisdom. Sons of the Prophets, read by Catherine. Son, read by Thomas Peter. Servants, read by Anne Finwin. Naaman read by Trotza. Maid of Israel, read by Lydia. King of Syria, read by Esther ben Samanide. King of Israel, read by Beth Thomas. Gehazi, read by Adelda Pignoli. Elisha, read by E. Snow. Child, read by Jesse Yu. Father, read by Marianne. Chapter 4 Now there cried a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets unto Elisha, saying, thy servant my husband is dead and thou knowest that thy servant did fear the lord and the creditor is come to take unto him my two sons to be bondmen and elisha said unto her what shall i do for thee tell me what hast thou in the house and she said thine handmaid hath not anything in the house save a pot of oil then he said go borrow thee vessels abroad from all thy neighbours even empty vessels borrow not a few and when thou art come in thou shalt shut the door upon thee and upon thy sons, and shalt pour into all those vessels, and thou shalt set aside that which is full. So she went from him, and shut the door upon her, and upon her sons, who brought the vessels to her, and she poured out. And it came to pass, when the vessels were full, th that she said unto her son, Bring me yet a vessel. And he said unto her, There is not a vessel more. And the oil stayed. Then she came and told the man of God, and he said, Go, sell the oil, and pay thy debt and live thou and thy children of the rest. And it fell in a day that Elisha passed to Shunem, where there was a great woman, and she constrained him to eat bread. And so it was, that oft as he passed by, he turned in and thither to eat bread. And she said unto her husband, Behold now, I perceive that this is an holy man of God. 
which passeth by us continually let us make a little chamber i pray thee on the wall and let us set for him there a bed and a table and a stool and a candlestick and it shall be when he cometh to us that he shall turn in thither and it fell on a day that he came thither and he turned into the chamber and lay there and he said unto gehazi his servant call this shanamite and when he had called her she stood before him and he said unto him say now unto her behold thou hast been careful for us with all this care what is to be done for thee wouldst thou be spoken for to the king or to the captain of the host and she answered i dwell among mine own people and he said what then is to be done for her and gehazi answered verily she has no child and her husband is old and he said call her and when he had called her she stood in the door and he said about this season according to the time of life thou shalt embrace a son and she said nay my lord thou man of god do not lie unto thine handmaid and the woman conceived and bare a son at that season that elisha had said unto her according to the time of life and when the child was grown it fell on a day that he went out to his father to the reapers and he said unto his father my head my head and he said to a lad carry him to his mother and when he had taken him and brought him to his mother he sat on her knees till noon and then died and she went up and laid him on the bed of the man of god and shut the door upon him and went out and she called unto her husband and said send me i pray thee one of the young men and one of the asses that i may run to the man of god and come again and he said wherefore wilt thou go to him to-day it is neither new moon nor sabbath and she said it shall be well then she saddled an ass and said to her servant drive and go forward slack not thy riding for me except i bid thee so she went and came unto the man of god to mount carmel and it came to pass when the man of god saw her afar off that he said to gehazi his servant behold yonder is that shalomite run now i pray thee to meet her and say unto her is it well with thee is it well with thy husband is it well with the child and she answered it is well and when she came to the man of god to the hill she caught him by the feet but gehazi came near to thrust her away and the man of god said let her alone for her soul is vexed within her and the lord hath hid it from me and hath not told me then she said did i desire a son of my lord did i not say do not deceive me then he said to gehazi gird up thy loins and take my staff in thine hand and go thy way if thou meet any man salute him not and if any salute thee answer him not again and lay my staff upon the face of the child and the mother of the child said as the lord liveth and as thy soul liveth i will not leave thee and he arose and followed her and gehazi passed on before them and laid the staff upon the face of the child but there was neither voice nor hearing wherefore he went again to meet him and told him saying the child is not awake and when elisha was come into the house behold the child was dead and laid upon his bed he went in therefore and shut the door upon them twain and prayed unto the lord and he went up and lay upon the child and put his mouth upon his mouth and his eyes upon his eyes and his hands upon his hands and stretched himself upon the child and the flesh of the child waxed warm then he returned and walked in the house to and fro and went up and stretched himself upon him and the child sneezed seven times and the child opened his eyes and he called gehazi and said call the shanamite so he called her and when she was come in unto him he said take up thy son then she went in and fell at his feet and bowed herself to the ground and took up her son and went out and elisha came again to gilgal and there was a death in the land and the sons of the prophets were sitting before him and he said unto his servant set on the great pot and see the pottage for the sons of the prophets and one went out into the field to gather herbs and found a wild vine and gathered thereof wild gourds his lap full and came and shred them into the pot of pottage for they knew them not so they poured out for the men to eat and it came to pass as they were eating of the pottage that they cried out and said o oh, thou man of god there is death in the pot and they could not eat thereof but he said then bring meal and he cast it into the pot and he said pour out for the people that they may eat and there came a man from baal shalisha and brought the man of god bread of the first fruits twenty loaves of barley and full ears of corn and the husk thereof and he said give unto the people that they may eat and his servitor said what should i set this before an hundred men he said again give the people that they may eat for thus saith the lord 
they shall eat, and shall leave thereof. So he set it before them, and they did eat, and left thereof, according to the word of the Lord. Chapter 5 Now Naaman, captain of the host of the king of Syria, was a great man with his master, and honorable, because by him the Lord had given deliverance unto Syria. He was also a mighty man in valor, but he was a leper. And the Syrians had gone out by companies, and had brought away captive out of the land of Israel, a little maid, and she waited on Naaman's wife. And she said unto her mistress, Would God my lord were with the prophet that is in Samaria, for he would recover him of his leprosy. And one went in, and told his lord, saying, Thus and thus said the maid that is of the land of Israel. And the king of Syria said, Go to, go, and I will send a letter unto the king of Israel. And he departed, and took with him ten talents of silver, and six thousand pieces of gold, and ten changes of raiment. And he brought the letter to the king of Israel, saying, Now when this letter has come unto thee, behold, I have therewith sent Naaman my servant to thee, that thou mayest recover him of his leprosy. And it came to pass, when the king of Israel had read the letter, that he rent his clothes, and said, Am I God, to kill and to make alive, that this man doth send unto me to recover a man of his leprosy? Wherefore consider, I pray you, and see how he seeketh a quarrel against me. And it was so, when Elisha the man of God had heard that the king of Israel had rent his clothes, that he sent to the king, saying, Wherefore hast thou rent thy clothes? Let him come now to me, and he shall know that there is a prophet in Israel. So Naaman came with his horses and with his chariot, and stood at the door of the house of Elisha. And Elisha sent a messenger unto him, saying, Go and wash in the Jordan seven times, and thy flesh shall come again to thee, and thou shalt be clean. But Naaman was wroth, and went away, and said, Behold, I thought, He will surely come out to me, and stand, and call on the name of the Lord his God, and strike his hand over the place, and recover the leper. Are not Abana and Thapar, rivers of Damascus, better than all the waters of Israel? May I not wash in them, and be clean? And his servants came near, and spake unto him, and said, My father, If the prophet had bid thee do some great thing, wouldst thou not have done it? How much rather then when he saith to thee, Wash, and be clean? Then went he down, and dipped himself seven times in Jordan, according to the saying of the man of God. And his flesh came again like unto the flesh of a little child, and he was clean. And he returned to the man of God, he and all his company, and came, and stood before him, and said, Behold, now I know that there is no God in all the earth but in Israel. Now therefore, I pray thee, take a blessing of thy servant. But he said, As the Lord liveth, before whom I stand, I will receive none. And he urged him to take it, but he refused. And Naaman said, Shall there not then, I pray thee, be given to thy servant two mules' burden of earth? For thy servant will henceforth offer neither burnt offering nor sacrifice unto other gods, but unto the Lord. In this thing the Lord pardon thy servant, that when my master goeth into the house of Rimon to worship there, and he leaneth on my hand, and I bow myself in the house of Rimon. When I bow down myself in the house of Rimon, the Lord pardon thy servant in this thing. And he said unto him, Go in peace. So he departed from him a little way. But Gehazi, the servant of Elisha, the man of God, said, Behold, my master hath spared Naaman the Syrian, in not receiving at his hands that which he brought. But as the Lord liveth, I will run after him, and take somewhat of him. So Gehazi followed after Naaman. And when Naaman saw him running after him, he lighted down from the chariot to meet him, and said, Is all well? And he said, All is well. My master hath sent me, saying, Behold, even now there be come to me from Mount Ephraim two young men of the sons of the prophets. Give them, I pray thee, a talent of silver and two changes of garments. And Naaman said, Be content. Take two talents. And he urged him, and bound two talents of silver in two bags, with two changes of garments, and laid them upon two of his servants, and they bare them before him. And when he came to the tower, he took them from their hand, and bestowed them in the house, and he let the men go, and they departed. But he went in and stood before his master, and Elisha said unto him, Whence thou comest, Gehazi? And he said, Thy servant went no whither. And he said unto him, Went not mine heart with thee, when the man turned again from his chariot to meet thee? Is it a time to receive money, and to receive garments, and olive yards, and vineyards, and sheep, and oxen? and men servants and maid servants the leprosy therefore of Naaman shall cleave unto thee and unto thy seed for ever and he went out from his presence a leper as white as snow and the sons of the prophets said unto elisha behold now the place where we dwell with thee is too straight for us 
let us go we pray thee unto jordan and take thence every man a beam and let us make a place there where we may dwell and he answered go ye and one said be content i pray thee and go with thy servants and he answered i will go so he went with them and when they came to jordan they cut down wood but as one was felling a beam the axe head fell into the water and he cried and said alas master for it was borrowed and the man of god said where fell it and he shewed him the place and he cut down a stick and cast it in thither and the iron did swim therefore said he take it up to thee and he put out his hand and took it then the king of syria warred against israel and took counsel with his servants saying in such and such a place shall be my camp and the man of god sent unto the king of israel saying beware that thou pass not such a place for thither the syrians are come now and the king of israel sent to the place which the man of god told him and warned him of and saved himself there not once nor twice therefore the heart of the king of syria was sore troubled for this thing and he called his servants and said unto them will you not show me which of us is for the king of israel and one of his servants said none my lord o king but elisha the prophet that is in israel telleth the king of israel the words that thou speakest in thy bedchamber and he said go and spy where he is that i may send and fetch him and it was told him saying behold he is in dothan therefore sent he thither horses and chariots and a great host and they came by night and compassed the city about and when the servant of the man of god was risen early and gone forth behold a host compassed the city both with horses and chariots and his servant said unto him alas my master how shall we do and he answered fear not for they that be with us are more than that be with them and elisha prayed and said lord i pray thee open his eyes that he may see and the lord opened the eyes of the young man and he saw and behold the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about elisha and when they came down to him elisha prayed unto the lord and said smite this people i pray thee with blindness and he smote them with blindness according to the word of elisha and elisha said unto them this is not the way neither is this the city follow me and i will bring you to the man whom you seek but he led them to samaria and it came to pass when they were come into samaria that elisha said lord open the eyes of these men that they may see and the lord opened their eyes and they saw and behold they were in the midst of samaria and the king of israel said unto elisha when he saw them my father shall i smite them shall i smite them and he answered thou shalt not smite them wouldst thou smite those whom thou hast taken captive by thy sword and thy bow set bread and water before them that they may eat and drink and go to their master and he prepared great provision for them and when they had eaten and drunk he sent them away and they went to their master so the bands of syria came no more into the land of israel end of section eighteen Section 19 of Dramatized Bible Passages from the Old Testament. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Story of Jonah from the Book of Jonah, King James Version. Narrated by Christine G. The Lord. Read by David Olson. Jonah. Read by Michael C. Johnson. Shipmaster, row boy, Esteban Salmonides. Sailors, read by Lydia. The King of Nineveh, read by Beth Thomas. Now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it, for their wickedness is come up before me. But Jonah rose up to flee unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord, and went down to Joppa, and he found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid the fare thereof, and went down into it, to go with them unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. But the Lord sent out a great wind into the sea, and there was a mighty tempest in the sea, so that the ship was like to be broken. Then the mariners were afraid, and cried every man unto his guard, and cast forth the wares that were in the ship into the sea to lighten it of them but jonah was gone down into the sides of the ship and he lay and was fast asleep so the shipmaster came to him and said unto him what mayest thou sleep up arise 
Go up on thy gourd. If so be that God will think upon us, that we perish not. And they said every one to his fellow, Come and let us cast lots, that we may know for whose cause this evil is upon us. So they cast lots, and the lot fell upon Jonah. Then said they unto him, Tell us, we pray thee, for whose cause this evil is upon us? What is thine occupation? And whence comest thou? What is thy country? And of what people art thou? And he said unto them, I am an Hebrew, and I fear the Lord, the God of heaven, which hath made the sea and the dry land. Then were the men exceedingly afraid, and said unto him, Why hast thou done this? For the men knew that he fled from the presence of the Lord, because he had told them. Then said they unto him, What shall we do unto thee, that the sea may be calm unto us? For the sea wrought, and was tempestuous. And he said unto them, Take me up, and cast me forth into the sea, so shall the sea be calm unto you. For I know that for my sake this great tempest is upon you. Nevertheless the men rode hard to bring it to the land, but they could not, for the sea wrought and was tempestuous against them. Wherefore they cried unto the Lord, and said, We beseech thee, O Lord, we beseech thee, let us not perish for this man's life, and lay not upon us innocent blood, for thou, O Lord, hast done as it pleased thee. So they took up Jonah, and cast him forth into the sea, and the sea ceased from her raging. Then the men feared the Lord exceedingly, and offered a sacrifice unto the Lord, and made vows. Now the Lord had prepared a great fish to swallow up Jonah, and Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. Then Jonah prayed unto the Lord his God out of the fish's belly, and said, I cried by reason of my affliction unto the Lord, and he heard me. Out of the belly of hell cried I, and thou heardest my voice. Thou hast cast me into the deep, in the midst of the seas, and the floods compassed me about. All thy billows and thy waves passed over me. Then I said, I am cast out of thy sight, yet I will look again toward thy holy temple. The waters compassed me about, even to the soul. The depth closed me round about. The weeds were wrapped about my head. I went down to the bottom of the mountains. The earth with her bars was about me forever. Yet hast thou brought up my life from corruption, O Lord my God? When my soul fainted within me, I remembered the Lord, and my prayer came in unto thee, into thine holy temple. They that observe lying vanities forsake their own mercy. I will sacrifice unto thee with the voice of thanksgiving. I will pay that that I have vowed. Salvation is of the Lord. And the Lord spake unto the fish, and it vomited out Jonah upon the dry land. And the word of the Lord came unto Jonah the second time, saying, Arise, go unto Nineveh that great city and preach unto it the preaching that i bid thee so jonah arose and went unto nineveh according to the word of the lord now nineveh was an exceeding great city of three days journey and jonah began to enter into the city a day's journey and he cried and said yet forty days and nineveh shall be overthrown so the people of Nineveh believed God, and proclaimed a fast, and put on sackcloth, from the greatest of them even to the least of them. For word came unto the king of Nineveh, and he arose from his throne, and he laid his robe from him, and covered him with sackcloth, and sat in ashes. And he caused it to be proclaimed and published through Nineveh, by the decree of the king and his nobles, saying, Let neither man nor beast, herd nor flock, taste anything let them not feed nor drink water but let man and beast be covered with sackcloth and cry mightily unto god yea let them turn every one from his evil way and from the violence that is in their hands who can tell if god will turn and repent and turn away from his fierce anger that we perish not and god saw their works that they turned from their evil way and God repented of the evil that he had said that he would do unto them, and he did it not. But it displeased Jonah exceedingly, and he was very angry. And he prayed unto the Lord, and said, I pray thee, O Lord, was not this my saying when I was yet in my country? Therefore I fled before unto Tarshish, for I knew that thou art a gracious God, and merciful, slow to anger, and of great kindness, and repentest thee of the evil. Therefore now, O Lord, take, I beseech thee, my life from me for it is better for me to die than to live. Then said the Lord, Dost thou well to be angry? So Jonah went out of the city, and sat on the east side of the city, and there made him a booth, and sat under it in the shadow, till he might see what would become of the city. And the Lord God prepared a gourd, 
and made it to come up over Jonah, that it might be a shadow over his head, to deliver him from his grief. So Jonah was exceeding glad of the gourd. But God prepared a worm when the morning rose the next day, and it smote the gourd that it withered. And it came to pass, when the sun did arise, that God prepared a vehement east wind, and the sun beat upon the head of Jonah, that he fainted, and wished in himself to die, and said, It is better for me to die than to live. And God said to Jonah, Dost thou well to be angry for the gourd? And he said, I do well to be angry, even unto death. Then said the Lord, Thou hast had pity on the gourd, for the which thou hast not labored, neither made its grow, which came up in a night, and perished in a night. And should not I spare Nineveh, that great city, wherein are more than six score thousand persons, that cannot discern between their right hand and their left hand, and also much cattle. End of section 19section twenty of dramatized bible passages from the old testament this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox .org. the story of daniel from daniel chapters five to six king james version daniel read by e snow belshazzar read by cobalt minnow the Queen, read by Brea Snow. Princes, read by Gideon Snow. Darius, read by Shave. Narrated by J. Snow. Chapter 5 Belshazzar the King made a great feast to a thousand of his lords, and drank wine before the thousand. Belshazzar, whilst he tasted the wine, commanded to bring the gold and silver vessels which his father nebuchadnezzar had taken out of the temple which was in jerusalem that the king and his princes his wives and his concubines might drink therein then they brought the golden vessels that were taken out of the temple of the house of god which was at jerusalem and the king and his princes his wives and his concubines drank in them they drank wine and praised the gods of gold and of silver of brass, of iron, of wood, and of stone. In the same hour came four fingers of a man's hand, and wrote over against the candlestick upon the plaster of a wall of the king's palace. And the king saw the part of the hand that wrote. Then the king's countenance was changed, and his thoughts troubled him, so that the joints of his loins were loosed, and his knees smote one against another. The king cried aloud, to bring in the astrologers, the Chaldeans, and the soothsayers. And the king spake, and said to the wise men of Babylon, Whosoever shall read this writing, and shew me the interpretation thereof, shall be clothed with scarlet, and have a chain of gold about his neck, and shall be the third ruler in the kingdom. Then came in all the king's wise men, but they could not read the writing, nor make known to the king, the interpretation thereof. Then was King Belshazzar greatly troubled, and his countenance was changed in him, and his lords were astonished. Now the queen, by reason of the words of the king and his lords, came into the banquet house, and the queen spake and said, O king, live for ever! Let not thy thoughts trouble thee, nor let thy countenance be changed. There is a man in thy kingdom, in whom is the spirit of the holy gods, and in the days of thy father light and understanding and wisdom, like the wisdom of the gods, was found in him, whom the king, Nebuchadnezzar thy father, the king, I say, thy father, made master of the magicians, astrologers, Chaldeans, and soothsayers. For as much as an excellent spirit and knowledge and understanding and interpreting of dreams and shewing of hard sentences and dissolving of doubts, were found in the same Daniel, whom the king named Belshazzar. Now let Daniel be called, and he will shew the interpretation. Then was Daniel brought in before the king, and the king spake, and said unto Daniel, 
Art thou that Daniel, which art of the children of the captivity of Judah, whom the king my father brought out of Jewry? I have even heard of thee, that the spirit of the gods is in thee, and that light and understanding and excellent wisdom is found in thee. And now the wise men, the astrologers, have been brought in before me, that they should read this writing, and make known unto me the interpretation thereof. But they could not shew the interpretation of the thing. And I have heard of thee, that thou canst make interpretations and dissolve doubts. Now, if thou canst read the writing, and make known to me the interpretation thereof, thou shalt be clothed with scarlet, and have a chain of gold about thy neck, and shalt be the third ruler in the kingdom. Then Daniel answered and said before the king, Let thy gifts be to thyself, and give thy rewards to another. Yet I will read the writing unto the king, and make known to him the interpretation. O thou king, the Most High God gave Nebuchadnezzar thy father a kingdom, and majesty and glory and honour. And for the majesty that he gave him, all people, nations, and languages trembled and feared before him. Whom he would, he slew. Whom he would, he kept alive. And whom he would, he set up. And whom he would, he put down. But when his heart was lifted up, and his mind hardened in pride, he was deposed from his kingly throne, and they took his glory from him. And he was driven from the sons of men, and his heart was made like the beasts, and his dwelling was with the wild asses. They fed him with grass like oxen, and his body was wet with the dew of heaven, till he knew that the Most High God ruled in the kingdom of men, and that he appointeth over it whomsoever he will. And thou, his son, O Belshazzar, hath not humbled thine heart, though thou knewest all this, but hast lifted up thyself against the Lord of heaven, and they have brought the vessels of his house before thee. And thou, and thy laws, thy wives, and thy concubines, have drunk wine in them, and thou hast praised the gods of silver and gold, of brass, iron, wood, and stone which see not, nor hear, nor know, and the God in whose hand thy breath is, and whose are all thy ways, hast thou not glorified? Then was the part of the hand sent from him, and this writing was written. And this is the writing that was written. Mene, mene, tekel, uvesin. This is the interpretation of the thing. Mene. God hath numbered thy kingdom and finished it. Tekel. Thou art weighed in the balances and art found wanting. Perez. Thy kingdom is divided and given to the Medes and Persians. Then commanded Belshazzar, and they clothed Daniel with scarlet, and put a chain of gold about his neck and made a proclamation concerning him, that he should be the third ruler in the kingdom. In that night was Belshazzar the king of the Chaldean slain, and Darius the Median took the kingdom, being about threescore and two years old. Chapter 6 It pleased Darius to set over the kingdom a hundred and twenty princes which should be over the whole kingdom, and over these three presidents, of whom Daniel was first, that the princes might give accounts unto them, and the king should have no damage. Then this Daniel was preferred above the presidents and princes, because an excellent spirit was in him, and the king thought to set him over the whole realm. Then the presidents and princes sought to find occasion against Daniel concerning the kingdom, but they could find none occasion nor fault, for as much as he was faithful, neither was there any error or fault found in him. Then said these men, We shall not find any occasion against this Daniel, except we find it against him concerning the law of his God. 
Then these presidents and princes assembled together to the king, and said thus unto him, King Darius, live for ever. All the presidents of the kingdom, the governors and the princes, the counsellors and the captains, have consulted together to establish a royal statute, and to make a firm decree, that whomsoever shall ask the petition of any god or man for thirty days, save of thee, O king, he shall be cast into the den of lions. Now, O king, establish the decree, and sign the writing, that it be not changed according to the law of Medes and Persians, which altereth not. Wherefore King Darius signed the writing and the decree. Now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house, and his windows being open in his chamber toward Jerusalem, he knelt upon his knees three times a day, and prayed, and gave thanks before his God, as he did aforetime. Then these men assembled, and found Daniel praying, and making supplication before his God. Then they came near, and spake before the king, concerning the king's decree. Hast thou not signed a decree, that every man that shall ask a petition of any god or man within thirty days, save of thee, O king, shall be cast into the den of lions? The king answered and said, The thing is true according to the law of the Medes and Persians, which altereth not. Then answered they and said before the king, That Daniel, which is of the children of the captivity of Judah, regardeth not thee, O king, nor the decree that thou hast signed, but maketh his petition three times a day. Then the king when he heard these words, was sore displeased with himself, and set his heart on Daniel to deliver him, and he laboured till the going down of the sun to deliver him. Then these men assembled unto the king, and said unto the king, Know, O king, that the law of the Medes and Persians is, that no decree nor statute which the king establisheth may be changed. Then the king commanded, and they brought Daniel and cast him into the den of lions. Now the king spake, and said unto Daniel, Thy God, whom thou servest continually, he will deliver thee. And a stone was brought, and laid upon the mouth of the den, and the king sealed it with his own signet, and with the signet of his lords, that the purpose might not be changed concerning Daniel. Then the king went to his palace, and passed the night fasting, neither were instruments of music brought before him, and his sleep went from him. Then the king arose very early in the morning, and went in haste unto the den of lions. And when he came to the den, he cried with a lamentable voice unto Daniel. And the king spake, and said to Daniel, O Daniel, servant of the living God, is thy God, whom thou servest continually, able to deliver thee from the lions? Then said Daniel unto the king, O king, live for ever. My God hath sent his angel, and hath shut the lions' mouths, that they have not hurt me. Forasmuch as before him innocency was found in me, and also before thee, O king, I have done no hurt. Then was the king exceedingly glad for him, and commanded that they should take Daniel up out of the den. So Daniel was taken up out of the den, and no manner of hurt was found upon him, because he believed in his God. And the king commanded, and they brought those men which had accused Daniel, and they cast them into the den of lions, them, their children, and their wives. And the lions had the mastery of them, and brake all their bones in pieces, or even they came at the bottom of the den. Then king Darius wrote unto all people, nations, and languages that dwell in all the earth, Peace be multiplied to you, I make a decree, that in every dominion of my kingdom men tremble and fear before the God of Daniel, for he is the living God, and steadfast forever, and his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed, and his dominion shall be even until the end. 
He delivereth and rescueth, and he worketh signs and wonders in heaven and in earth, who hath delivered Daniel from the power of the lions. So this Daniel prospered in the reign of Darius and in the reign of Cyrus the Persian. End of section 20